all right people a very good evening to everybody everything set welcome to your own an academy neat english channel i'm dr bankuri miglani your biology educator as always uh, you are being welcome to the amazing game of neat series and today is the second lecture of uh, very beautiful uh, botany that you all uh, love to study just confirm once uh, uh, for the sake of uh, precaution am i visible audible there's no problem everything is good yeah you guys are happy healthy smiling yeah even if you don't want to just give me a smile everybody yeah let's uh, let's confirm in the chat box good evening good evening somebody has written their name as smiling now that's good that's that's much better uh, shraddha my darling thank you bete mayuk mere bachcha good evening laharika as usual your name puts a smile on my face um nivetha uh, 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 roots roots i love your name too uh, you guys enchant me with your names yeah you should thank your parents uh, for giving you such beautiful names names carry a lot of energy names carry a lot of energy shirley priya nikita yeah i think i'm i need specs yeah i'm getting older uh harshi kartikeyan mahalakshmi uh thank you my darling love you too sanchita yeah 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 all my uh, some experienced uh, uh, kids are also there mm, you know who for who had all the experience with me of studying and uh, my my uh, Pitai also. Anand, Vida, good, good, good to see you. Niveta, uh, Thomas. Now, now, what what we're going to do is thank you for all the hearts and smiles and love and support and the positivity that you send across the screen. Uh, it's it's quite heartwarming, yeah. Um, I I fear that someday you guys are going to make me so emotional that I'm going to start crying. Uh, uh, so that shouldn't happen. That that won't look good. And I cry horribly. I rarely cry, but when I cry, I cry horribly. Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do, boys and girls, is to share this session with as many people as you can. And I don't care if the person has anything to do with biology. He could be a mathematician. He could be a JEE aspirant, NEET aspirant, anybody. The idea is to spread the news of one of the largest, and I I don't want to say one of the largest, the best and the largest. uh channel uh english channel for neat yeah which which is all about hard work love and dedication yeah the entire team and i can speak uh, that on behalf of everybody involved in the team people you see in front of you uh and people you don't see we have a wonderful wonderful team uh of an academy neat english who makes uh, all these sessions possible for you so with a lot of gratitude let's start uh, today's class and today's session you know uh, the the uh the major uh, show of the of today's uh, uh, the major scene of today's show or story is the new families that that have been scaring you guys uh, left right and center yeah you guys have been putting a lot of messages ma we don't know how to do malvesi grasses composite now i'm going to make sure that from today onwards yeah first of all this chapter uh, becomes very easy for you yeah uh, and uh, you are thorough and you know all the tricks and you have all the mind maps as far as new families are concerned and definitely we are going to do the old families as well i am going to uh, show you all the possible uh, vegetables that i could have from my kitchen yeah uh, by, by by god's grace since i am a vegetable lover my fridge is always stocked with uh, a lot of uh, veggies yeah um and 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 from today onwards you are going to look at your kitchen very differently like i always say botany is not in the books okay botany is not in the books it's very much in your kitchen now uh, talking about the real business here as far as this chapter is concerned let me tell you every year if you look at the previous year question papers yeah i have the weightage right uh, in front of you yeah you can see that it carries a 7% weightage now you know what i really don't agree with this fully because this chapter although in 2023 and 2022 garnered four mcqs we had four mcqs from this chapter but this year with the deletion of syllabus okay i am expecting at least five mcqs plus minus one at least five to six mcqs you know that means very heavy 20 marks in your paper and that has to be taken seriously yeah it can change your life yeah in or out the medical college so this chapter is uh, is the only chapter 
yeah, along with the addition of frog, etc., where things have been added. So, you know, somewhere NMC is taking this chapter close to their heart. Yeah, so it carries a lot of weightage. And I, this is the disclaimer of the session. Uh, you guys have a lot of confusion uh, uh, about new and old NCRT, what is deleted, what is not deleted. In this chapter, boys and girls, according to the NMC notice, it clearly says, please have a careful look, morphology and modifications. Morphology and modifications. Right? So today, ma'am is going to do all the modifications of all the plant parts along with examples. Now you would say, ma'am, new NCRT doesn't have it. We don't care. We are not going to take a risk. Yeah, we are not going to fall uh, short as far as our efforts are concerned. We will do modifications. This word is enough. And we will solve PYQs of modifications as well. And in your new NCRT, only Solanaceae is given. But there are seven families in your syllabus. I have a thing. I, I, I like the number seven. Um, and and uh, this year is going to be a game changer, I tell you. The botany, every subject, botany paper is going to be something. Now, 2023, look at the kind of questions are for experienced folks. Like the other day, in the, in, the, in the plus session, you guys were telling me, all good, right? I just forget to see. Yeah, all good, all good, fire, hearts, whatever. Uh, I have... Harshi, thank you, my darling. Yeah, it takes, it takes uh, one, two, spot one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you, you are lovely too. Um, Akshay, Bida, my dearest, I have no clue how much time this session is going to take place. But I'm going to uh, just, um, you know, do botany like never before. Even if it takes an eternity, uh, we are going to make sure that those five MCQs are uh, ours. Yeah, the idea is that. Thank you, Sayyid, Laharika, Priyanshu, you guys are lovely and very distracting. So, uh, boys and girls, now, for the, for the uninitiated ones, if these questions are not making sense to you, calm down. Don't worry. Everything is going to make sense. But if, for, for the others, have a look at the kind of questions. I know it's difficult to read. I'm going to read it out for you. Uh, I try to take all the questions. Now, exile placentation. These are 20, 23 questions, yeah? It's not like I'm, I'm talking about 10 years back. I don't care. I'm talking about just 2023. We are still in December. The first question is about the family itself. And it's speaking about all the three families here. Pibaceae, Solanaceae, Liliaceae. According to the old syllabus. Mm. And exile placentation. There has never been a paper, whether it was AIPMT, UPCPMT, Delhi PMT, Vardha PMT, to name a few, that placentation question has not been asked. It is a mandatory question. It is a mandatory question. Today we are going to make a mind map of that. And you are going to take down a lot of notes. You are going to take down a lot of screenshots. Please check the memories in your phones and devices and gadgets. And we have, this is 2023. If I show you other questions, look at this, Calotropis estivation. The examples given in NCERT are more than enough. Please don't cry beyond NCRT. More than NCRT, you don't need. Look at the uh, pea flower. In 2023 itself, we have, we saw two questions just based on estivation, Baba. You see, you see, that shows us that somewhere the paper is quite predictable. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what is the predictability of the paper in today's class. Now, people. How much ever good you are in theory and that applies to life, if you don't apply knowledge, if you don't experience it, it is mm, blah, it carries no goodness. So whether you're studying physics, chemistry, biology, mm, always remember, mark my words, whether you're with me or you're without me, always, always apply what you learn. Okay, and for that matter, since the, this team, since we all believe in it so much, you have your special class scheduled for tomorrow, wherein I'm going to take up questions from new families. Yeah, you heard it right. I'm going to do questions of Malvasi, Composite, Gramini, La La La, this and that. You cannot even think uh, the kind of questions that I'm going to make you practice so that you guys are become the real Avengers, not only in theory, but actually Avengers, yeah, ready to fight. 
So today also, this class is also going to have PYQs, but tomorrow at 11, yeah, you just have to, the link is given in the description box, yeah, the, my beautiful team has put the link in the description box. I want you to be ready for this class. Other than that, boys and girls, since today's class is about such an important chapter, I cannot but tell you that you can use PM1 live if you don't know my code, yeah, that can happen, that can happen. And you can explore the different aspects of Unbox that has been started by an academy. All the features you, you will see on the app or whatever course you buy. It's 24, 25, 26. Lifetime. Just remember me. Uh, and while you remember me, you remember PM1 live. Yeah? And your life will be easy and good. Other than that, uh, all the teachers of this team, yeah, uh, I see that you guys love us so much, are going to meet you in person. Yeah, this is not, uh, uh, this is not going to be a camera uh, job, camera business. Walking and talking right in front of you, hmm? talking to you in person. Do you realize how important that is, how much you guys uh, 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 want to meet us and how much we want to meet you. Since this last lap of exam is, this last lap of five months, four months is very important. We decided to visit Chennai, yeah, and all the teachers will be there uh, on 21st of December, quite a good day, at 5 p.m., yeah. Somehow we have, a, we have a liking towards this 5 p.m., okay. And Avengers 3.0 batch, classes are being conducted. Uh, if you uh, decide to join this batch, remember PM1 Live. Yeah. Today we are going to talk about various P's of morphology which confuse us. Yeah. More often than not, questions from peduncle, petiole, pedicel, punctury, PM1 Live. So these are some of the uh, highlights of today's class, what you're going to encounter. Now, boys and girls, this class is for everybody. It is for somebody who has, who doesn't know what morphology is, what botany is. So when I speak about what is morphology, what do I study in this uh, topic, I'm just going to break this word. Yeah. So if I break this word, it is morphos, it is morphos and it is logi. Logi is a generic uh, suffix which is used to um, indicate study, detailed study of something. Yeah. It could be um, anything for, for that matter. Zoology, yeah? Morphology, isn't it? So, logy is always embryology, pharmacology, physiology, yeah? Am I scaring you or making sense that logy is simply detailed study and morphos is the external structure? External structure. You cannot understand anything in life. Any organism, let's talk about organisms. Even in zoology, if you're studying a particular system, let's say you're, you, you want to pay attention to respiratory system, yeah? You never start talking about, oh, this is the mechanics of breathing, all right? This is the chemical, this is the physiology of breathing, or this is the cardiac cycle. You don't jump there directly. There's a sequence to be followed. There are steps to be followed. And the first step in biology is to study the external structure and then you go on to study the internal structure. Yeah, what is the tissue organization? How are muscles arranged? Uh, what kind of epithelium is present for both animals and plants? Plant tissues, animal tissues. And then you move on to study the physiology or how that particular organ or um, organ system functions. Similarly, in external structure, that study is called morphology. So that is done. Yeah, why do you study that? Why do we study that? Now, the real reason is, ma'am, we want to secure those five MCQs. We don't want, we want that seat. But as a, as a botanist, why would you study morphology? Is to understand the variation. See, everything comes back to genetics and identification. Trust me on that. Whenever you are studying an organism, a group of organisms, a population, here we're talking about angiosperms, the flowering plants, yeah? The idea is to see, see the germplasm. The, sorry, the gene pool, yeah? What kind of uh, variations are present and where is this organism going in terms of evolution? And also for the purpose of taxonomy. So variations, which gives you an idea of the genetics of these plants, 
genetics of angiosperms yeah and when you study the gene pool of any organism of any population na it tells you what is going to happen it becomes predictive for you and we human beings want to predict everything okay not only that it also helps you in identification now you know this from the very first chapter and identification of an organism okay i know this is a ginger oh i know this is this is this belongs to the family of potato oh i know this particular plant that i just discovered while taking a walk in the forest uh, this belongs to the family of malvaceae once you're able to do that now you as a taxonomist taxonomist you as a taxonomist are enriched hmm? now but you know what my favorite point is and i am a little biased towards this what i am interested in when i study morphology do you want to know that do you want to know that and that is ladies and gentlemen the third point which is adaptations adaptations you know why because in this living world on this planet every living organism whether it's a bacteria or a very well designed smart human being so to say is doing two things in their lifetime all the time that is survival i want to survive i want to survive okay and second is increase in number these are the inherent qualities of the living world if you ask me and i've spoken at length about this in my plus class of ecology hmm? now when i see the various adaptation in plant parts in plant parts that also tells me the idea of evolution which is happening whether they are going to survive or not okay and the fourth reason is well 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 angiosperms are the most conspicuous angiosperms are 50% this also i have taught in the ecology course for avengers batch yeah 50% of entire plant population entire plant kingdom and they are the most advanced plants they are the most advanced plants trust me the better i adapt to the environment boys and girls the better i adapt to my environment my number will increase that is why human beings are more successful so a species which has become so successful in course of time owing to the useful adaptations you know that means they're doing something right and that syllabi wise if i if i talk about mcq wise those adaptations are studied under modifications okay so now we are going to start from absolute basic okay i'm a five year old oh i don't know anything about botany we going to do it simple to complex don't do the other way around take care of your mind and body your mind doesn't like the other way so now if i speak about if i if i even think about a plant it is categorically pinpointedly divided into two portions the axis of a plant body don't take the diagram seriously yeah you have it in your head a plant body is divided the entire axis is divided into the underground portion underground portion which is below the soil i'll have to dig it out underground root system remember we are doing very basics we have no interest in knowing the advanced before we know the basics and that applies to anything in life doesn't it and the aerial aerial shoot system shoot system okay now when i say system it means mm, the major part and the auxiliaries or in simple words um a sum total of multiple units forms a system so here thankfully we have root and its branches root and its branches okay and i know nothing in life but i know you know something is there in the soil to suck the water and minerals from the soil okay how air is important for us how breath is important for us for plants soil 
is is the world where where they derive everything from yeah and then comes the shoot system now the shoot system is quite elaborate it has to be taken seriously boys and girls talking about precision there's a difference between the word stem and shoot stem and shoot are used synonymously by people but stem is a different term because shoot is a system that consists of stem and its branches stem and its branches and that is not where it ends it has the leaves yeah and it has the flower which comes later the fruit and of course fruit with the seed in it this is called as the shoot system this is what shoot is stem is just the central mother cylindrical axis who's going to carry everybody okay now what we're going to do is we are going to categorize these parts should we do that beautifully we're going to go a notch further if i say categorization of all the parts the first one is vegetative parts of the plant okay vegetative in botany simply means not taking part in reproduction or in other words it is responsible for the nutrition it is responsible for the maintenance of the body for the growth of the organism but it's not taking part in reproduction just the way our body has reproductive organs and non reproductive organs yeah then there are primary sex organs there are secondary sex organs that we will talk about when we study the structure of flower so vegetative organs are root stem and leaf yeah could you could you connect a little bit sense into this the like, yeah this seems right they are taking part in just the growth and nutrition photosynthesis all of that but when i talk about the reproductive parts reproductive parts i am not teaching any physics here i am not i haven't started with any calculations equations reactions nothing it's quite simple that we have started with the reproductive parts who are going to help in the increase in number what did ma'am say just a while ago ma'am said that survival and increase in number are very important she said that everybody is good yeah people um if for anybody the session buffers something happens the storm comes whatever please there's one way in life that i've realized refresh your session okay and shiva please don't move the output in front of me it's a little distracting ha huh. so reproductive is flower and fruit sab mujhe pareshan karte hain flower and fruit now they are going to take part in the other aspect of living organism which is oh i have to increase in number i need to reproduce and in the survival part we have the adaptations which are done by root stem and leaf so what are the key takeaways of today's session let's jot them down everybody what we are going to study we are going to start with root stem and leaf we are going to study the very basic structure that is morphology of them but we are also going to do the question yielding portion which is the modifications of them okay i am not going to i don't have the heart if you ask me i don't have the heart to uh, miss out on modifications and then we are going to move towards the flower again we are going to do the detailed structure of flower by the way we have completed sexual reproduction in flowering plants last tuesday on this awesome channel you should watch that lecture if you are meeting me for the first time it will give you great insights and definitely uh, the future five mcqs from that chapter flower and inflorescence flower and inflorescence we are happy okay and then we are going to move into fruit and seed fruit and seed and we are going to today's highlight like i said is the angiospermic families angiospermic families yeah now all of this looks very simple i know ha ha done there are hardly any key takeaways sometimes simple is very very significant and very very detailed so let's start with root ladies and gentlemen 
Now, whenever you start understanding the structure of any plant part, I'm going to restrict myself to talk about botany only and not give you any other gyan. I want you to follow a sequence. I am a big fan of sequences here. Because when you follow sequence while studying, when you follow a sequence while studying, your brain assimilates that information in a structured way and it becomes easy to apply that. When I speak about a structure, number one is how does it look? How does it look? See, that is how you remember somebody or you remember anything. The chair in your room, the table in your room, the person you met. And then, where is it present? Where is it present? Where does it come from? What is the origin? Follow this sequence, it's going to help you many folds. It's going to change your life uh, neat wise. Mm -hmm. So, if I talk about root, mm, I don't know anything, I'm a cuckoo. But I know that this is underground. It is underground, non-green. Hair-like structure, hair-like structure, it arises from very, very important term, radical of embryo, radical of embryo. If you have eaten sprouts, I have sprouts in my fridge. I think you guys get it, right? So when you sprout pulses, you often see, you call them sprouted when this white colored outgrowth comes out of the seed, don't you? This is actually the radical, okay? It is going to go deep into the ground, elongate and form the mighty root system. So this is the basic origin of, of course this is not the end of the story, but this is the basic origin of root, radical of the embryo. And then what do I say? It is descending in nature. After you've described where it is present, where does it come from, how does it look like, you talk about the habit of patterns of this part. So it is descending, it always grows downwards if I talk about the entire axis of the body. Then what does it do? It is positively hydrotrophic, hydrotropic, hydrotropic. Now children, more often than not, I hear you guys saying hydrotrophic, phototrophic, Please don't do that. There's a difference in the term tropic and trophic. Trophic is related to nutrition. Trophic is related to attraction or towards. So root grows towards water, positively hydrotropic. It is negatively, similarly. Can you tell me in the chat box? It will be negatively what and what? Negatively what and what? It will be geotropic, tropic. Sorry, it will be positively geotropic. That is towards gravity. But there's one negative, it is growing away from the light. Phototropic. Yes, this is the basic nature of the root. Are we good? And now we are going to move towards the structure or the detailed morphology of the root. the detailed morphology of the root. Now, if I look at the root closely, what is the shape of the root? So, root is a conical structure. It is a conical structure. And you know, I have always taught you the shape of a cell or a structure is related to the function it performs. So, I am going to tell you the two primary functions of the root. And then it is going to make sense of the structure of root. For functions of root, you will remember A square. You will remember A square, which simply means anchorage, anchorage and absorption. It is not anchorage, it is anchorage. Absorption. Are we together? Absorption. A square. What is anchorage? Anchor is holding or forming a base for everything. For example, your teeth are anchored by the jaws in your face. Mandible, maxilla. So if somebody punches you at the jaws, the teeth come out of the sockets. May that doesn't happen. Absorption, there's nobody else 
who has the onus of absorb, who has the responsibility. Nobody can do this function of absorbing water and minerals from the soil. Whatever root will absorb, others will get. Now, boys and girls, whether you're studying zoology functions of liver, or you're studying functions of kidney, or in botany you're studying functions of any plant part, and somebody says primary functions, please understand primary functions are the irreplaceable functions. Nobody else can do them. Secondary functions are assisting functions, which again help in survival and adaptation. But primary function, if not done, will lead to the death of the organism. So I'm just going to give you primary function. If I want to hold something, if I want to hold the entire shoot system on my head, my surface area here should be more. And if I want to go down deep into the ground, please use your common sense and logic so that you are not burdened by a lot of facts and concepts. If I want to penetrate deep into the ground to tap into the water and minerals, the tip should be, the tip should be conical, yeah, it should be apical. So root is essentially a conical structure, yeah. It is a conical structure. But the problem is, even if you look at your pens, na baba, even if you look at your pens, now this is not a perfect cone, this is not a perfect cone, but if your pen falls down on the ground, na, this is the first part, the tip of the pen that gets injured. And that is why you have the cap. Similarly, in a root, in a root, what you have as the first zone, as the first zone, this, this is zonation of root or parts of root, zonation of root or parts of root, yeah, it is the root cap. It is the root cap. And what will be the function of the root cap? Now you know, just the cap of your pen, it is going to protect, it is going to protect the apex of the root as it goes deep into the hard particles of the soil. But you know what, the soil could be really dry. So you've seen in some pens, you have the sponge in the cap, especially the ink pens. Because if you leave ink pen without the cap, yeah, it dries off. So the root cap also secretes mucilage, also secretes mucilage to help the root penetrate into the ground. And also root cap has starch grains, has starch grains, which help in perceiving gravity. The root gets to know, the root gets a message that, you know, I have to grow towards the gravity and not against the gravity. And that property is called as Gravy perception, gravity perception. Okay, so that is also done with the help of root cap. But you know, root cap is going to get injured. What do I do then? We need a replacement of cells. We need a factory of cells. Hmm? So the next zone itself is a very small, very thin zone, around one millimeter, as thick as your nail. Yeah? That is called as the meristematic zone. That is called as the meristematic zone meristematic zone so this sequence of zones is extremely important that you need to study this zone if they ask a question the growth in the root or the formation of cells or the cell division happens only in this zone no other zone so maximum growth of the root happens in Maximum growth of the root, the key word here is growth, happens in the meristematic zone. Let's go to the next zone which is slightly bigger, around 4 millimeter. You don't have to learn the, the bigness, don't worry. Okay, so ma'am do we have to learn that? Elongation zone. In this day and age you guys are very sensitive of how much, the quantity. Huh? People are very sensitive of quantity. So elongation zone, now if somebody tells you new cells are formed here, they are wrong. No new cells will be formed beyond meristematic zone. But here the cells are going to stretch themselves. They are going to elongate. So that the root maintains this elongated conical structure. And you know, it does the function of going, you know, uh, experiencing a depth into the ground and tapping the water and minerals from the soil. So it increases the length of the root increases length of the root. Some authors do believe that, that after some time, some of the external cells, these peripheral cells, you know, 
they start absorbing some amount of water and minerals and the last zone which is the which is around 6 mm which is the largest zone of the root that is your maturation zone maturation zone now as the name suggests what is going to happen in botanical terms we know a better term for maturation and that is ladies and gentlemen differentiation differentiation now this is very basic of biology but since I promised that I'm going to teach the every basic whatever possible differentiation in biology simply means when a cell or a tissue for example acquires or changes or modifies its structure according to its function I have this function now I'm going to store food let me become parent gametes. I'm going to provide elasticity. Let me become colon gametes. Oh, I'm going to conduct water and minerals in future. It's just that till 10th, all of you had the same subjects, history, geography, English, in the mathematics, biophysics, chemistry. But in 11th and 12th, you opted for specialization. Okay? And the result of which is you are here. So differentiation, the cells will acquire a structure and function. One classic example and a very important question is the presence of root hair and people do this mistake of thinking that it's a different zone. No, please don't do that. Root hair are derived, are derived from maturation zone. These are unicellular structures. These are uni, there's a single cell which has become the hair. What is the function of root hair? Common sense, logic, please. Now, NCRT says it helps in absorption of water and minerals. Yeah, so we are going to tweak it a little bit. We are going to tweak it a little bit. This root can also perform, the major root can also perform the function of absorption. What root hair is doing is, it is increasing the surface area. It is increasing the transverse area. Increasing surface area of absorption surface area of absorption if anybody will ask you so this sequence is very important from downwards to upwards of the different zones along with the basic functions that you should be aware of now you can solve this question answers in the chat box everybody this is a diagram based question the region responsible for growth in length of the root come on I have no clue Anybody? Everybody? Somebody? Yeah, sure. Very good. So, this is root cap. D is root cap. Nothing to do with. Now, you'll underline lens. Every question, every MCQ, Physics, Chemistry, Biology will have a keyword that is going to take you to the answer. Make a habit of underlining that. Mm. C is your meristematic zone, nothing to do with lens. Yeah, that is the keyword was growth. So here the answer is B. Easy? Very easy? Okay. Next. So we applied what we studied. Now we're going to talk about the types of root. Going to make it very simple. Please take down the notes with ma'am. First is the first kind of root, which is my personal favorite, is tap root. Okay? And then comes fibrous root. Fibrous root. Which is kind of... And C is adventitious root. So, God promised that okay there will be a seed the embryo will give out the radical and radical if given nice soil water loved and nurtured will lead to the formation of a thick and long root called as the primary root primary root now I also call it the mother root the mother root yes now this root is going to give branches of the second order, okay? The second order or the secondary roots. Let's write it in short, secondary roots. And these secondary roots will further give branches, will further give branches 
and these will be called the third order that is tertiary roots. So you know what? I have a system which not only grows longitudinally but has the advantage of growing, of growing transversely also thereby tapping all the water longitudinally as well as laterally. This elaborate system is called as the tap root system. Tap root is not a single root but a system of roots of different lengths, different lengths or different orders, different orders and it is a feature of never forget dicots. Dicots, you know angiosperms are of two types, one with two seeds, uh, two cotyledons in the seed and the other ones like rice which is a single cotyledon. So dicots will have the taproot system. Let's move on to the second one which is fibrous root. Then one day what happened? Everybody was following the rules. This radical came out. It knew that I have to become the primary root or the mother root but suddenly something happened and this radical disintegrated into a bunch of roots which are absolutely thin, fiber like, okay and they are all equal size, there is no primary root, there is no secondary root, there is no tertiary root, everything is equal sized, equal sized. The truth of the story, the truth of the story is that it was radical who disintegrated. But since now it is not present, it's all a bunch. It looks like, it appears that fibrous roots, fibrous root arise from the base of the stem. Because stem is going to arise in the opposite direction from plumule. So when I look at this bunch, it looks like it is arising from the base of the stem. Yeah. So where are they present? Equal size roots present in monocots. Present in monocots. Only and only monocots. The third kind of root is adventitious root. Adventitia word simply means uh, notorious. Something not proper. Something breaking the rules. So now as this was going on, adventitious root said not from radical. I am not following the rules. I am going to emerge from other parts of the plant but not radical. More often than not, it loves to arise again from the base of the stem. And structurally, it is very close to fibrous root. That is, these will also be equal sized roots equal sized roots a bunch of equal sized root more often than not base of the stem and it is present in both monocots and dicots a very common confusion amongst people it is present in both monocots and dicots theek baat hai all good happy healthy Priya, my darling, that's a good question. Uh, if asked, by the way, very good question. If asked in the exam, then you will mark arises from the stem because NCRT says so. Okay? You are right. And that has happened in the past. Very good. Okay, let's go further. Moving on as, oh, there is a question from me 2017. Don't you guys love solving questions? Root hair developed from which region? No clue. Answers in the chat box. Answers in the chat box, everybody. From the maturation zone. Yes, very good. 
so root hair is not a different zone it arises from the differentiation zone or the maturation zone additionally what is the function increase in the surface area don't forget any question can be asked these this is the snip from your ncrt have a careful look about the different types of root this is a diagram of tap root do you see that i only have lateral roots if you look at your new old from mars from pluto earth wherever you have you should have an ncrt whenever you're taking any biology class with me or with any teacher please do that service to yourself so this is the main or the primary root which is going to be the thickest and the longest and it is going to give rise to the lateral roots of different orders then the fibrous root which is a bunch of equal sized equal sized roots and the adventitious roots what you see here are the very thick roots which are um, arising from the stem okay see ncrt snips will be like this only you can look into the ncrt next is modification of tap root modification of tap root so what is modification anybody i have been singing about modification since the start of the session modification means i change my structure i change my structure to perform special function special function and why would i do that why would i do that in order to adapt myself adaptation is the key so modification is nothing but done to adapt to the environment to survive like i've been saying since the beginning of the session now i'm going to tell you something and you're going to realize it as we go further studying the modification plant is very very fearful very very insecure about food like how we like to save money and deposit it in the banks plant likes to deposit and store food in all its vegetative organs whether it is root stem or leaf applying it to the real business this is a very commonly asked question the root storing roots and uh, so the food storing roots and the fleshy stems okay so every time you study modification first is storage of food right so modification of tap root first one is the fleshy root fleshy means it starts storing food storage root now when it stores food it acquires a particular shape yeah based on the shape based on shape what all will happen first is a cone a conical root yeah let me show you i have uh, the farmers market today yeah do you see that is it is it uh, visible everybody do you see that it's a perfect cone cone means a broad base and a tapering apex and this is what gajar this is what carrot so conical root is carrot i'm just giving you one example these are all previous year questions or docus keruta if you want to escape the botanical names do so it is okay second shape that i acquire when i start storing food like if you don't do any activity you're sitting the entire day in front of tv doing nothing just chatting and spamming the chat boxes you will store a lot of fat not muscle and your body will acquire some shape similarly the second shape is fusy form shape i don't know why but i feel a question is going to be asked from this how i call it in my head is an imperfect cone there you go it's rather a spindle shape it's rather a 
it's not turnip it's not turnip at all give me one moment yeah so it is a spindle shape what is a spindle shape tapering at this end as well as this end the base it's not a cone and all the food will be stored in the middle okay this shape is called as fusiform or spindle shape you can call it spindle shape or in my head i call it imperfect cone it was trying to be a cone but it's not an example is radish raffinus raffinus sativus happy now somebody in the chat box was saying turnip yeah that is not included here this is turnip napi form root what is napi form root all the food only in the center only in the center now i don't have turnip i don't have turnip what what i really have is this this is what can you see the shape it's it's trying to be spherical but it's not spherical yeah all the food is in the center so this shape is called as napi form shape i would recommend that instead of learning the theory of it just open your fridge look into the kitchen even if you are a vegetarian even if you are a vegetarian make an effort for botany's sake uh, sorry even if you are a non vegetarian and you don't like vegetables make an effort and get them till you have your exam so napi form root will be brassica since it is in your syllabus brassica or cruciferi family is newly introduced i'm saying brassica and beta vulgaris beta vulgaris is beetroot brassica repa is your turnip shalgum okay and the fourth one the fourth one here is going to be no shape whenever in botany we never have a shape of anything we use the word tuber so whether it is tap root modification uh, it is adventitious root modification if in botany you come across the term tuber it means no shape it means no shape tuberous is no shape and classic example is mirabilis jalapa mirabilis or the four o'clock plant who will tell me in the chat box why this plant is called as a four o'clock plant why is it called as a four o'clock plant anybody who wants to enlighten us why mirabilis jalapa is called as the 4 o'clock plant second thing second kind of modification is simply the pneumatophores the pneumatophores or the breathing roots now this is a very special modification and that's why often asked by the examiner imagine a plant which is growing in a marshy soil in a water logged soil where soil particles the the air between the soil particles is not present only because there are so many waste gases there are so many dead organisms yeah it's a marsh it's a swamp whoever gets stuck in a swarm dies yeah there are toxic gases there is water logging and there's no oxygen so eventually in the course of evolution such plants will have to develop roots which will grow in the opposite direction and the common mcq that is asked from this is the roots which are negatively geotropic we promise that roots will be positively geotropic but here they grow against the gravity okay so where are they present in marshes 
or swamps and classic example are the mangrove forests mangrove trees you call them sundarbans also and such plants are called as halophytes such plants are called as halophytes since they grow in saline soils yeah and the mcq points to be written these are negatively geotropic roots which will have to breathe through the pores called as pneumothoods pneumothoods your old ncrt has a diagram also wherein they are coming outside the ground and if this is the tip of the root here you will find small small pores called as pneumothoods hmm? classic example avicennia sonericea and rhizophora rhizophora good all these are previous year question these are species of the mangrove trees only nothing different the third kind of modification you have been studying from class 9th and 10th and that is nodulated or the leguminous roots leguminous roots what is happening is the primary root or the mother root and the secondary root and the secondary root of the second order decides to develop nodules to develop nodules why why would i develop nodules so that somebody can live inside them and who lives inside them rhizobium rhizobium answers in the chat box what is the nature of this bacteria rhizobium leguminoserum if it lives freely in the soil it doesn't do so but when it comes to live with somebody else it starts fixing nitrogen in a symbiotic relationship symbiosis which is a give and take relationship it gets shelter in the roots of the plant and in turn it gives atmospheric nitrogen it fixes it because we cannot do it plants cannot do it we cannot fix this we need the help of microbes blue green algae or bacteria now you know since junior classes that these nodulated or leguminous roots are a feature of legumes which are pulses pea bean and for the experienced ones fabaceae family good so you can you can keep taking screenshots rather than making the notes later anish kumar you are uh, late uh, but you can still sit, sit in the class so you know um a teacher experiences various phases when they look at the chat box first it is you know we keep smiling we are like yeah okay whatever they are saying and then towards the end after a while if there is a lot of um how do i put this if if there is a lot of uh, spamming and stupidity let me be crude with you guys like akhin raj is saying akhin you have a good name yeah why are you okay thank you um, mathi vanan beta god bless you chalo let's move further let's solve a question for neat 2018 pneumatophores occur in which kind of plants people we just did it i was telling you right this is a previous year question what is the answer everybody what is the answer it is the first one that is halophytes 
which grow in saline soils. Now the NCRT SNP has all the roots and this is a, please open up this page of NCRT if you are not able to see here, you still have it. Now please understand that sweet potato is not a tap root although NCRT gives it along with tap roots. I wanted to make this clear. Please see that sweet potato is not a tap root. This here, what is this? These are pneumatophores coming out of the ground. They have pneumatodes through which they will breathe, hence called as breathing roots. If you look at carrot, I just showed you, it is a tap root modification. Turnip, you guys told me, it is a tap root mo modification, nappy form. And asparagus is also not tap root. NCRT does that, but you will not mark it in tap root. So when I speak about asparagus, the second classification of modification is modification of adventitious root. Modification of adventitious root. So as is the rule I told you, it will be fleshy or storage to begin with. I need to store food here. Okay. And here the classification is quite simple. It is based on grouping, but there is nothing to do with shape. All right, so let's say this is the base of the stem and from here adventitious roots are arising. Now, if this root decides to store food, if this root decides to store food and looks like this, there's no definite shape, it's going to be called as a single tuber. So this particular root is going to act like an, like an individual food storing root. As is the case of, as is the case of a sweet potato. Can you see that? Sweet potato? Yeah. So it, a sweet potato doesn't have a particular shape. This is one adventitious root people. This is one adventitious root. Hmm? Also called as a single tuber. Single tuber. And classic example of single tuber is sweet potato. Sweet potato or epomia batita. Second example is fasciculated roots. Fasciculated tuber. What is a fasciculated tuber? Have a look at the screen. Same thing, but now I have a bunch of tubers which are going to act like a single root. I am going to form the bunch of all the tubers. Hmm? So bunch of tuber, this is seen in asparagus. Asparagus and dahlia. Now asparagus is not given in theory of NCRT, but it is given in the diagram. And that is why we need to do it. And classic example, one more, is palmate tuberous. Palmate tuberous. What is palmate tuberous? Have a look at this. This is the base of the stem. Look at my hand. This is the base of the stem here. Yeah. This is the base of the stem. Tuber, 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 tuber. It diverges like this. Hence the name palmate tuberous and this is seen in orchids. This is seen in this is seen in orchids. If you do these three examples of adventitious fleshy roots, this is more than enough. But what I'm going to tell you now, guys, if you have your notes, please mark it very critical for me 2024. You will see a lot of question from mechanical support. Mechanical support provided by adventitious root. Now adventitious root is seen in monocots. Monocots are usually 
very weak stemmed plants they are very small they are herbaceous sometimes they are shrubs very rarely they are trees as in bamboo so the roots decided that we are going to give them extra strength or mechanical support and this becomes a very important question so when i talk about mechanical support the first one is the prop or the pillar roots and this is examiner's favorite as well why a banyan tree is able to live for 300 years or 400 years is owing to this blessing of prop or pillar roots they arise from the branches of the main stem branches of main stem we said that adventitious root is not going to develop from the radical but mostly from the stem so if you have seen a banyan tree there is this huge main stem right and then the branches of the main stem give rise to very thin roots which hang from there but ultimately penetrate the ground so when they penetrate the ground when they penetrate the soil what are they doing soil has all the nutrients not only they are providing extra nutrients from the soil but also a pillar like strength yeah more gravity to the entire tree so even if the main huge stem rots away dies pillar roots or prop roots and you know they can range from 100 to 200 in a single tree hmm they can keep the tree alive classic example example like i've been saying banyan tree it is the genus ficus very very important ficus bengalensis bengalensis or the banyan tree happy yeah second example second example is still truths is still truths now what's happening is there is a weak stem there is a weak cylindrical stem okay and it has all the pressure of carrying all the aerial organs fruits and flowers and seeds and what not to give it added strength adventitious roots are going to diverge okay since area will increase since area will increase the pressure on the aerial stem will decrease hmm? so what is happening here is if this is the aerial stem this is the ground these roots will actually arise little above the ground little above the ground and they will be very very thick yaar they will be very very thick ncert has that i just showed you Hmm? and they will diverge in all the directions thereby increasing the surface area now they are bracing the aerial stem at this common point hence they are also called as brace roots they are also called as brace roots okay and this is a classic example we are going to continue i would recommend that you continue on the same page This is a classic example of sugar king. If you have visited the fields of sugar king, or maize as well, sorghum as well, screw pine as well. What is screw pine? It is more commonly it is known by pandanus. These are the classic example of still roots. is this clear so the first one was pillar roots i'm acting like a pillar and the second one i'm embracing the aerial stem the third one which is not asked very often but since it is present in every house that is the climbing roots the climbing roots have you seen money plant everybody has we need to give an artificial support in case of money plant or in case of beetle plant because these roots will climb by adhering to a support to a support what they do is if you provide an artificial support even if you don't provide and there is a pole or there is a pillar or there is a wall 
these roots will have the tendency of creeping around that support either they'll hug the support or they'll penetrate the support or sometimes they secrete substances to stick on to the support essentially these plants have these roots ready to climb up thereby again providing strength to the main plant yeah makes sense so classic example is money plant money plant i am yet to research on this why it is called as money plant pothos and piper beetle which is your pan or supari even piper nigrum these examples are more than enough now the third category of classification boys and girls very important is the vital functions vital functions now the monocot or the dicot plant where adventitious root decided to have got additional strength okay fine stored food and now the plant is like you know what i want some other functions to be performed would you do that for me that is the third category and don't ignore it there are mcqs asked from it the first one in this will be photosynthetic roots who thought yeah that roots will become green and perform photosynthesis but they do and that is the mm, that is the nature of adventitious root they try to do something different they like to break rules so photosynthetic roots or the assimilatory roots photosynthetic roots now this is seen in trapa which is which is water chestnut water chestnut so trapa water chestnut they are also called as assimilatory roots since they are taking part in food formation nutrition second which is rather i am again going to give you a neat alert we are going to put a neat alert here more often than not this question also becomes a question of ecology here you understand that is parasitic roots parasitic roots i have already done parasitism in ecology they are also called as hostorial roots hostorial roots they penetrate you know there was a question previous year question uh, about true and false where the examiner has asked whether they penetrate only xylem or phloem and some of us end up marking only xylem but no they will penetrate both xylem and phloem it's a both xylem and phloem so i want sugar also so parasites do that right they want a lot of nutrition from the host i want sugars also i want water and minerals also give me everything so penetrate xylem and phloem now they develop special structures do you see my big nails yeah do you see them so these are rather small but if i penetrate these nails into the xylem and phloem to suck the nutrition those nails or claws are called as hostoria yeah that is why hostorial roots that is why hostorial roots and classic example classic example is cascuta or amar bel if amar bel and it grows very easily here eh? it doesn't shy away if amar bel grows on any plant na the the gardener loses their sleep hmm and this is a holo parasite i've spoken about the types of parasites in ecology it's a total parasite it is going to kill the plant here we are going to continue on the next page but i would recommend that you continue in your notes the third one here is epiphytic roots this is also spoken about in ecology these are all relationships epiphytic roots now in bio in biology whenever you come across a prefix epi that simply means upon or outside hmm? epi meso hypo epi is outside or upon in this case and phytic is the plant 
so it grows on another plant now you might wonder ma'am is it a parasite no a parasite has to be called will be called a parasite if it ends up harming the host and it does so when it sucks nutrition and takes the space so some authors somewhere are calling them space parasites but if you ask me i wouldn't call them a parasite since there is no harm involved okay so what is the what are the two organisms involved here uh, for example orchids especially species vanda hmm grows extensively on mango tree there is no taking up of nutrition now if orchid root is growing on the mango tree then ma'am how will it uh, survive the how will it have nutrition well not all the roots will grow on mango tree some of the roots will be underground point number 1 second point these are aerial hygroscopic roots hygroscopic roots what is what do you understand by the term hygroscopic ladies and gentlemen that which absorbs moisture hygroscopic is that which absorbs moisture in order to absorb moisture this is a aims previous year question ma'am aims is not a part of our exam Give me one more minute. Yeah. So hygroscopic. In order to be hygroscopic, it has a specialized parenchymatous tissue called as velamen. Man, I love this question. Oh, I love this question. This is a spongy parenchymatous tissue, and I don't love it because I love it. Examiner has been loving it since years. Yeah, spongy. parenchymatous tissue if somebody will ask you the example if somebody will ask you the example i have already given you the relationship itself it is orchids and mango roots this is done special functions vital parasitic and epiphytic is enough now i also want to tell you that the sweet potato that i showed you right the sweet potato that i showed you it is a tuberous adventitious storage root this is also a reproductive root it is used in propagation this is the example of a root propagation and that you will include in vital functions yeah so this single root can give rise to more sweet potatoes more sweet potatoes so we are done with the uh, modification of root this is taken from ncrt itself all of you can look at the screen this this is better these are the mighty prop roots arising like i said they will arise from the branches of the main stem yeah they will arise from the branches of the main stem darling uh, first of all if i'm pronouncing your name wrong please pardon me you guys have such lovely names and ma'am falls short with pronunciation uh, um so uh, somebody has asked madam do you know telugu uh, i i don't yeah uh, maybe i will learn maybe i will learn in future um, but uh, right now i know uh, english and hindi all good crystal clear you can see clear nahi dikh raha aapko don't worry chalo let's go further now so uh, these are the mighty prop roots people end up playing with them hanging on to them you can move it towards yourself then this is the classic example of what do you see here what do you see here have a careful look at the picture yeah these are the brace roots na these are the brace roots they are embracing hugging the aerial stem this is your aerial stem yeah and see how thick these roots are 
What is the name of these roots, boys and girls? What is the name of these roots? Thank you very much. Killer signs. These are still truths. These are also still truths. If you are lucky enough, I am not. And you live in a village. You'll easily, and, and you have access to sugarcane fields. Kindly make a visit and look at them. Oh, there's a question. 2018. Is the board clear? They've been complaining that the board is not clear. Board is clear? Have to check. So, sweet potato is modified what? What is sweet potato, boys and girls? Oh, such quick answers. Is it a stem? Is it an adventitious root? Is it a tap? Ah, that is where everybody gets stuck. That is why I took this question. Do you see that? The only mistake that can happen is, is it a tap root? Is it an adventitious root? So, this is an adventitious root, not a tap root. Thank you very much for all the answers. You guys are doing great. Now, let's move to modification of stem. Are we ready? Are we ready with the stem? All good, happy, healthy? Now, just the way we had a brief introduction of the stem, you know, of the root, we are going to We are going to describe the stem like a baby. It's clear? Where is it clear? It's good, na? Chalega? To kar do aaj. Okay, now just the way I describe the root, where is it present, how does it look, where does it come from, what does it do, simple. So stem is a green or a non-green, no problem, I am happy. It can be green or non-green, for example a young stem is green but an old stem is non-green, it can be branched or it can be unbranched. Where is it present? It is an aerial portion of the plant. It is the aerial axis of the plant. And where does it come from? Where does it come from? It comes from plumule of embryo. Plumule of embryo. So just the way this guy gave us radical. Yeah which descends into the ground, I have a outgrowth which ascends above the ground and that outgrowth is simply the plumule. Even if you don't know anything or you know everything, hmm, plumule of the embryo stays. Now, as the root was descending, this is ascending, this is ascending. And now we are going to talk about the habits of uh, stem just the way we spoke about habits of root. It is positively, can you tell me in the chat box everybody, it is positively phototropic. Please don't do the mistake of using trophic. Trophic and tropic are different words. It is negatively geotropic, negatively geotropic away from the gravity. It is negatively hydrotropic hydrotropic it grows away from the water as well good happy this is making sense to us that's all about stem yeah easy now people what we are going to discuss now <laughs> is important and before i tell you what what it is i want to tickle your heads I want to do something with your brains. Imagine that you dig the ground and you get sweet potato out of ground and you call me up and you're like, ma'am, you know what? You taught us. I, I, that really happens to me. That's why I'm telling you. And you call me up and you say, ma'am, I found sweet potato. You taught us. It's an adventitious root. Ha ha ha. My life is good. And then I tell you to dig somewhere else. Because I would. And 
when that happens you get a ginger out of the ground you get the ginger and you call me up and you tell me ma'am i got ginger also see it is another root and that is where i'm going to correct you not everything that is below the ground is a root a stem can also be below the ground and then your next question should be how do i get to know that this is a stem and not a root that is what we going to talk about ready is this good ready so the differentiating features the differentiating features of a stem these were the generic introduction now how do you differentiate a stem from all other parts if you look at a stem boys and girls it's a cylindrical axis it will definitely have points called as the nodes on it it will definitely have the points called as the nodes on it point number 1 and i'm going to show you when i teach you about ginger the difference the interval between the two nodes is nothing but the internode is nothing but the internode okay and other than that on a stem you will find something called as the buds based on the position if it is on my head imagine i am the stem if the bud is on my head now bud is a collection of cells and these cells have the power to grow they can multiply as and when they are told to under the effect of hormones or other factors or other stimulations environmental stimulations as well so if the bud is here at the apex or terminally present hmm, i call it the apical bud or the terminal bud okay ma'am good what is this bud going to do it is going to increase my length my height longitudinal growth yeah this is going to cause longitudinal growth be very very clear about the positioning of buds but then something else happens there is a twist in the story these nodes that you just saw these nodes that you just saw these nodes that you just saw yeah what happens here is a leaf arises in fact everything almost everything these nodes are to give a fixed position baba that here only the leaf will arise now there is a angle which is made by the leaf and stem and that angle the space between the leaf and the stem let me use my body for that and the stem okay the leaf arises the leaf arises the space between the stem and the leaf the space between the stem and the leaf is simply the axil now axil is a space not a structure please understand this please clear it in your beautiful heads that axil is simply a space and it is shared by both the leaf and the stem although we study axil more for the leaf this space is going to carry a magical bud bud is nothing but it's a collection of cells which will have the property like i said to grow that is going to be called as the axillary bud this is also a differentiating feature and mind you if anything new has to form in the entire shoot system remember shoot system has a lot of work to do it has to form leaves it has to form branches of the stem it has to carry flowers it has to carry the fruit all of that will be owing to the this lateral bud called as axillary bud position wise this is terminal position wise axillary bud is shared by leaf and the stem i am not calling it shoot i am calling it stem is that clear to you makes sense so that was the brief introduction of the stem we kind of get it good okay 
Now we will move on to the modification very very fast. I can see your messages. When you talk about modification of STEM, now you guys have to help me out here. What will be the first category or title of modification? Can you tell me the title of modification? We have certain storage. So fleshy stems. Now people, a fleshy stem is mostly under the ground. Like I was showing you ginger. Okay, so fleshy stems are often underground stems. Yeah, and these stems do a lot of things. The major thing is they don't let the plant to die. They don't let the plant to die. So this is a very, 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 very important point. And a previous year question, what is the function or what is the purpose or what is the speciality of an underground stem? And there's a word called as perination comes from perish. Since stem grows aerially, we know that things can get difficult aerially. You know, temperature can rise, temperature can uh, become really low, xerophytic condition for example, or there could be a storm, or there could be absence of light, no photosynthesis is happening, and the aerial parts of the plant, leaves are dead, stem is dead, there is no flower, fruit, that happens in extreme winters or extreme summers. In that case, these underground stems will stay alive below the ground. And when the environmental conditions will be good enough, conducive enough, favorable enough, then the food stored in these underground stems will provide the energy for the plant to regrow. This phenomenon is called as perination. Okay. Now the question comes. The question is, ma'am, how do I make a difference between an underground stem and a root? Okay. So you will differentiate with the help of nodes and internodes. Nodes and internodes. There will be presence of adventitious roots. Now, you know, this is a, this is coming from a supermarket. This is coming from a supermarket. So it doesn't have the hair as it should have. But if the, um, if, if you've seen ginger uh, from a, from a farmer's market, it has small, small threads around it. Well, let me show you a better example. Let me show you something I have. Do you see that? This onion also doesn't have the hair now. It is so processed, but onion usually, yeah, I'll get a better onion to show you uh, maybe in the break time, but usually there are hair like structures coming out of the base of the onion, isn't it? Those are nothing but the adventitious roots, always. Now people, I said from the node leaf will arise, in a aerial stem, in a regular stem, the green colored very important leaf that arises at the node is a foliage leaf. It's a green leaf. But below the ground, I don't have chlorophyll. I'm not carrying any photosensitive pigment. So I become a non-green, very papery thin, very small, scale-like structure. And that is called as the scaly leaf. You know, in autumn when leaves, uh, when there is uh, abscission of leaves, no ma'am, we don't know what is abscission. I'm getting a lot of requests for plant growth hormones. Do you guys want me to uh, do that?
plant growth hormones you know that epsisic acid is a hormone that causes abscission of leaves so in autumn you you've seen that the leaves are very papery so if you step on them there's a rusty sound that the leaves make that is how scaly leaf is present okay now underground stems based on based on shape and pattern of growth and pattern of growth has been divided into what we are going to do this is very 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 important for your exam first one is a rhizome first one is a rhizome a ginger in the ground will always grow horizontally you will never find a ginger which is erect under the ground and it is a branch structure have a careful look this is quite a uh, refined uh, version but you see these marks these circular marks on ginger everybody let me see if you can see let me see no you can't see the marks maybe if you have a ginger in your kitchen yeah there are circular markings on a ginger and a ginger is a is an elongated structure and it always gives branches this kind of underground stem is called as rhizome it is horizontal it is horizontal and branched and if somebody will ask you about the examples no need to get scared because you've studied it from the kitchen itself so it is ginger and if you have seen not the powdered but the fresh uh, turmeric it looks exactly like ginger so many times it has happened to me i want to cook something and then you know i'm in hurry and i end up taking turmeric instead of ginger so turmeric as well it will have the same kind of nodes even clearer it will have the the thread the threads coming out of the ginger are the adventitious roots so ginger is zingi bear species officinale if scientific names or botanical names put a lot of burden on your heads don't get scared okay they will not be asked mostly turmeric is curcuma domestica curcuma domestica used in every house nothing cooks without haldi quite a very nice root very nice root okay and then after rhizome we move on to the continuation the second one imagine that instead of this structure which is growing horizontally i get a structure which which will which has made a rule it is very strict i am only going to grow vertically i will not grow horizontally and instead of being an elongated structure i am going to be a spherical structure so that is called as a comb comb is a spherical vertical vertical unbranched root this is also underground store, storing food doing everything it will have nodes into nodes but it's not going to give any branches classic example of comb that i have is colocasia what do you call colocasia in hindi anybody and you have amorphophallus amorphophallus anybody people who can tell me the uh, vernacular names killer science is very angry at everybody vijay kumar has entered the class thank you nawab's world amorphophallus is zameen kan elephant's foot we call it elephant's foot okay yeah sorry vertical unbranched stem my bad who did that thank you very much god bless you and colocasia is arbi that's not very common i mean i don't eat it 
Cool. The third kind of modification is a rather neat alert. We are going to give a neat alert here. It is favorite question of the examiner. And which is a tuber? What did I tell you about tuber? We have spoken about tuber earlier. What did I tell you about tuber in botany? It will never have a shape. So, alu doesn't have a shape. This is also, this is also a alu which could have done better. Hmm? So, no shape underground, but there is a very special feature of alu. On an alu, you will never see a smooth surface. I don't know if it's going to be visible. These are all supermarket vegetables which I don't like. You will see black colored depressions on aloo. You know, black colored depressions on a potato which are called as eyes here. Can't uh, love this question less than I do. Eyes of potato. Who will tell me in the chat box? Because you guys are so wise and so... Some of you are claiming to be the wisest on the planet. Ha! Huh, I, I heard it. Eyes. What does it represent? Somebody has answered. Priya Darshini. Thank you. Moni. See, you guys have all the knowledge. So, eyes of potato represent the axillary bud. If you let this alu stay in the kitchen for a long time, which usually happens to me because I don't eat alu, you will see a small plantlet coming out of it. Because, and for something new to be present, axillary bud should be present. Ma'am told you. So, axillary bud present in a node is what these depressions are and that is the question. Example, happy? Example, what is the botanical name of alu here? I, I too don't know. What is the botanical name? Solanum? Tuberosum, this family is in your syllabus since a lot of years. Next is my favorite, personal favorite, not as a vegetable but as an example. I don't eat onion. I am writing onion itself. It is a bulb. So just to teach you guys, I won't lie about it. So my house never has onion. And just to teach you guys, I got an onion today. Now, this is a very peculiar example here. This is a very peculiar example. Do you see this part? Do I have a knife? I hope I don't cut my hand. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, not very used to. The part that I took out, do you see that? Do you see this part, yeah, which you reject in a onion, which is coming out of the base. Do you see that part? Now that, boys and girls, is actually the stem. Till now, I don't like the smell. Okay, so till now we have been eating the stem. It has been stirring the food. We have had a happy life. But onion decided to do something different. So, this is a classic feature, reduced disc-like stem, which is thrown away. And this stem usually has a lot of hair coming out. Those are adventitious roots. So, what is edible? What are we eating? So, if I remove this, have a careful look. If I remove this purple layer, yeah, we throw that also. My studio is getting clumsy today. Do you see that? The purple most covering, do you see that? Do you see this? And then there are so many concentric rings. Man, this makes me so happy. To actually <laughs> teach you from these. Do you see these purple rings? Now, I also discard the upper part whenever I cut an onion. I discard the upper part. Yeah. So now I'm going to make a, we are going to perhaps make onion rings after the class. I have no clue what I'm going to make. Do you see that? How they're arranged so beautifully. Yeah. The game of creation is such. 
that these are concentric rings and there's no um, there is no uh, breaking the rule do you see that concentric rings what all what all we teachers do yeah I've never I don't like the smell so who will tell me in the chat box since I'm talking about the smell what causes this peculiar pungent smell in onion and garlic anybody Batado bhai. I'll not cry. So that is the thing. The modern day vegetables are not like that here. When I was a kid, uh, sulfur, sulfur, allyl sulfate. I know chemistry. You know, we used to answer these questions also. They were a part of our syllabus. Sulfur, allyl sulfate. Present in onion and garlic both. So it is a radio. The edible part. Ladies and gentlemen, like you saw, the beautiful purple concentric rings which are edible are actually the scaly leaves. Who would have thought the underdog of the show? We didn't care about scaly leaves, but they become edible. They have these uh, sulfur compounds and lead to watering of eyes and give that tarka as people call it. Ah, so edible portion is scaly leaf are we good is scaly leaf in on, in uh, if i talk about onion they are arranged as concentric rings but in garlic they form clubs they form individual clubs and if you keep digging this onion in the center in the center i don't want to dirty my uh, table more but in the center you will find a green colored bud here, which we throw while making the sabzi. If anybody is into cooking, anybody. Hmm? So that is your bud, which is going to give rise to the new onion. Now I'm going to write the examples, onion or allium sepa. Allium is the genus and garlic is Allium sedivum. Are we happy? It is Allium sedivum. Both are important for a nice tarka. Ma'am, the non-edible part is modification of. Sayed, with a non-edible part which we throw is stem. What you're eating is scaly leaf, but scaly leaf is also part of underground stem. What would you do? That's why we study it under the portion of stem. The purple part that I just threw, no? This one, the purple part, it is called as tunic. This is also a scaly leaf. It has just become thin. In uh, garlic, do I have, I don't keep garlic. Garlic also has this papery thin white colored tunic hmm? now we'll move on this is about the underground stems now we are going to do the second portion which is your sub aerial stems sub aerial stems there was a chapter not long long ago not once upon a time just two three months ago there was a chapter in your syllabi reproduction in organisms I know which has which has been deleted from the syllabus. It used to have a concept of it used to have a concept of vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation. How many of you understand that? It is a method of asexual reproduction. Vegetative reproduction is what? Vegetative propagation is what? When it is uniparental, the parent plant, any part of the parent plant will give rise to a new plant that is called as vegetative propagation. That is vegetative organ of the plant is hmm? So sub aerial stems simply means that they are partly above the ground, some part is above the ground, some is below the ground and they increase like nobody's business, like no care in the world. The classic and one of my favorite example is uh, is 
a runner a runner you know what it does it creeps like a snake on the ground it creeps like a snake on the ground when i gave my exam long long ago once upon a time when i gave my exam we had this ar question in aims that time there was only one aims in the country long long ago right and it had two seats in general category right and we had to prepare separately for aims for many many months so one of the ar was a gardener planted a small patch of grass in one corner of the lawn that is how aims questions are and the reason was um uh, one corner of the lawn and within a week the entire lawn is completely filled with the grass how is this possible because that lawn grass or the common grass is a runner it literally runs on the ground let me show you if this is the aerial stem this is the normal stem the axis then the runner is a prostrate prostrate simply means horizontal comes out of the main aerial stem have a look at the screen no need to look at me and this aerial stem is called as the crown this is a little additional information this is a little additional information so this is green in color and it will not waste a lot of time it is going to grow only for one or two internodes a maximum of three internodes a maximum of three internodes and after that it is going to give rise to a new aerial branch okay and the nodes which are present on the horizontal branch on the nodes as per the promise i am going to give adventitious roots also and this is called as the tuft of roots tuft of roots happy this is how it literally runs on the ground classic example is lawn grass lawn grass or uh, you call it cynodon cynodon dictylum have you heard about brahmi booty brahmi booty it's a very nice booty <laughs> um brahmi jadi booty if you know these are the herbs that is centella this also grows like a runner now people botanists also involve mint into runner also involve mint into runner but it is not a classic example next is stolon stolon has been asked a number of times in previous years i don't know why but examiner loves it in my head what is happening with stolon is something like walking fern now let's check your knowledge everybody you guys have been comfortable since a long time who is walking fern give me the botanical name of walking fern any adiantum thank you it touches the ground it gives rise to a new crown now you will tell me ma'am this is all happening aerially no why are you calling them subaerial stems we don't like it ma'am hmm you know what that is that is how science is some authors are still fighting about it there are books who put stolon as aerial stems but in your syllabus you will consider it as a sub aerial stem at least it has adventitious roots which go into the ground let's be happy with that let's call it a truth okay so mm, the basic idea of stolon if i have to give you is an arched runner or you know in my head i have learnt it like a jumping runner a walking runner 
just like adiantum which is a walking fern but there the leaf tip touches the ground and the new fern comes out but here the stem tip has to touch the ground and the new aerial stem will come out and that is how it propagates so fast example people i know all of you know the example of this it is strawberry strawberry jasmine and mint you know why people who begin to have plants in their houses the first thing they do is grow mint plants almost every house they have a mint plant because mint grows through any kind of subaerial modification it can be a runner also it can be a stolon also in fact in class 11th ncrt it is given as a stolon okay we'll talk about it as we move on the ground runner just to keep things easy in my head hmm? so this is an underground runner underground runner and same thing will happen it will only it will not waste a lot of time it will creep for one two or three internodes and then it will give rise to a new aerial stem good now the classic example what is this called as let's ascertain that first this is called as an underground runner is called as a sucker happy it is called as a sucker yeah can we do that can we do that this classic example of sucker as given in ncrt is pineapple chrysanthemum you want to pronounce it chrysanthemum do that banana banana na 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 na, na. and my favorite if you ask me is mint Menta Everis. Now, people, there's a twist in the story. Don't we like twists in the stories? I do need a break to wash my hands, uh, but we'll do the vegetative parts and then I'll give you a break. Hmm? Guys, everywhere mint is coming. So, if the examiner asks us what is the kind of modification present in the mint. what are we going to mark is it stolon is it sucker is it runner what do we do what do we do guys come on bata do keh do tell me anybody who wants to make a guess i am very good at waiting very good at waiting now we are going to take the last modification in this this is offset ha ha going to make it very easy puli my darling pul, uh, again i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing your name wrong i could be absolutely wrong people are saying stole on people are saying stole on you know one thing i want to tell the spammers good job but um uh, innovate because you are not making a difference at least here acha runner priya singh runner you know what you guys are doing you are you are going to put all the options and then i'll have to pick if asked in the exam you will mark sucker sucker where is it sucker sucker will be given the first priority the class 12th chapter which is out of syllabus <laughs> delusionally has sucker as mint mint as sucker so you will choose sucker is that very very clear please don't do negative marking now offset first of all this is present in aquatic plants floating aquatic plants this is the first keyword i want you to remember who is the terror of bengal tell me in the chat box which plant is called as the terror of bengal or the most invasive aquatic weed question number 2 question number 1 who is terror of bengal it is called a terror because it spreads very fast and just like lawn grass 
understand the analogy that I'm using. Just like lawn grass, from one end of the pond or lake where it is planted or where it is present, it spreads very quickly to the entire pond, thereby suffocating the lake or the pond. This is the concept why it is called a terror of Bengal. Yeah. Hopefully, you know it. I am talking about Icornia species. Icornia species, the mighty popular water hyacinth. Water hyacinth. We study about this in ecology as well. Now, why does it spread? Because what is happening is, if this is the parent stem, have a look at the screen. If this is the parent stem, it is going to give a branch which is only one into node length. Okay, so the second important point about offset is it is a one into node. One into node runner. And immediately, that's not the end of the story. And immediately, it will give rise to the another erect stem. <laughs> I can't call it aerial in this case because things are happening in water. You know what, ha what will happen now? It's beautiful. This new stem, this new stem is going to detach from the parent plant. Det detaches from parent. Hence the name. This is not given in the textbook, but it's very interesting. It's amusing rather. Since it sets off or detaches from the parent plant, I call them offset. Structurally, it is just one inch node aquatic runner. Does that seem easy to us? Sets off, classic example being icornia. You want to write one more example? Be my guest. Um, Lemna or Pistia. These are other examples. You know what? One more uh, previous year Ames question that is coming to my head. And I'm going to ask that from you. Guys, uh, yeah, Anant, you are a star here. That is water lettuce, Pistia. Tell me one thing. Um, the statement that I have for you, listen to me carefully. The statement that I have for you is that root cap is absent. Ha ha ha, absent. They, they are rosette plants, yes. In Iconia, Lemna and Pistia. Root cap is absent. My question to you is very simple. If root cap is absent, why? It hasn't been asked in NEET uh, since last two, three, four years. But it totally has been asked earlier in my time. Once upon a time. My question is, why root cap is absent? Kindly awaken your brains. And if root cap is absent, what is present? What is covering the root? No need of penetration. Okay? So I don't need the protective cap because there's no soil to penetrate. Omar Adnan, you, have, you answered beautifully because there's no soil to penetrate. So root cap is absent. Makes sense. Very good. Now what is present then? What is present? Got it. What is present? Then what is present at the root apex? Janvi has answered it. You are the star. Root pockets are present. Very good. So pockets are present. Root pockets are present. Now if root pockets are present, what are they doing? Nothing is present for nothing. 
Kavita, my darling, uh, that is also the case, but sometimes they are absent. They are not formed only by the calyptrogen, if you will. Haan, what will root pockets do, bacha? Omar, you are doing really well here. I like you. Thank you. Samriya. Samriya. Very good. Buoyancy. It will help. It will store air. It will store air and it will help the plant to float. Very good. You guys are amazing, aren't you? So, mm, this is how a sucker is. This is how a sucker is. This looks like water, but it's not water. It's very much terrestrial. And you see, this is a mint plant. People who had the confusion, almost the entire population of today's class had this conf uh, confusion that mint is a stolon, somebody is saying runner. Remember, in one world, on one corner of earth, ma'am showed this and this was mint. Mint is most commonly a sucker. Ready for the question? I know some of you are saying we can't see the question, ma'am. Huh? So what I am going to do, I am going to read it out for you. Hmm. The question is, which of the following is not a stem modification? Whenever such MCQs are asked in the exam, kindly mark what examiner's intentions are. Whatever examiner wants. If examiner is saying not, we choose the not. Thorns of citrus. Oh, we have not done the stem modification, have we? One modification is left. Okay, so let's do the aerial modification, my bad. The third kind of modification is aerial modification. Aerial modification. Now like I said, nothing is for nothing. Nothing is for nothing. If I had the underground modification, that was for perination. If I had sub-aerial modification, that was for propagation. If I have aerial modification, that is for adaptation, pure adaptation against the tough environment. So how will I do it? First is I will become a thorn. I will become a thorn. Thorns are derived from axillary bud. Previous year question. Axillary bud derivative. Okay, and what do they do? I know what answers I'm going to get. Thorn are pointed vascular cylinder containing structures. Vascular cylinder containing structures. And they are a stem modification, which the question was about. The function of thorn is not to ease out transpiration as is spoken about by 90% of Mass of people the primary function yes transpiration is also one of the function the primary function is to ease out or to reduce herbivory herbivory what is herbivory grazing herbivores who feed on plants and it is seen in all beautiful plants which are those? Let's write the example. Very commonly asked question. Pomegranate. Citrus. And bougainvillea. Most of the houses these days have bougainvillea. It's a beautiful plant. I have some 5-6 varieties. Maybe one day I'll give you. Because my mother is a botanist. Okay, now this is the main function, but yes, to some extent it will ease out transpiration. Now, let me tell you the truth. The truth is, lenticular transpiration is very, very less, it is around 10 to 15 percent. Only that much it can reduce. Okay? So, if you want to write out this, this is the primary or the main function. You can, since it is given in textbooks, so you guys are anyway going to say that reduce transpiration. Second is something interesting, thorn, uh, sorry, tendril. What is a tendril? It is a structure, 
it is a coiled highly coiled structure that helps the plant to climb just like climbing roots hmm? so more more often than not people confuse between money plant and climbing stem or the tendril it's like how cooked maggi is cooked noodles are especially maggi hmm? this also arises from axillary bud this is also a previous year question the axillary bud will modify modifies into thin coiled structure okay we are good all happy now example of this many many times can't tell you enough one more thing i'm going to tell you if as an examiner i have to choose root modification and stem modification to give an mcq if you give me a choice that pick one i'm going to choose stem modification and that has been happening so cucurbitaceae family boys and girls cucurbits cucurbits all brothers and sisters pumpkin cucumber watermelon muskmelon all of them have tendrils and grape vine and grape vine i was just looking at the farmers market that i have third is something very critical critical mane <laughs> critical mean critical means neat critical let's do it on a fresh page then and mark the neat alert I know you can't see the red color. Don't make a noise about it. Most of you know this. It is filoclade. It is a food storing. mucilage storing thick thick cylindrical or flattened and the keyword boys and girls as always photosynthetic photosynthetic stem that is something very very critical if i decide to do photosynthesis that means the main guy is on leave is not doing the job who does photosynthesis in a plant leaf so this is a property of xerophytic plants here it's a xerophytic modification and who is the best example who is the best example of xerophytic modification cactus who put cactus here simple life ko complicate karna hi nahi cactus or upanchia now i'm going to make it even more informative for you even more informative for you uh what we are going to do is we are going to write examples of both so it becomes flattened in cactus or opuntia and it becomes cylindrical in euphorbia so these are the two examples good no good happy now something very easy called as cladode let's make it easy like we always do do you remember just a while ago we spoke about offsets and what did i tell you offset is an equatic is an equatic one inch node length runner similarly a cladode is a filoclade only it is also a xerophytic modification 
it is also a xerophytic modification but here the main stem is modifying the entire stem of the plant becomes fleshy green photosynthetic cylindrical flattened all of that here branch of the stem branch of stem gets modified or let's write turns photosynthetic modifies as fleshy and it is only one internode who will give me the examples the classic example is asparagus and dahlia and ruscus rather asparagus is not eaten in our country so much but because we don't like healthy things you would rather make a fry it out and then eat okay makes sense so both are zero now the problem is i want you to keep a thought in your head can we keep a thought in our heads one thought one single thought teeny tiny space if stems are turning to be photosynthetic that means leaf is completely reduced what do you think is the reduction what is happening to the leaf in these structures so these are the aerial modifications you will do tendril you will do thorn you will do tendril and you will do phylloclade and cladode now you can see this question which of the following is not a stem modification is it thorns of citrus thorns is always a thank you priya you're doing great spines so more often than not people again equate thorns and spines in fact ncrt has done a mistake uh, herself spine is always a leaf modification and if leaf is modified into spine the job of leaf could be taken by could be taken by stem not only stem so it is the picture of nepenthes if i'm talking about picture of nepenthes i know there is venus flytrap i know there is uh, utricularia all these are insectivorous plants name all the insectivorous plants that you know in the chat box the drosera venus flytrap utricularia which is bladderwort this brings me to talk about the next organ and after leave i am going to give you a break promise because we'll be finishing the vegetative morphology whenever you study morphology understand you divide it into two parts vegetative morphology which has a weightage of at least 2 mcqs and then the floral morphology which is at least 3 or 4 mcqs including families so let's talk about leaf leaf yeah if i have to describe leaf the way i described root and stem what do, what do you want to say say anything you would like to say it is a flattened lateral what else appendage why do you use the term appendage not for stem and root this is an appendage i have mobility yeah you look at my hands i have mobility that's why i use the term appendage flattened lateral appendage green okay and it arises where does it arise at the node we always speak about the origin we said radical in root we said plumule in stem arises at arises at node of the stem yeah node of the stem this origin where i am arising at the node of some other part is called as exogenous origin exogenous origin for example let me make it clear to you for example when i said that primary root is giving rise to lateral roots they were coming out from within the primary root na baba from the organ itself na a new structure was coming out from the parent organ that origin is called as endogenous origin 
here the leaf is coming out from another organ at a specific point called as node this origin is called as exogenous origin then what is the major function this guy is not worried about anything it is just photosynthesis and that is why i am green in color my life is towards doing my job that is photosynthesis so if somebody will ask you about the type about the parts of the leaf oh it's very simple node i have the position also fixed i'm not arising randomly here let's make the terminal bud uh, terminal bud now at the node this guy will arise okay and something will happen something will happen has to happen roughly yeah there are, there are no marks for aesthetics i see people spending a lot of time on the aesthetics of the diagram you don't really need it people do you see that point is it is it enhanced enough this angle like i said is the axil of the leaf but this angle is shared by both and here i placed a very important structure called as the axillary bud this first portion which is actually not readable or which cannot be acknowledged just this portion which is adhering to the node the first portion the first part adhering to the node adhering to node of the stem is called as the base of the leaf it is called as the base of the leaf or simply it is called as hypopodium hypopodium the prefix hypo in biology simply means the base base or lower something which is the which is forming the lower portion in this base something important is happening something important is happening in the base of the leaf what is the important thing well i have axillary bud which is a treasure for me like i said everything is going to happen from axillary bud where it is present this is a previous year question in the base of the leaf okay now some of the leaves all the leaves almost are going to try to protect this bud who will tell me in the chat box what are the structures present in the leaf base to protect the axillary bud before we move on to other parts of the leaf very important that's a very important in fact ncrt speaks volumes about it so in the leaf base to protect axillary bud to protect axillary bud what all is going to be present you will tell me there are several modification thank you who's the mayuk i told you let others answer anand has answered govardhan vijay okay vijay is busy uh, doing everything else this has become a social media platform okay very good so we are going to write all of them protection of axillary bud in leaf base okay let's divide it into three parts you guys told me i did not so taking the cue from you we have the stipules as you say these are present in dicots these will be present in dicots so we have to show you these are very very tiny these are very very tiny i am always short for us yeah 
these are very very tiny tinier than i'm showing you that is just for the sake of appreciation on the board these are leaf like structures but they are not performing any functions of leaf present in dicots then comes something called as pulvinous pulvinous how will you identify pulvinous it will be swollen leaf base swollen leaf base and this is found in legumes extremely important present in legumes what are legumes we have a certain that legumes are pulses peas beans groundnut fibesi what is going to happen is this leaf base which can hardly be appreciated baba it is just the junction of the node and the leaf now becomes swollen imagine there will be a swelling here this structure will this portion will enlarge that will cover up or try to protect the axillary part also this pulvinous is sensitive to shock and sleep movements now this always brings a smile on my face <laughs> because i was nicknamed in my college by my friends as this plant and classic example of shock and sleep movement anybody who is informed enough is mimosa pudica mimosa pudica what is mimosa pudica people we are not talking about petiole this is we are still in uh, leaf base if you touch mimosa pudica the leaves roll in birds even if you go near it touch me not plant very good you guys are doing amazing touch me not plant so it is because of the pulvinous boys and girls interesting right it's an interesting fact it is owing to the swollen leaf base pulvinous that this leaf has this movement the third one is sheathing leaf base is sheathing leaf base you know what happens this leaf base you you see this here a sort of a layer will come in a sort of a membrane will come in i think i have the image also if you guys can appreciate there you go there you go yeah can you see this this one this 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 is the leaf base which is supposed to be empty here yeah? here a membrane will come and it will wrap that part of the node it will cover that part of the node to protect whom the entire game the hue and cry is of the mighty axillary part okay this is seen in grasses are you good this is seen in grasses so if the examiner is uh audacious enough likes to trouble us and says hey tell me the kind of leaf base present in wheat what will you answer what will you answer noor the kind of leaf base present in wheat wheat belongs to now this family is in your syllabus you have to do it poesi family is in your syllabus so wheat belongs to the family of grasses in fact most of the cereals do we will have sheathing leaf base i showed you the image also like i promised do you see that this membrane like structure which is trying to in this region somewhere below this membrane like structure you have the axillary buds axillary buds is a treasure for the plant it's going to form everything new gayatri my darling few moments you know the first organ in my body which gives me a cue to give you guys a break is my back so till that is not breaking i cannot give a break 
even if the hemoglobin is over in my body the blood is kind of drying up it's i always listen to my back okay let's go let's go battery is low just give me uh, okay uh, let's let's um, let's negotiate on this now this is not very clear i understand this is not very clear but uh, you got the idea now we are going to talk about the types of leaves are we ready or uh, let's go back to the structure of the leaf now this is very simple do you see the stalk of the leaf do you see the stalk of the leaf the second part the second portion which is sort of a connection between this part the major part and the leaf base is the petiole also if petiole is present the leaf can flutter in the wind and cool itself down because a leaf has to keep its surface cool why 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 if the immediate temperature of the surface of leaf becomes very high the first thing to disrupt would be photosynthesis because enzymes are sensitive to temperature so petiole is very important called as the mesopodium mesopodium and if petiole is absent if absent then what will happen the problem that will happen is i cannot move i cannot move so the leaf becomes sessile in nature very rarely you will find that a leaf with a petiole is called as petiolated leaf without the petiole is called sessile leaf good with me now let's talk about the real part here the most expanded the green the photosynthetic ha huh? none of them are performing photosynthesis the third part or the kitchen is the this one lamina lamina or the epipodium can i call it epipodium podium is seat platform don't care about it but care about the prefix here and after 7 minutes we would have a break and we'll charge our batteries and we'll fuel our bodies and just give me 7 minutes epipodium is uppermost meso is in the middle what is special about lamina okay it is photosynthetic it is doing the main uh, work here main job but ladies and gentlemen it also this is also previous a question it has these veins and veinlets so the veins and veinlets carry vascular tissue and what is vascular tissue doing in the life of a plant it will conduct whatever the the leaf will make lamina is like a kitchen it will make food it will make sugars these veins and veinlets just like arteries and veins yeah how if you look at your hand do you see the veins my hand has the veins can you appreciate all your hands have veins yeah do you see that if you if you if you clench it if you clench your fist do you see that hmm so it is the nutrition which is happening through veins and veinlets and of course they are helping this very very thin blade like structure to have some skeleton also but majorly veins and veinlets have xylem and phloem phloem also xylem also so if i want i am a leaf i want to do four senses i need water and minerals so i will get that from roots through the xylem that is what vascular cylinder or vascular tissue means if anybody says vascular tissue or vascular cylinder they mean xylem and phloem both kindly don't assume otherwise is that clear to everybody now what are the different types of leaves can we do types of leaves everybody give me fire sign in the chat box
blue uh, there's a lot of difference and if you want to know my dearest uh, what is a vascular cambium then you should attend anatomy of flowering plants vascular cambium is completely different from what a vascular tissue here is I'll just see what you guys are saying those of you who are sending fire are telling me to go further little bit Gayatri just tiny bit one topic one topic it's good to uh, it's good to stretch now types of leaf very easy just because it's an easy topic I'm telling you to stretch the first one is ha ha I am happily I have a happy life I am a single structure I don't care yeah or one day I wanted to have a different design what did I do I became like this but somehow the design or the cut that I'm making in the lamina the game is of lamina yeah so types of leaf are based on lamina if lamina is a complete undivided structure I am going to be called as a simple a simple leaf the keyword being undivided this is called a variegated lamina now these cuts can go deeper they can go till here also they can go till here also but till the moment they don't reach this middle vein this middle vein you see that the main vein the mid vein or when you study types of leaves we start giving it a term and that term is called as midrib boys girls darlings dears more often than not in biology when a lot of terms trouble you always understand that the concept is quite um, small and we are just using different terms to make a distinction if you will for example midrib is nothing structurally but the principal vein of the lamina of the lamina but here in a simple leaf to make a distinction that you know what the cuts will never reach the middle line of the leaf mid part of the structure and keep it a whole and complete structure I am giving a term mid rib and in botany if you ask me the terms are so simple they can easily be derived from the concept yeah once again let's go to the structure of the leaf structure of you can see it here also yeah have a careful look this is the main vein I do not like the color yeah this is the main vein this is the principal vein yeah doing its job in the lamina of the leaf these are the veinlets the smaller ones the smaller ones now if I have to cut this leaf into individual smaller leaves yeah like this or like this or like this I have to cut the creator Brahma has to cut it till the midline that is what is happening here give me examples we see so many we it can be a mango leaf it can be a mango leaf or it can be a guava leaf now let's talk about the second version that we have in life and after this after this we can uh, think about a break we can think so the second one is compound leaf compound leaf let's see what's happening here midrib and tell me one thing what do you think 
this midrib is coming from can anybody tell me in the chat box or to phrase the question for you midrib is an extension of which part bolo 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 it is actually the petiole part only yeah thank you omar adan you are my favorite in today's class up until now let's see if somebody else wants to become favorite so now what is happening is this midrib is going to elongate itself just keep looking at the screen looking like a wow so now this midrib becomes elongated midrib is elongated you know why i elongate why i elongate because now the cuts are deeper the lamina is cutting up until the midrib ladies and gentlemen oh twist in the story and give me the example i know you know the example of this leaf and it gives it a feather like appearance a feather like appearance so if the lamina is divided i get a compound leaf i get a compound leaf this elongated midrib now understand what i told you a while ago it's the same structure it's the same structure getting different names to cause a distinction this elongated midrib comes to be known as a rachis no problem no problem it is just the midrib who has become rachis okay and these leaflets this is called a leaf but these are small cuttings are called as pinnae are called as pinnae can we do that is there any problem pinnae yeah girls earrings matching problem <laughs> so rachis and pinnae are a feature of compound leaf you will not use the term rachis for a simple leaf please don't do that so how did it all start i was a petiole then you know what i was told to extend myself and become a principal vein and midrib and then the midrib elongated further and became a this type of compound leaf is called as can you tell me this is called as a pinnately compound leaf pinnately compound leaf and classic example is neem no 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 yeah that is right it is neem this is a everybody knows this but the other version is interesting to see do you want to see the other version and that is petiole it all started with petiole yeah petiole is like i'm I, i'm not doing anything i'm not forming any midrib i'm not giving you any rachis and the leaf the lamina of the leaf my hand is the lamina he's like okay if i'm not getting a rachis now i'm getting not getting a midrib i'll just divide into leaflets directly at the tip of the petiole so the question that the examiner puts for you is rachis or midrib anything is absent the leaflets will have their individual veins and veinlets for nutrition okay so where is my pen pen is yeah so what will you write for this the the second version in compound leaf this is the first version the second version is palmately compound leaf palmately compound leaf leaflets at tip of petiole there is no care in the world and i want to mention rachis is absent 
and I want to mention that it is present in like some of you answered silk cotton or bomb bags. Both the names have been asked in the past. Is it clear to everybody? Now children, I have a question for you. What do I do? I cannot not have question for you. Let me complete this structure. So this is the stem here. Yeah. Can you look at the screen for some time before the break? There's a very good question coming in for you. Very, very good question. You're going to thank me later. This is the stem, right? And these are the leaflets. Now I said that there's a very important structure for a leaf that is axillary bud. Who will tell me in the chat box where will axillary bud be present? It is going, is it going to be present for every leaflet? Is this the case? No. Axillary bud will never be present. It will never be present for pinnae. There will be one axillary bud which will be present here. When it all started at the base of petiole. Is that clear? Everybody, heads are opening. The grey matter is not drying up. Please write it. Please mention it for the health of your preparation. Axillary buds. Axillary buds are absent. Is that clear to everybody? They are absent. Cool? Good? Ooh, we have images. Yaar, poll kar de to, I can't see the chat box now. So what is the uh, image saying? Do you see this fan like structure? This is, just remember, learn from your own body, learn from your own kitchen. I tell you in first year of MBBS, if you try to learn uh, anatomy from the books, you are going to fail. Either you learn it from the cadaver or the dead body in front of you. Take the scalpel, dissect every day for hours and hours in the anatomy department. This is my story. Till they chuck you out, they don't let you come in. Then you take the help of your body. Of course, you are not going to dissect your own body. And then you study all the muscles, the facial muscles from your own body. Huh? Where is the mastoid process? Where is the temporomandibular joint? Where is the sternocleidomastoid? All of that. Good, makes sense. Now, I'm telling you from experience, from all my heart, when you study like this, you retain it forever. Should you try that? So, this is a palmately compound leaf, na baba? Petiole, tip of petiole, petiole is angry. I am not extending anymore as a midrib. You guys have tired me now. Quite literally ma'am, we are tired of taking this class. So, this is a silk cotton and this is neem. Let's go further in life, we are nation. Little bit, little bit. Five minutes. See, some lies are good. They are called white lies. Manju, you know what? Darling, I would love to share with you. The voice that I am talking to you in is quite loud. That's the only time my neighbours get to hear me. Or my parents get to hear me. We'll do venation. It's the easiest topic on the planet. Huh? And everything seems easy and uh, good before a break, right? So let's take advantage of the feeling. Now venation is very easy, yaar. There is reticulate venation. You know, you guys love zoology. You come across the term reticulum in zoology, especially in the chapter of nervous tissue. Take a cue from there and then you have the parallel venation. No problem at all. There was an old time 
long long ago where we had to do lot of classification of venation please don't do that if it is still available in study materials the updated published books do not have the convergent divergent uh, classifications of venation hmm? so what is reticulate venation simple in the lamina of the leaf and what is venation it is the arrangement of veins and veinlets arrangement of veins and veinlets where are veins and veinlets present in lamina in lamina ma'am why are we giving so much of importance to veins and veinlets ma'am everything is there for a reason those of you who are experienced know for a fact that veins and veinlets how they are placed what is the size of every vein what is the pattern of every vein decides the anatomy also hmm? nonetheless taking this simpler concept if i am forming a network a fish net pattern if you will a fish net pattern yeah the keyword is network of veins and veinlets then what happened then the creator told me to become a dicot leaf to become a dicot leaf and that is called as a reticulate venation the next one is parallel venation what is happening in parallel venation i am very um systematic so this is the principal vein ladies and gentlemen this is the principal vein here the veinlets will run parallel to the principal vein here good good so mm, veins and veinlets are parallel to each other and where am i present the creator put me to become the leaf of monocots because monocot leaves are less broad okay and the orientation of leaves is different we'll speak about that in anatomy also monocots classic example if you look at a grass leaf if you look at a grass leaf happy so easy right looking like a easy wow no we should, you should make a sort of a rap song for botany how easy and beautiful it is good yeah so banana banana will go here okay grasses will go in monocots philodexy can we do last topic philodexy before we take a break uh we do philodexy is that okay philodexy will be over in 5 minutes i tell you philodexy will be over in 5 minutes not lying little bit yeah okay now what happens in life something happens in life this is the last topic of leaf after that we are going to go for a break people are sending uh, uh, fire signs as well you know what people were asking for a dinner break i am also human my i have a digestive system respiratory system i haven't had lunch also i forgot so uh, you when you become a doctor and you will get a duty a call of duty you might have to skip all the three meals and your sleep and you could be in the operation theater on your toes for more than 12 hours sometimes now if you're preparing for an exam that is leading you there little bit we can stretch right hmm so philotaxy taxon is arrangement taxon is arrangement 
and this is the leaf so arrangement of leaf where where should leaf be arranged at i get angry i close it and then it should be arranged at the node this is the point of origin of leaf so one day what happened on a certain node once upon a time the creator put a leaf at the node and then the creator said where do i put the next leaf the next leaf said i don't like this guy i am going to arise on the next node not on the same node give me a special place and brahma ji said okay fine you can arise here you know i'm just just face in the same direction baba it looks systematic and leaf number 2 said no i'm going to face opposite to this guy i'm going to present in an alternate direction and then this pattern continued if i join the successive nodes in this case i get a s ha ha so what me is so easy you derive the term from the concept this is called as the spiral philotaxy spiral philotaxy classic example is your favorite hibiscus hibiscus it can be present in grasses also now grasses is a very very huge family here so there's no stamped uh, there's no stamping that only spiral philotaxy will be present the question that is asked by the examiner is how many leaves are present at one node in spiral philotaxy one node one leaf okay then came the second one in the creation i am going to take the second one now once upon a time on a particular what is the day today anybody see on a certain tuesday a leaf came here and the second leaf said okay i still don't like this guy i don't like him you can put me and then brahma ji was like you know this way uh, there are less number of leaves on the stem you guys have to stop these nakras ha uh, stop this kola very now already so so that is the thing with long hair somebody was asking no how do you have these hair difficult part of life just don't have the courage to make the cut more often than not when i'm teaching you guys okay and talking to you and telling you stories my hair are doing something with the board i turn and the diagram is gone every class this happens here so the other guy decides to come on the same note but in a different direction so he says fine but you know i don't want to be in the same direction now how many answers in the chat box how many leaves on one note how many leaves on one note laughing and laughing all the time tulsi is a very good plant it's good for health uh they say uh, eat tulsi so one node is two leaves an example is the reward i to don't eat because it's meant for worshiping tulsi or osimum and guava guava and the question from previous year you know suddenly in my in front of my eyes i have the question is calotropis now what happened in life something else had to happen because things keep happening <laughs> so the third version of the story is this is the node 
this is the node so the so so the so the so the creator don't distract me guys the creator said i'm giving one leaf here and the other leaf said this guy nobody like this leaf basically the other leaf is coming here okay and uh, brahma ji was like you guys are out of your mind i want peace the third leaf was very smart the third leaf was very smart he's like you know what i'm going to take this position kar lo baat okay and now what is happening here is on one node on one node a minimum of three leaves will be present this is a previous year question and people end up marking two a minimum of three will form a philotaxy let's write the name also here this is opposite philotaxy this is called as opposite philotaxy and since they are forming a circular group here it is called as the world philotaxy world philotaxy since i am making a circular arrangement how many of you see long long ago when i was a child there used to be an advertisement on tv now we don't see uh, tv uh, of whirlpool hmm so whirl simply means a circular arrangement or scheme of things but to to have a circular arrangement i need a minimum of 3 and maximum can be anything minimum 3 leaves on one node chahiye hi chahiye is that making sense yeah and classic example like you guys can't wait in life is alstonia as in sonia alstonia good this looks easy happy now what happens in life i get a question and it has the answer do you want to solve it it already has the answer that is by mistake but uh, let's look at the question for the sake of revision you need a break i'll give you a break uh hmm when did we start we started at 5 o'clock right cool then uh let's do modifications of leaf after 15 minutes it's 804 let's meet at 815 um okay then take care uh but at 8:15 thank you
we are back on the field with the petrol i know i said uh, 815 but uh, guys uh, i am sure uh, because i am not dining yet i don't want my dinner i don't like dinners so all i have is my cup of tea but if you are eating please get your food in the class because you guys can do that so you know one of the things in life is if you eat a lot of food your uh, metabolic enzymes are going to be busy digesting it so we don't want anything else to be to come in between what we are here for i am extending the break don't cry about it how is it i just wanted to ask you guys how is it possible that the teacher standing here and that applies to all the teachers not only me all the teachers of this team are taking 9 hours 10 hours classes um uh, how we don't feel the need of a break or we are never tired and the ones who will have their admit cards in 4 5 months are already tired it shouldn't happen yeah think about this han ji han ji hmm no tell me yeah no i'm in the live batao बताओ बताओ एनीथिंग एनीथिंग अर्जेंट सब ठीक है ना कूल कूल आई कॉल यू थैंक यू यू गाइज आर क्रेजी यू गाइज पुट क्रेजी मैसेजेस लुकिंग लाइक अ वाव looking like a wow these are uh, who will tell me the family of this while we wait for people who will tell me the family to which this specimen belongs Huh? Huh? Capsicum belongs to which family? And if I'm asking, it definitely it's it's definitely in your syllabi. Oops! Oops! My tea is gone. Definitely, my tea is gone. For the purpose of showing you a stem. the tea is gone anyway capsicum belongs to solanaceae family that's right it's okay i'll make a rip <laughs> i'll make a fresh tea let's start let's start let's start okay so now we talk about the modifications of leaf why will modification happen for the purpose of adaptation so the first thing that i told you and i promised you any part whether it is root stem or leaf will modify for the purpose of storage storage of what food not money so the first thing is food storage now such leaves we've been saying fleshy uh, stem fleshy root for leaves we use the term succulent leaves succulent leaves these are the leaves which store food classic example lot of creams are coming in the market lot of creams are coming in the market aloe vera is a succulent leaf and also you know while the tea fell down i was trying to show you onion 
the scaly leaves in onion is also a modification this is a previous year question and those scaly leaves have started storing food and like you guys told me sulfur compounds yeah so scaly leaves of scaly leaves of onion and garlic next modification boys and girls quickly i need strength in roots the strength was by climbing roots in stem it was through coil structures called tendrils and now in leaf we are going to do leaf tendrils we are going to do leaf tendrils now leaf tendrils are again the coil structure and they are also coming out of axillary bud boys and girls but what is happening is here the leaf is trying to climb this is seen in pea plant when i say pea you know the mendel's pea which is the edible pea edible pea is nothing but pisum sativum pisum sativum of fabaceae family but there are other peas also there is wild pea and there is another wild form of pea called a sweet pea sweet pea doesn't mean that i am getting candies out of it it is highly poisonous wild pea genus is lethyris sweet pea is also lethyris understand that all of them have tendrils so somebody says p has tendrils it doesn't mean only the p that we know this is a uh, wild p even if you learn the genus that is okay if you don't want to learn the species what will happen is either the entire leaf will change into a tendrilar structure and climb or if as in case of my kitchen wala p what will happen is i am pinnately compound so some of the pinnae some of the leaflets will change into tendrils hmm? now comes the modification of spines very very important spines now here you can have your favorite concept in your hands which you guys love singing aaj ka din hi kaafi I love tough days. It's okay. करते हैं देखो. So leaf spines are going to reduce transpiration. Yeah. This is the difference between a uh, spine and the thorn, functionally. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you. Spine is also reducing transpiration. Thorn is also reducing transpiration. Function is same. but you guys told me spine or leaf modification thorn is stem modification in genetics or in evolution or in biology what do you call such structures that is my simple crisp pavam question answers in the chat box okay now classic example you will that's why i told you to relate these two concepts the examples of phylloclade the examples of phylloclade of stem will be copied and pasted here remember because stem turned out stem turned out to be phyllo clade because leaves were well, you guys told me because leaves modified themselves into spines ye sabjiyan na padhane ke liye actually isliye sab gir gaya so example is opuntia example is opuntia Mm, euphorbia you can take but zizyphus zizyphus and acacia a plant can be a very serious xerophyte or it can be a partial xerophyte as well is this clear to everybody on the planet mm -hmm. now one of my favorites one of my favorites is uh, this one the fourth modification 
Can you see on your screens what is happening on the planet? Stem is here. Stem is somewhere here. After stem, the visible part of the leaf is petiole. But oh my god, the petiole is looking like a leaf, looking like a wow. <laughs> and the leaf you can see here, but more often than not, it becomes a spine like structure, spine like structure. Okay. Asha, one more thing spine also has its vascular cylinder. Thorn also has vascular cylinder. The difference is in the covering. You don't have to go too much into it. Hmm? Looking like a wow jayega. So, here what is happening, ladies and gentlemen? Whenever leaf decides to reduce itself, na baba, that oh my god, I can't stay in this xerophytic environment, I will transpire and die. Some or the other part had to take the responsibility, the onus of performing photosynthesis, making food, because without food, it is going to be a game over. Yeah? So, is there a lag now? No, right? Good. So that structure is called as phyllode. People don't get confused between phylloclade and phyllode. What kind of organs are these? Once again, homology, analogy, and we promise that we are studying morphology to ascertain the evolutionary part of it. Hmm? The homologies and the analogies. So petiole will perform the same function, will become photosynthetic will become photosynthetic as leaves are reduced. Leaves are reduced. This is also uh, just like phylloclade. This is also her lag is there. I don't think so. This is also a xerophytic modification. Did we do something in ODS? No, no. Let's not touch that. Lagging is heavy, it seems. I thought there is a light lagging also. What can we do? No, no, no. Let's not. It's good now, right? Is it fine now? Ma'am, it's fragmenting. It's good now. It's good now. I can see the signal. It's got them 200 MPPs here. Okay, thank you very much. It's all okay now. Now, like I was saying, petiole will become photosynthetic or because leaves are reduced. This is also xerophytic modification. The classic example, one of my favorites and favorites is Australian acacia. Australian acacia and Parkinsonia, as in Parkinson's disease. Nervous disorders here. That is very much in your syllabus. Let's not do anything more. Parkinsonia is very much in the syllabus. Cool. Now next type of modification that we are going to do is simply, this is a little extra, but I'll still tell you because this is included in ecology part. And the last one is, children, make it a point, whenever you are studying about an insectivorous or a carnivorous plant, which is a rarity. It is lamina which has modified itself. It has lamina which has modified itself. So, insectivorous plants, insectivorous plants, to name a few, we have the pitcher plant which has garnered a lot of fame <laughs> in its lifetime of millions of years. 
there is uh, venous fly trap, there is drosera, there is utricularia. So I'm going to talk about these two. Let me see if I, oh, there we are. So what happens in a pitcher plant? The lamina of the leaf gets modified. It is always the lamina. You don't have to mug it up. It is going to make itself a sort of a pitcher. Pitcher is a jug. And there's an opening here. This is called the rim of the pitcher. This is called the, this is all rim of the pitcher. Okay. And here it has the sensory hair as well. So as soon as the insect comes in and it will look all nice and beautiful. It will have all the, um, the vanity done on itself. Yeah, it's always a very beautiful lamina. The insect gets attracted and thinks that I'm going to get a lot of nectar because here what you have are the nectar glands. Look at the game of creation. And as soon as the insect comes in, zzz, the lid opens, the operculum opens, it gets inside and this part of the, the rim, the margins are very slippery and the insect just descends down. And then this lid closes, it traps the insect and this guy has nowhere to go. It gets some nectar but he doesn't know that there's hell waiting for him. Because at the bottom somewhere here, okay, of the pitcher, you have the digestive glands also. It has very harsh digestive enzymes which kush, 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 break the body of the insect, which is actually difficult to break because it's a chitinous exoskeleton from animal kingdom, you guys know that. But this is the insectivorous laminous modification. Can you turn it towards me without the chart? Without the chart. Cool. And one more question that is asked is, uh, what, why are these plants eating these insects? Can you tell me in the chat box, everybody? Why are they eating? Because of nitrogen requirement. So like I told you, an organism would do anything to survive. There is no right or wrong in creation. And it is usually found in the United States, certain parts of United States where soils are very, very deficient. Indian soil cannot be as deficient. There are ecological reasons. You will find these plants. Now in utricularia, which is an equated carnivorous plant, the same thing. The lamina in utricularia. If I talk about utricularia, there it will turn into a bladder. That is why utricularia is called as a bladder word. Ma'am, we never wondered. A bladder word. Not only it, it uh, is going to trap the insects for nitrogen fixation, but it is also storing air. That is, it is providing buoyancy. It helps utricularia too. Float. Next topic on the, before we do this question, let me see, let me see, we've done it all, we've done it all. Okay, now you can solve this question from 2017. 2017, answers in the chat box. Just show me the chat box. I'll see it here. So in Bougainvillea, we have heard about bougainvillea, very beautiful plant. Thorns are the modifications of. You just have to remember, these are all beautiful colored plants. Citrus, pomegranate, bougainvillea. Is it stipules? Is it adventitious root? Is it stem? Is it leaf? Whenever you see the word thorn, it will always be a stem modification. It will always be a stem modification. Whatever may be the Case. Next question. Answers in the chat box. Hmm. Stem.
stems modified into flat green organs performing functions of leaves so sweet look at the language of the question the examiner has been quite explanatory here stems modified into flat green is it phyllode it is probable to get confused so make these distinctions very very proper remember when the session started long long back at 5 pm early evening i told you i'm going to give you the peas of botany remember when i told you the code if you're exploring an academy app and any features on an academy app you have to use the pm1 live code so these are the peas here let me just make it clearer for you what all peas do we know till now we know we know okay we know um, this much we know yes and we know so today's class is going to be about the peas petiole stalk of leaf stem leaf now let's talk about congratulations we have finished vegetative morphology and we are going to move into ascend into floral morphology so what happens is i have spoken about a flower quite a lot in the last tuesday's class in game of neat series which was sexual reproduction in flowering plants so at the node when this leaf arises in this axil or the angle of the leaf ob is for the output division in the axil of this leaf at the time of maturity at the time of maturity and i told you that under the effect of hormones and other messages given to the plant these nodes will condense themselves like this okay and the leaves which were supposed to arise here will now form flowers but the flowers that arise in the axil of the leaf seldom arise as a solitary phenomenon so group of flowers or bunch of flowers that arise on floral axis on floral axis this is what this is going to become a modified stem but to begin with in actuality it was a stem it has just changed its form and structure to perform reproduction right so this modified stem is now called as floral axis because i am not going to have flowers on the entire stem this is one first beginning origin please remember that you call it as floral axis and flowers will arise in group the concept is very simple this group is called as inflorescence and this floral axis ladies and gentlemen here is another p for you is called as peduncle what to do ma'am peduncle peduncle very very important terminology of the flower please don't ever understand flower without understanding the terminology this leaf in the axil of which inflorescence is arising is going to be called as bract it all seems heavy when you read it from the textbook but you know what i'm saying cool hai na inflorescence what is it ma'am 
peduncle. Now let's add a P to our to our kitty. Where is it? Where is it? So now you have another P here. What to do? I didn't do anything. Hungry phyllo phylloclade petiole and we have peduncle. Now people, what happened? Last class, we have spoken about the flower. This inflorescence is going to, this grouping is going to happen in two types. Hmm? The inflorescence is of two types. One is racemose inflorescence. And another one is cymose inflorescence. Happy? Healthy? If the floral axis or what is a better term? Give me the glamorized term of it. It is peduncle. If on peduncle there is a floral, there is a bud. There is a terminal bud. And there is no flower. We spoke in stem that this terminal bud is going to make me grow in height longitudinally. So this type of inflorescence is quite, you know, it will be in length. You will see uh, peduncle being very long. This is called as a indefinite. Let me highlight it for you. It is called as indefinite or indeterminate inflorescence. What are the key features? Terminal bud, indefinite inflorescence. Classic example is sunflower. Classic example is maize. Okay, or it can be grasses also. Now let's talk about another thing which is arrangement of flowers. Okay, so if your eye is here, please position your eye carefully. This is the flower, that's my eye, okay, and when I look from the top, I see young flowers at the top, young flowers at the top, old at the base. This is called as acropetal succession, simple. Young, there we go, there we go. Young flower, because your eye is here, it's how you see things. Hmm? So, we are going to write it here, one of the differentiating features, so might as well write it. Acropetal, acropetal succession, succession. Now, you know, this is a very common thing in botany. Uh, in your syllabus, we are just talking about it in fluorescence. There is acropetal succession of leaves also. So, it is a very generic concept. When the young part is towards the growing point. Cymose in fluorescence is, let's make everything opposite. Rather than mugging it up. Ha ha. Indefinite. Terminal bud. Opposite. Definite. Now I am a definite in fluorescence here. Mane simply means that I don't grow forever. I am a very short uh, shrub like in fluorescence. I will be short in height but I will be spread out. That means I branch a lot. That is the thing about Cymose in fluorescence. If anybody in this class has studied about monocasial, bicasial, polycasial branching, far away from the syllabus, it used to be a question in my time. Hasn't been asked since many, many years now. Yeah? So, <laughs> definite in fluorescence will happen if I remove the bud. No bud. Then what is present? There is a flower which is present here. Okay? So, what do you have? A terminal flower. It doesn't mean that racemose in fluorescence doesn't show branching, to be very honest with you. This simple racemose, I used to take two classes only on inflorescence when I began teaching because it was a, quite an exaggerated topic. There is simple racemose, this uh, compound racemose 
Umble, Spikelet, if anybody has heard about it. If you have doubts, I can definitely have a special class on the app and tell you all about it. One of my, my notes still have it. I have like, I think five pages in my notes for inflorescence, yeah? But mm, what you have to remember is that this is more spread out, even more spread out, more branched than the racemos. And just the opposite of, in, uh, of uh, acropedic succession is exactly opposite is my eye is here but now I see old flower from the top and young flower remains at the base and that age that age basic people succession you can see it in Tulsi There are other types of uh, inflorescence, if you ask me, which we term as special types of inflorescence. Let me see if I can, yeah. Now look at these two inflorescence. One of them is pretty much in your syllabus. This one, yeah. That's why I took it. So these are the types of, this will really, really help you in understanding when we do composite family. This are, these are types of compound or branched racemos inflorescence. This is called as capitulum inflorescence. And this is called as spadix inflorescence. You cannot understand composite family later if you don't understand this. What happened? This portion in the center, this portion in the center now is nothing but the cylindrical peduncle which I further compressed and made it a complete flattened structure. This is called as the receptacle. A flattened peduncle is called as the receptacle. Okay, good. Now, Lee Instead of flowers arising here, what we have here is small, small, tiny, tiny florets that arise here. Exactly adhering to the receptacle. Okay. Towards the center. And on the periphery, we have certain florets arising. So instead of flower, individual flowers, we call them florets. The ones at the periphery are called as ray florets and ones, ones towards the center are called as disc florets. Simple. Sometimes ray florets can become neutral also. This one is just because it's interesting and easy to capture, not really asked anymore. Now what you are eating, what you are seeing here every day because this is again common in households. This one is the peduncle. You are eating the maize. Maize is a unisexual flower. If you remember, I taught you monoecious plant. Monoecious plant is the one where male and female flowers are present on the same plant. An example, classic example is the maize. Staminate and pistillate flowers on one plant. Yeah. So now what you are eating, since you are eating the seeds of the maize, this is a female flower that gets into your home. Of course, it's fertilized now. Now what is this? And in sexual reproduction we also ascertain that the hair like structures that come out, no? As much as I like pink, it doesn't work on this board here. Yeah. The hair like structures are hairy stigma because an emophily will happen here. Last class, this right here is interesting. This is the bract. What is a bract? We just saw that poor guy, that poor guy, this one, in the axle of which the next step of life will start happening. Inflorescence will 
arise in the axil of the leaf called as the bract. Some authors consider it as a modification of leaf rather. But it's not going to perform photosynthesis. Sometimes bract will stay till the end. Otherwise, it will fall off as the inflorescence matures. Cool. Now, this bracton maze has decided to cover the peduncle here. And look at how elongated peduncle is. Amazing, right? So, spadix inflorescence, this name comes from the bract which is now called as sped. In normal English, if you talk about Shakespeare times and otherwise, spade is actually something that covers or protects. Okay, makes sense. So we used to there, there were questions asked from this in uh, old times. Any confusions regarding uh, inflorescence? Let me know. Okay, let's solve a question. Ah, this is a good question. These are all previous year questions here. It's all good. Can you tell me the answer? Smiling, I would love to know your real name. It's an AR question since you guys cry so much about AR. We are going to practice PYQs in tomorrow's class at 11 a.m. All the PYQs of the chapter will be done as a free special class on the app. Link is given in the description box. Kindly, sincerely, faithfully attend that class. So, and racemous type of inflorescence, the main axis grows indefinitely. Seems good. This is true. Yes, such bol raha hai. The main axis is not terminated by the flower. So how do you solve AR? I'm going to give you the trick. I'm going to give you the trick which will keep you safe. Always put hence or because in between. And if it resonates, if it resonates, you got your answer. So let's read it again. In racemose type of inflorescence, the main axis grows indefinitely because the main axis is not terminated by the flower. This seems pretty much good. Because the main axis is terminated by what answers in the chat box. Come on, people. You've had your dinner. I haven't had. My tea also lost out on me. Bolo bhai. It will be a terminal axis. Terminal bud. So, option is one. Any discomfort? Let's go further in life. There we go. Now, it all boils down to flower. What about the flower? Now, now we know the origin of the flower already. That we have done in the previous chapter. In fact, to prove that a flower is a modified stem, if you look at the vascular supply of this structure and the seat of the flower, which is called as everybody in the chat box, last class we did it. It is called as the thalamus. Thalamus is actually the last node of the stem. When it was condensing itself, node, 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 everything got condensed. The last node, poor guy, became the thalamus. This one. Okay? And who lies on the seat thalamus for the first time? The queen comes and takes the seat. That is your ovary. We have spoken about the parts of the flower. Now, people, the stalk of the flower, just like stalk of the leaf, will be called as pedicel. Will be called as pedicel. There we go. We have one more P. Let's go back in life. Let's go back in life. Where were we? Where were we? Yeah, there we are. So we can add one more P to this. Or we can form a fresh list on a fresh page, whatever you suggest. So we have the petiole. After that, we got peduncle. And now we have pedicel. 
trust me this list is going to be with you for the entire life whether you realize or not anand let's be a little uh, a little uh, stingy in this case let's not open the textbook and uh, put everything that starts with p in this list let it remain a little exclusive okay so people why do i go back here i want you to revise isko bhul sakte ho you can forget this if you want no such aspirations but start from this yeah so you have phyllode you have phylloclade very serious petiole do it sensibly always revise what is what is actually phyllode what is phylloclade what is petiole what is peduncle and what is pedicel good in life now what i'm going to tell you is a revision of everything now so we'll start from the queen or let's start in sequence better if somebody has not attended that class it will be good for you it will be good for you so we are certain that the stalk of the flower is pedicel the seat of the flower is thalamus no problem now on the thalamus the first whorl that comes is the calyx this is the calyx children there is a difference between whorl and the part sepal is the outermost part calyx is the outermost whorl hmm? and then after that the colored and the attractive part is the petal is the petal but since we are writing the whorls what should i write can you tell me the whorl it is corolla it is corolla now in sequence we will go to the next whorl which is the androecium androecium and the fourth one or the innermost one is the gynoecium gynoecium andrew is male gyno is female good now who do you think is the which do you think is the accessory necessary whorl of the flower just like primary and secondary sexual organs in human reproduction you studied human reproduction just yesterday okay so take that big bit out and compare it these two are just assisting the process of reproduction na baba calyx is not doing anything it is just protecting the flower when it is in a bud condition we'll write that when we take calyx and study in detail corolla is attracting the insects or the agents of pollination but who is producing the gametes and taking part and going through all of that we studied in last class that is gynoecium and androecium so these are the necessary whorls necessary whorls and these are the accessory whorls good that's about it that's about it now what else if all the four whorls are present in a flower if all four whorls are present it is called a complete flower it is called a complete flower and otherwise you call it incomplete if in a flower both gynoecium and androecium are present it is called as a perfect flower my intent was to clear the confusion between complete and perfect hmm so let's write it if both andro and gyno are present then it's a bisexual flower hermaphrodite those are generic terms if both andro and gyno are present it 
it is called as a perfect flower. This is not given in NCRT, but it can be used by examiner in the language of the MCQ that he is going to put. That is where we get trapped. We don't want to fall into the trap of the examiner. Okay. Now, let me also inform you that most of the angiosperms, if you look at the families, except composite family, if you go from one family to another, all usually you will find bisexuality. Usually you will find bisexuality. Okay. And it is very easy to understand that if one of them is absent, <laughs> then don't call it imperfect, call it staminate or pistillate. If it's a male flower, you call it. I've done this in the previous chapter. So, whorls of a flower, we have done whorls of a flower, essential and non-essential whorls. You can also call them essential and non-essential, actually. The question is also asked from the term essential and accessory being tagged as non-essential. Now we'll move on to the first whorl of the flower. And before that, let me tell you what is isomery. Hmm? It is as simple as what are isomers. Isomery simply means the number of number of individual units of worlds with respect to floral axis. What are the individual units? You already know from sexual reproduction. Calyx has sepal. Hmm? So, how many sepals are present in a particular flower around the floral axis? With respect to that, it's not like sepal will say, I'm going to be three. And petal will be like, okay, you know what, I feel like being four. And then um, androsium stamens are like, yeah, we feel like being ten. No, there's a rule. And that rule is called isomery of a flower. So there's a sequence. It can be trimerous. It is usually seen. 3 or multiple of 3, 3 or multiple of 3. That means if sepals are 3 in number in the calyx, in the world calyx, like we said individual units of a world. So I am choosing the world calyx, individual unit are 3 in number, they are, around, uh, they are arranged in a circular manner around the peduncle. Then androsium can decide to be 6 in number can decide to be 6 in number. Classic example of primary is lily flower. Is green visible? Fair enough? Oh, it looks like, it looks good rather. Can you show me the chart box please? Guys, I need you to share this session with uh, anybody who doesn't study biology. All right, let's go further. Then comes mm, tetramery. Tetromerous. What does it tell you, Baba? Four or multiples of four. Okay. Four multiple of flow. Four. Classic example, one of my favorite favorite. I'm going to take the liberty. Is Brassicaceae family. It's you know mustard. Why is it my favorite? Because it is often asked in the exam. There is no other reason. And pentamery. Let me tell you one more thing. Pentamery is rather common. Now people who are wise and experienced. 
know what I'm saying. Quickly recapitulate, revise all the families in your head. Don't you see Penthamiri all the time? Think about Vibesi, think about Solonese, think about Malvesi. Hmm? So, 5 or multiples of 5? So, classic example for everybody, P or um, so some member of, you can tell me, Solanesi family, yeah? Now, people, there's a disclaimer. This is outside the textbook. But as you move on and mature in the understanding of floral morphology, what I'm going to tell you is going to make so much of sense to you. When I talk about this rule of isomery, it applies somehow only for the androsium, sepal and petal part. They have to follow this rule. But when it comes to the queen, she will always be one. Now apply this to our body. You will not see the rule of isomery applied at the level of gynosium. They could be less in number. The ovary decides to be less in number. And that, like I spoke in the last class, is the fashion in which evolution has taken place. Egg is one gamut. Sperms are millions. Talk about plants. Talk about animals. Because the male gamut has to travel to the female. So that is how creation is working in that direction. So gynosium will not follow isomery and you will realize this as you go further. They will be less in number. Now this image that you see in front of you, lily flower, petunia flower for example, who will tell me the family of petunia? Ah, things are getting serious now. Petunia flower belongs to which family? Bolo, bolo. Tell me. Hmm? So, this is pentamery for example. That is the answer to the question of Petunia. Hmm? It's Solanaceae family. Five or multiples of five. This is Tetromeris. And this is how Trimeri looks like. Easy, happy. Let's go further. Important terms of a flower. That's what I had to tell you. When we speak about important terms of a flower, I want to tell you what is a complete flower, what is a... Um, uh, bisexual flower, what is a perfect flower, what is a staminate flower and pistillate flower. Now I am going to, under this section, I am going to repeat something, repeat something which is very important, the term of monoecious and dioecious. Dioecious. These terms are never used for a flower. So, Cross this. Monoecious is a plant who has male and female flowers on same plant. Who will give me the examples in the chat box? Let's see the chat box people. The example. I just told you. Z maze will be monoecious. Now let's talk about diocese. It is at exactly opposite. It's a plant. It's a plant where male and female flowers. Better terms, pistillate and staminate flowers. On keyword is different plant. Whenever there are two complementary concepts, take care of one, the other will be taken care of. Classic example, papaya, papaya, any other example that you would like to give me people? Any other example? Quick, 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 you have to be quick here because this is a revision. Coming together of convergence of two chapters is extremely important. Good. Yes. Now we move on to symmetry of a flower.
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वॉन्ट टू मेक इट वेरी क्लियर फॉर एवरीबडी एवरीबडी फॉर द इनिशिएटेड वंस अन इनिशिएटेड वंस इंटरेस्टेड वंस नॉट इंटरेस्टेड वंस नो नो दिस इज ओके एवरीबडी वॉट इज हाउ डू यू ऑब्जर्व अ फ्लावर वॉट इज द एंटीरियर वॉट इज द पोस्टीरियर गोइंग टू मेक इट सिंपल एज यूजल दिस वॉज द पिडंकल यार इन माई लाइफ दिस साइड ऑफ द पिडंकल is the posterior side it is always the posterior side you are not interested in looking at the peduncle baba you are interested in looking at the flower so your eye sensibly is always away from the peduncle or in other words the side of the bract what is a bract ma'am i don't know what is a bract bract is that leaf in the axil of which all of paraphernalia happened in florescence the rose ha 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 sepals petals isomery happened till now so this is the anterior portion i don't know if it's clear for you but i'm going to write it in the anterior portion once again this is the peduncle on the peduncle the flower has has this is the flower okay so my eye is sensibly here because my organ of interest is here is that clear i want you to be to take a pause uh, when you're studying this chapter or botany and make it clear in your head what is dorsal what is ventral it will help you in zoology also more so now because you have to study about frog you have to study about cockroach earthworm whatever your pain point is like this is ventral this here the backbone part the back is dorsal if i'm talking about a leaf again it matters what do you see in a leaf this part the upper part is ventral i know you will say dorsal many of you will say dorsal and that is why i'm here this is the ventral part facing the sun or you call it adaxial surface of the leaf and this one facing the ground is the dorsal remember that if i have to face you teach you it is the ventral part in front of the camera who faces the sun this is just a trick because i i'm not going to make songs out of biology can't do that <laughs> so this one who's facing the sun as i face ventrally towards you is the ventral part of the leaf people as easy as that this is the dorsal part of the leaf so this is the how do you observe a flower if somebody will ask you we observe a flower speak up to me antero posteriorly this knowledge will help you in floral diagrams which are sort of in your syllabus kind of you really don't have to worry that is why mother axis is drawn like this and everything happens all the sepals and petals and all the arrangement sort of happens aligned with the mother axis we'll we'll uh, discuss it as we move further if i talk about the symmetry of the flower with respect to the mother axis symmetry is always seen that is why i have to show you and explain it to you with respect to mother axis what am i calling as mother axis from today onwards i'm calling the side of peduncle as the mother axis she is the mother she is carrying the inflorescence whatever uh, suits you to understand so the first is very simple in life i took any radial plane i took any radial plane is this visible which passes through the center the only condition is that the radial plane passes through the center and i am getting mirror images 
then this is called a symmetric flower or actinomorphic flower. Symmetrical flower, needless to say that, but I want you to note down that this is called as radial symmetry. Tell me who in animal kingdom has radial symmetry? Oh, now things are getting difficult, ma'am. Who has radial symmetry? Want to talk about uh, echinoderms maybe? I might be wrong. I don't do animal kingdom. Just remember it. What about echinoderms? People are saying thenophora. Echinoderms? Adult echinoderms and the, that used to be an important question. The adult has and, and the lava has radial symmetry, something you, you want to leave? You can, okay. Something like that? Okay. Now the classic example, I have a trick. Now whenever a biology teacher says there is a trick, people think, oh, some song will come, some mnemonic will come. I must tell you, um, if you continue to study with me, I do not do such mnemonics. But I can tell you the concept. You will take one member of Brassicaceae as an example, one member of Malvaceae, and you will take one member of Solanaceae to make your life easy. So let's take mustard and this will revise the families also. So please don't be a cuckoo, respect the subject, please don't make songs out of concepts, that's my personal opinion. Not very popular or popular, I don't care. But the problem is, the logic is that you will spend a lot of energy and grey matter and your sensibility and your power of memory in, in learning that song uh, which is going to confuse you in the exam centre. So thank me later and remember, I choose one member of Brassicaceae, one member of Solanaceae, beautifully I choose no problem in life. And I choose your favorite member of Malvesi, which is the mighty China Rose. And I'm happy. I don't, <laughs> how many of you, how many of you want to confess this? That you know, more often than not, you guys end up getting jumbled up between the songs that you make. Vijay, Bita, it used to be helpful, my dearest. Uh, you say very nice things. Uh, when we had to learn the, um, for example, essential and non-essential uh, mineral elements or amino acids. I'm, I'm not saying completely put a, put a stop to it completely. Like, don't use it at all. But don't use it everywhere. Yeah. Huh? Then comes the zygomorphic symmetry. Zygomorphic symmetry. What is happening in life? If I have zygomorphic symmetry, oh, I just have one plane which passes through the center and divides the flower into mirror images. I can't do much. This, you know, in animal kingdom also, it is, it is biradial symmetry or in my botany, it is called zygomorphic symmetry. Zygomorphic symmetry. Zygomorphic or it is going to be biradial symmetry. Happy, simple, what are the classic example? Take things from Fabaceae family people. Classic example. P, bean, please put your heart, please put your heart in learning NCRT examples. Kesia and Gulmohar. Ma'am, how do you remember examples? is a common question that I get in my life. Point number one, it is okay to forget. It is not okay to keep things forgotten. Point number two, till today I solve a lot of questions. 
and there's no better way to learn examples. That's all. Third, oh God, this is a lost case. There is no symmetry. I cannot make a cut that would give me mirror images of this flower. And <laughs> this is called as asymmetrical flower. <laughs> you don't have a uh, you don't have a very difficult uh, term for it. It is just called asymmetrical flower. I, my table is full of vegetables. Do I have any other specimens to show you? I'm just thinking. Varun looks like 6 a.m. in the morning. Do you have anything to say about that? Asymmetrical flower examples in the chat box here. What are you guys waiting for? Example is everything, ma'am. You should put on the plate, make a seat. Kiana. There's just one example. Question? God, this answer is given here. I'm so sorry for that. Radial symmetry is found in the flowers of. So whenever radial symmetry is given to you. That is why I don't give songs and mnemonics. Now you know it is a 2016 question. He is going to pick up the example from the family. I told you take a member of Brassica family and there it is. This is the genus Brassica. There can be so many species. Is that clear? Here you will not find it. Trifolium belongs to which family? The experienced ones, the seniors. Come on, Anans, you know this. It's a part of your syllabus. Pisum, giving you a hint. Casia. Another family. All three belong to one family. This video never ends. It is an unending video. Goes till eternity. Let's talk about Calyx people. What do you know about calyx? Very easy points. Tell me the position. Tell me how it looks like. Hmm? Then tell me what is its function. Fourth, we always discuss how, do, how does it behave. As simple as that. So it is the outermost, outermost world, outermost world, units being sepals. Green in color will not perform much of photosynthesis. Protects the flower. Protects the flower in bud condition. In bud condition. Two types. There are two ways in which I, the sepal, could be present. Since I am not alone, either I could be fused with other sepals and then I become gamosepalous. Gamosepalous in my pattern. Or the other one is we don't want to be together, we are not fused. So gamos always means united, as in gametes. Unison. So I become polysepalous. I become poly. You will come across these terms in your families. Very, very important. Is that clear, people? Now, who will tell me in the chat box one of my favorite examples? Usually, these sepals are green in color because they have no other job to protect the flower in bud condition. But if it has to attract, it has to perform the function of petal, then I call it as a petaloid sepal. For a sepal which is other than green in color. And people, there is something called as pappus. Answers in the chat box, everybody. What is a pappus? So sepal is supposed to be a leaf-like structure, nothing doing. Sepal is so, supposed to be a 
leaf-like structure. Look at these game over sepalous condition. Pappus is, when it decides to become hairy, perhaps to trap the insects. So it will be seen in somebody, something <laughs> in Tomophilus. Who will give me the example? Answers in the chat box, everybody. These are hair-like sepals. Hair-like sepals. In, ah, this is so good. I'm so happy that composite family is included. But I'm going to speak to you about, no, it's not wing-like. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's not wing-like. It's hair-like. As yours and mine. This is a feature of composite family people. If you don't know what is composite family, it is okay. It is a feature of sunflower. Two. And sunflower is the most advanced family. Kuch bhi. Why maize? Don't do that. Don't do that. Sarithi. Bacha. In maize, the hair-like structure that you see are not uh, sepals. Yeah. Don't mix up concepts. Yeah. Kills the subject. It is present, uh, those are uh, styles, stigma and styles that have become hairy. Okay? You are. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what we had to do here, I had to tell you about petals. Petals. Very easy, there is no problem in life. All looks wow and beautiful, as is the norm these days. This is the second world. If we'll ask you anything, not petals, we'll write Corolla. It is a non-essential world or an essential world? I don't know. Single unit being petal, they will not be green. If they are green by chance, then they are called sepaloid petals. Single unit being petal. The function is to attract. The function is to attract. They are also in two manners. Gamo, petalous. This is very simple. Yeah. This is just a very basic tune. And polypetalous. Also, when there are two complementary concepts, you will be a darling and you will remember only one of them. You remember gamo, poly is just the opposite because you can count now one, two, three, four. In gamo, you can't really count the individual units until you open up the flower and dissect the flower. So poly petalous. Tell me fast, fused and free. Now in petals, what happens? Just like sepals were doing something um, here and there to help the plant, petals are found in various shapes. Sepals don't do anything with their shape much, but these guys have to mandatorily change their shape according to their pollinator. Okay, I can be a bilabiate. I can be a cruciferous, cruciform petal. I can be a bell-shaped petal. I can be a tube shaped petal. By shape simply means it has two lips to it. All of this is happening. You don't have to go into the details. To attract and to keep and to invite the nectar. Because understand, my job is to attract the pollinator, na baba? So if my pollinator, for example, is a bird, I'm, I've attracted the bird. With the fragrance, with the nectar, with the nectarous reward, with the color, with the odor, and the bird comes and the bird is not able to reach the nectri nectaries or nectariferous glands, then it's a fool's land. So I will choose, perhaps, perhaps, choose to be a bell shaped, a bell shaped uh, petal so that the bird can get inside. And reach the nectar. Is that clear? Let's say I want to tap an insect. 
okay i can become bilabiate so that is how it happens in life now boys and girls estivation like i said at 505 today evening that there is no paper where estivation and placentation are not asked so you have entered a compulsory or a very critical zone in the session kindly beautifully sincerely mark it very very important also one more thing you should remember that sometimes it is in your syllabus now sometimes in a flower petals and sepals are not distinct they uh decide to be together and they might look greenish hmm? sometimes they they might have a color also so when petals and sepals petals and sepals unite together answers in the chat box happen to form to form this is like a kids play petal plus sepal forms what not perianth or perianth don't do that precision precision pinpointed answers i want i didn't say i didn't ask you about the world thank you very much jyoti you are amazing to form tepals so petal plus sepal will form an individual unit tepal and tepal could be one also na no, baba but when they are grouped together when they form a world then i am simply called as the perianth and i can't tell you enough how much i love this question and i am manifesting it and tathastu on you that this question comes in your paper where is perianth present so might as well answer here and thank me later perianth is present in it is a feature of our mighty beautiful lily ac family monocots now now since you have two families in your syllabus which are the two monocot families in your syllabus liliaceae and the largest poaceae family there is no escape now so in both the families have you noticed talking to the experienced ones again that there is perianth monocots are not wasting time because anyways grasses are anemophilus you guys should learn to relate the concept now what is estivation estivation is relationship of non accessory worlds of individual units of non accessory worlds with one another what people understand this definition which i just said as relation of petal and sepal kindly make it clear that it will be sepal to sepal sepal to sepal or it will be petal to petal it will be petal to petal so one day what happened i decided that my nail touches the other nail but there's no overlapping of fingers okay so this is the simple the first one which is valvate this is the first one which is valvate estivation examples in the chat box this is a previous year question valvate estivation tip to tip will touch yeah we'll just write the examples should i write the definition also i think that's pretty much clear but okay um relation between individual units of only accessory worlds this doesn't come in uh sorry non accessory worlds this doesn't come in essential worlds of non essential worlds with respect to each other people each other that is how one sepal behaves related to other calotropis second now the overlapping is pretty disciplined simply means that if this if the margin of this particular sepal is overlapping this one right 
then this will overlap somebody and this can happen in anti clockwise or clockwise have a look this is margin number 1 have a look have a look if i am being overlapped let me just draw it if i am being overlapped yeah i am being overlapped then i am going to overlap the next one as simple as that so there's a dance which is happening you know how you anyways do the dance how you twist if i tell you to twist you're going to twist like this example of twisted estivation people anybody your favorite your favorite i i really feel that twisted is going to be asked this time i don't know why but this is coming next is yeah all members of malvesi bitter your malvesi family will have cotton also it's the cotton family it will have okra also bindi lady finger also so those are given in ncert cotton and happy now makes sense the next one is not discipline but there is overlapping happening and that is called as let's name them this uh here is twisted this here is twisted and this is called as imbricate what do we call imbricate as irregular twisting can we call it irregular twisting because you know what is happening look at this one this is completely external both the margins are completely overlapping somebody so that simply means somebody has to be completely internal look at this guy look at this guy look at this this petal both the margins are overlapped so there's no order in this in fact there are types of imbricate in this type what you can see is one is completely external obviously one is completely internal and the rest three will twist but there are other variations also there's ascending imbricate descending imbricate <laughs> you don't have to remember that keep your life very very simple give me example kesia p uh, kesia gulmohar and you can add p also in this but fabaceae family will show you uh, twisted or imbricate fabaceae family will show you everything it's okay you just stick to ncert examples kesia and gulmohar and last one is a neat alert this is often asked this is often asked also called as descending imbricate in imbricate one more thing can happen sometimes two petals or sepals become completely external then two will be completely internal and one will be left out oh yeah i'm sorry p has vexillary yes p has vexillary estivation that's my fault so it will be kesia and gulmohar not p what we are going to do about p is this there is one petal this is the most commonly asked question of p where a single petal is going to become huge and that is called as vexillum can you give me another name for vexillum anybody it is called as the standard the examiner will ask you which is the largest petal and mind you guys this estivation what i'm telling you or the vexillary estivation is only seen in petal petals of pea family 
the sepals could be valvate or like I said twisted that's why I said to include P here but then that will be too much for you to learn about sepal and petal differently it's okay if you remember vexillary is P right so this is the vexillium or standard it is covering two lateral petals I'm talking about petals of P these are called as the wings the wings or LA and on the anterior side because your mother axis is here on the anterior side two petals will unite together whenever you draw any floral part and you want to show the fusion you make a circle so the question examiner is asking is not only what is called what the two anterior petals when unite together they form a keel or carina wings or la he will ask you keel or carina has two petals or one petal what will you mark it is made up of two petals and i can't say this enough it is about petals Rajiv, that's a good question, my dear. Let's write it now that you've asked. Since this is present, vexillary estivation is present in Papilionaceae family. See, Papilionaceae or Fabaceae family is a subfamily of Leguminaceae. Leguminaceae family is huge. Right? So, since it is present in Papilionaceae family, we call this estivation. That's an old term, papilionaceous estivation. Does that make you happy? Cool. Good. Let's go further. This is another section in which you can observe the estivation. Now, what is the parent? Answers in the chat box, everybody. Quinquential is a type of imbricate estivation. I do not recommend that you go into the types of estivation. Somebody, people are giving me different, different answers. Please check. Hmm. It's so lovely, right? To spam the chat box. Mazza hi aajata hai. Cool hai guys. Let's, let's, let's uh, solve this. What is the perianth? I spoke, uh, spoke about this. Distinct calyx and corolla. Not making sense. Remember, we're talking about the world. This is not making sense. Indistinct uh, calyx and corolla. I cannot really separate them from each other. Why are you guys confused? But let's, three, let's read the third option, amorphous calyx and corolla. No, that is not the thing. I think the answer should be second. Yeah, the answer is second. Keep it simple and significant. Let's go over the androsium. Now people. Now people. What I'm going to tell you about androsium, the behavior of androsium, very, very, very important for your NEET exam. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning when we solve PYQs, you, I don't have to tell you, you don't have to believe me when I say this topic is important. If you want to believe that is okay. Uh, spammer, beta, it doesn't suit you. It's not really worth it. You guys spam the chat box and... There is absolutely no distinction, Sheetal. The words, uh, the, the paths don't really appear. 
So that is why we are not choosing the term amorphous here. There is, uh, we, we can't even speak about a fusion. There is no um, presence of, a sep uh, of something called as a sepal or petal. It's a single unit. So a uh, better term is indis indistinct. Is that clear? Would you stop uh, spamming now? Yeah, this is the reason um, we, we stopped checking the uh, chat box. So androsium is the third world third world with individual, it is a necessary world, it is a necessary or essential world. Do you agree with me? With single unit stamen, stamen single unit, stamen, stamen single unit. Hmm? A stamen will, will have anther and, uh, anther and filament, anther plus filament. Quickly tell me what is the fertile part? We have spoken at length about anther in last Tuesday's class. It's a diathecus, diathecus anther. It is bilobed. It is tetrasporangiate. But more important than if I talk about morphology, it is the fertile part and the swollen part. Swollen part. Now people, the job of anther is to produce pollen grains. The job of anther is to produce pollen grains. What is pollen grain? Can anybody tell me? I mean, homology wise, what is a pollen grain? It is, we screamed with every bit of us in the last class that pollen grain is male gametophyte, a developed pollen grain because it's going to carry male gametes. In case an anther does not produce pollen grains, a sterile anther, if this doesn't happen, I do not produce a pollen grain, then a sterile anther is simply termed as, a previous year question has come from this steminode. Like I said, just open up the previous year papers. Don't believe anybody. It's called as steminode and it's rather highlighted in your, in your textbook. Thank you. Some people are pretty much aligned. I hope and wish and pray that you are very, very clear about these terms. Now people, anthers arise from thalamus on a good day. But sometimes anthers decide to stick to each other or even to the other parts. So there are two kinds of behaviors that I'm going to encounter and those are cohesion and adhesion of stamens and adhesion of stamens does that make sense to us co is with similar ad is with other what you're going to do is you're going to write with me the adhesion part first that means i the stamen i the stamen is sticking to other parts. I the stamen uniting with uniting with other parts. Does that make sense? No problem at all in life. The first one is epi petalus. Why did we say epi? The prefix epi is upon. So you know when I'm attaching to petal, when I'm attaching to petal, it seems like I'm arising above it, from it. Hence the term epi. United with corolla. Whatever you want to say. United with petal, united with corolla. Now, the difficult part <laughs> How will you remember the example? Again, no making songs. We will adhere to the concepts. Family Solanaceae. Your family Solanaceae will show epipetalous condition. Good. So, give me members of Solanaceae. 
you have petunia you have all the members you have chili you have brinjal who thought we'll be talking about a brinjal flower yeah guys let me show you why i got these do you see this do you see this what do you see here what do you see here people what do you see here i got reminded of this because i'm teaching solanaceae family and i talk about brinjal i don't have a brinjal i don't eat brinjal you should not eat brinjal so this is a persistent calyx boys and girls according to the general rule if the flower opens up blossoms it's not in bud condition sepal can say tata bye bye okay bye job done i protected you when you were in bud condition but in certain families and uh, plants even when the fruit has formed this is a fruit you see something called as persistent calyx and solanaceae is a beautiful example of that my goodness i love it love it to the core now the chili all these brinjal also if you get from the market there is persistent calyx chili now again these are supermarket chilies but if you see the farm fresh yeah i'm it, there's nothing left in this chili but you see that there are sepals present here it's a fruit makes sense yeah next is next is epitepalous condition are we ready what does it sound to you can you tell me in the chat box since you guys are so amazing epitepalous condition also called as epiphyllous condition happy now more often than not people get confused between phyllous uh, and tepalous so here i am united with perianth united with perianth no problem at all now how will you learn the example how will you learn the example you will not make any mnemonics you don't need them you are mindful you can do it whatever examples we did for perianth we can simply put them here because it's a relationship so if perianth is present in lily what family asphodelus lily i have to be here now who will give me some interesting member who's not an ornamental plant but belongs to lily ac you're going to be my favorite student for the next one week give me one example which is not a flower i've been talking about lily 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 so let's put the easy example lily asphodelus however you want to pronounce it anybody mayuk mai is bar maine wait karke answer diya hai kyunki kisi aur ne answer nahi diya tha i know i know god bless you beta now others are talking okay so you can take allium genus onions don't forget onions don't forget onions so they also belong to liliaceae the third condition boys and girls these are the often asked condition is now the stamens are like okay now i'll attach to the carpel the female part so that is called as gynandrous condition gynandrous condition happy looking like a wow easy now something challenging something a little tough i've given you the easier one before <laughs> now let me also tell you one more thing here questions if i the examiner is given a choice to choose 
a question from adhesion or cohesion i am going to ask question from 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 there is no cohesion no space for cohesion okay so we'll do cohesion that is the relationship of stamen with stamen can we do that let's write it let's be darlings as we are uh, cohesion so stamen united with stamen well 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 if this happens i get a very simple sweet term answers in the chat box it is called adelphi adelphi ha ha please understand things from simple to complex i have hardly met any student who goes from simple to complex more often than not it is complex to simple now this adelphi can happen in many ways first is i make a single group all of us live together that is called as monodelphus one group or cluster or cluster whatever suits you understanding the concept is important of stamens but there is a but there is a but in the story and that is this adelphina this adelphi that i'm talking about has a condition that we will unite only only at level of filaments does that make sense to us that makes perfect sense to us it's like how you make a bouquet of flowers bouquet of flowers you unite only the stalk of flower what is the stalk of the flower called as anybody in the chat box so now when i unite the example is china rose or malvesi family <coughs> malvesi family let's move further to diadelphus condition diadelphi diadelphus condition simple filaments have made two groups i am manifesting that this question comes to you because it's my favorite what do i do so now uh two uh, clusters two clusters classic example fabaceae family fabaceae family yeah we'll do it we'll do it in the families when we do then comes mm polydelphi poly poly what does poly mean what kind of prefix is that polydelphi now i have various bundles mm and classic example is citrus let's stick with citrus many groups and example is citrus i am not even if i want to i am not going outside ncrt because you don't need to only the wise ones would know how i'm going outside ncrt but that's not happening now what happens ladies and gentlemen on any other day as much as i want to i wouldn't have taught you this but since now you have composite family in your syllabus let's talk about something called as synanthrus sin anthrus condition also called as sin genesis condition oh nice scared of the words scared of the word that is why i gave you two words sin is together anthrus means all the anthers are coming together so now the game changes from this 
it is still it is still cohesion it is still cohesion but you know i couldn't just go on uniting the filaments i gave that power to anther so united only at anthers and who will give me the example be my darling and give me the example quickly i just said it yeah come on guys it's in your syllabus i don't want you to get scared of the new families but i want you to be very well i'm not expecting difficult questions or floral diagrams in this year at least to come from floral uh, families which are newly added um because uh, nmc has just added it but if you don't do basics then we are in uh, a tough spot thank you composite family so sunflower sunflower the ray floret or the disc floret who will answer that okay so composite family let's write let's not make it too tough for you sunflower example sunflower suraj mukhi it's tough to be my darling through the chat box or otherwise if you give me examples and answers like there's no tomorrow you'll definitely be my darling good now let's go a notch further can we go a notch further not in your syllabus i agree but uh, let's not leave things um let's just complete this circle it is only uh it is only right that a situation happens a relationship happens where um anther and filaments that is anthers are united you know, stamens are united throughout their length good idea that condition is going to be called as thin andrus condition easiest let's confess it in the chat box how many of you think that botany is the easiest ever the terms are very very easy and you can derive it from the concept so entire stamen both the anther and filament are fused this is called thin andrus condition Stamens united at both <laughs> both anther and filament. No discomfort. Everybody is healthy. When I ask whether you are healthy, it simply means there is no. constipation of concept this is seen in cucurbitaceae family cucurbitaceae family who is cucurbitaceae family yeah who is cucurbitaceae family people we just spoke about it cucurbitaceae family in stem modification who will tell me the stem modification now there is something else also in life and that is would you like to know what it is the stamens decided this was all cohesion and adhesion right now i decided to be free i decided to be free tell me in the chat box if i decide to be free as a floral unit whether i'm a sepal petal or a stamen what is the prefix that you use what is the prefix that you use it is poly so the last condition is polyandry polyandry 
ha ha the stamens are free in this case boys and girls there is a chance that i will find unequal stamens not a common thing not a commonality but what is there in your syllabus and i want you to make a note of it is tetradynamous condition there is didynamous condition also but what you have to do is tetradynamous condition i am just helping you out so that the whole burden of families becomes very very easy tetradynamous condition is a polyhedry so whenever somebody says there is a didynamous condition tetradynamous condition it simply means that it is a given that this is polyhedry what is happening here there are two stamens which are short and there are four stamens which are long answers in the chat thank you very good very good these are the outer ones see how easy families will become now salvia also very good these are the inner stamens isn't it an example you guys have been darling just to give that example haven't you it is mustard you know this is one of the since you guys are so good this is one of the characteristic features rather mustard and uh, salvia do you want to know didynamous condition since people have started speaking about it might as well who will show you didynamous condition people my favorite didynamous condition didynamous stamen this simply means that now there are two long and two short yes this is seen in how much i love to make it tricky liberty family never heard of it ma'am should i give you the example don't guess examples it is uh, osmium yaar it is example is osmium osmium or tulsi <laughs> who looks like police Did you guys take a screenshot of this? Looking like a wow. So beautiful, so elegant. Looking like a wow. No ma'am, we will spend extra time and then we'll make the notes and then we will talk about we'll cry about PDF, then we'll message, we'll text. we will shoot messages in the telegram group and then somehow we'll make the notes we'll put personal messages to you to our friends we don't like it the easy way absolutely uh, fabulously correct rajiv ji let's go further in life and solve some questions because uh application of knowledge is important i think i'm going to catch cold with so much of ac on my head read the following statements can you read them a sterile statement so whenever a multi statement question comes in front of you as was the case in neat 2022 and could be the case in neat 2024 always go down and see what his intent is so that you already have a basic tune set for your reading and since i have to find the correct answers i go with that sense a sterile stamen is called staminod yes yes this is true epipetalous read this carefully boys and girls epipetalous stamen is found in lily oh this is wrong 
isn't it? And an epiphyllus, which is epiteplous condition, stamen and brinjal. Brinjal belongs to which family? Solanaceae. We just saw that. So it is ulta. It is opposite. Epipetalus and solanaceae, epitepalus uh, or epiphyllus in liliaceae family. This is wrong. China rose possess polydelphous stamen. Oh, this is so wrong. China rose or Malvaceae family possesses monodelphous stamen, isn't it? So this is also incorrect. Salvia and mustard, we just did that, possesses stamens with filaments of variable lengths. And you guys know better, These, this is tetradynamous condition. It is a type of polyandry. Now you know two types of polyandry. There are many, many types of polyandry if you decide to do a post-graduation or some course in botany. If you want to know all about polyandry and all the families, I can teach you that. Salvia and mustard possesses stamens with filaments of vari variable length. This is also true. P possesses monodelphous as well as diadelphous stamen. Now that hurts me. Okay. So P will never have monodelphous stamen. It will have diadelphous stamens. Popularly known as 9 plus 1 arrangement. Oh, I love this question. You know when I sat for the exam and I gave so many state PMTs. Because those years you could, uh, those days you could have uh, multiple domiciles also. So I was born somewhere. My uh, ancestral, uh, my ancestors were somewhere, and I did my twelfth in some other state. And uh, my parents were somewhere. So I had so many domiciles. I travelled almost the entire country to sit for my state PMTs. Yeah, this question nine plus one arrangement. Oh my God! Every state PMT, AI PMT. Until today, because this is one of the diagnostic features of ABC family, I tell you. 9 plus 1 arrangement, it's sort of peculiar. Although they are diadelphous, but only one stamen is left out. The 9 stick together in one group. So, I totally get it that these are the answer is only two statements are correct. This is over. Ah, let's talk about gynosium. I hope it's simple. Did you guys have any problem in learning the Adelphi or uh, the adhesion part? Now we'll move to carpal. This is the innermost world. We're talking about the queen now. Fourth, innermost, necessary or uh, accessory? Come on. Necessary or essential wall, single unit, single unit is called carpal, carpal or pistil, or pistil. Now boys and girls, we always focus on the fertile part. So here the fertile part is none other than, you guys know it from the last class here, the ovary, the swollen part, just equated with anther. So what is happening? The fertile part is, fertile part is ovary, isn't it? And the other parts are stigma, you know it, I don't have to tell you style and ovary, the basal swollen parts. Now this ovary is going to do a lot of things. So it has the ovules which will come inside it. But ovules arise on the cushiony tissue called placenta. So placenta is going to be present okay, along the wall of the ovary. And on the placenta, what will happen in future? Ovules will arise with their stalks. Now, in this manner, I see variations. Ovules arise within the ovary across placenta. Across placenta. But they do so in chambers. There are chambers which are present in the ovary, right? Ovules arise within chambers called as 
locules called as locules so i could be i could be a monolocular ovary give me example of a monolocular ovary think of a fruit where you see only one chamber as you cut the fruit as you cut the fruit i'm sure i have peas in the fridge should i get it i think it's time to get it or if you think about a lemon then that is multilocular multilocular simply means the space or the cabins or the chambers given for the locules to arise there's nothing serious about it these are just terminologies so monolocular classic example monolocular is p any other example you can give me you can you can think about the examples of placentation come on people other than p what do you have come on a monolocular ovary mustard argument 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 or sunflower or sunflower now <laughs> there is a there is a controversy for this one i would love somebody to talk about that controversy that i have marked i'm not going to be talking about it as of now okay now just to give you the idea the example of example of multilocular ovary is my favorite favorite lying here okay let me make the cut let me make the cut i always end up cutting my hand whenever i'm i even place myself into the kitchen yeah oh god that's such a nice cut look at this look at this boys and girls look at this my god this is such a beautiful description of depiction rather of the locules do you see that the seeds of tomato even septa can be seen ya maza hi aa gaya do you see do you see that you can see the individual septa between the locules septa is just the wall between the locules yes so tomato and lemon tomato and lemon all in all tomato is in your syllabus so solanaceae family will have multilocular ovary now before i before we go to the placentation part also remember this is a previous year question that i just saw yesterday depending on the number of depending on number of carpels i can be a monocapillary ovary monocapillary ovary or i can be a polycapillary ovary i can be a polycapillary ovary now in monocapillary there is no complication but if i am polycapillary that is i have 1 2 3 4 multiple carpels then what is going to happen same thing either i will be fused with each other or i will be free from each other as we have seen in other uh, units as well if i am fused then what is the prefix you use for fused here come on you can't really be learning this it is sin so sin sin carpus you derive a sin carpus condition now mm, i'm okay with the prefix <laughs> i'm okay with the prefix sin but what about the suffix carpus why are we giving carpus suffix for ovary when it was androsium stamen we were doing andre andreas but suddenly we didn't say syn gynus 
or we didn't say we're not going to say uh, let me give you epogynous epogynous we are saying epocarpus why 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 god you guys no no from now onwards because it's going to apply the carp word because it is a part of carpal carp word is going to be fruit okay and ovary forms fruit forms fruit because see you are saying monocapillary ovary by capillary ovary because anyway stigma and style wither away pretty early in the process of reproduction so now give me examples quickly give me examples quickly of fused mustard mustard and your melvesi family also solanaceae family also almost all the families will show you almost all the families will show you a syncarpus condition almost all the families in your syllabi in your syllabus will show you fused carpels if you want if you don't believe me you don't have to believe me but if you have the floral formulas written somewhere for all the families look at it everywhere there is fusion when we talk about the g except in monocapillary condition hmm epocarpus is lotus and rose lotus and rose is it rose yeah this is easy to learn both the beautiful nice flowers good good so now we'll only uh, take a break after uh, while we start uh, uh, floral families before families will take a break i'll have tea i didn't have tea yes tell me i want to ask you a question let's not finish it here um how do you think will happen in petunia would you find a syncarpus or a epocarpus ovary tell me the this thing what will happen in petunia flower answers in the chat box everybody now i can go peacefully to the next concept not anywhere else it is placentation placentation what is placentation ma'am placentation is arrangement so first of all i ascertain that ovules are arising on placenta then i ascertain that they are arising in chambers called as locules and i showed you the example of a multilocular ovary in the break i'll get p also if i have it in the fridge and i'll show you the unilocular ovary also but nothing is happening randomly everything is pretty well designed and that design that arrangement of ovules across placenta is called as placentation this is the easiest topic but it is a neat alert what was the question i asked you acha petunia which uh, this one na papa petunia belong, belongs to solanaceae solanaceae is all poly everything is uh, sorry all fused everything is fused so now i am going to teach you in a sequence i am going to teach you in a sequence placentation with the help of diagram so that it makes so much of sense to you that nothing else makes sense to you after this i have lemon also we'll cut lemon and see so take the first one let's start with marginal placentation
okay now if you look at a pea boys and girls ovules are not scattered inside the entire ovary they are only present at the margins and this margin is a longitudinal margin it's a longitudinal not a transverse margin formed between the across this ventral suture isn't it so this is the ventral surface of a pea actually you know what let me check and get pea for you why not let me check if i have it in the kitchen and we'll see Sorry guys, no luck. All I got was this and a lot of frozen pea, not the fresh pea. Talk about living in the city. So, okay, imagine a pea. The surface that you see is the dorsal surface, and ovules. And you open the suture. You know that's how you peel. This is the suture. The other side. is the similar side this is called the ventral suture because this is the ventral side of the pea that's why i taught you what is ventral and what is dorsal and this is the longitudinal arrangement only across the margin across margin isn't it and how many locules do we see whenever they ask a question on placentation since last 5 years they've been giving a question on examples but if at all they have to ask anything else it is about the locules present in the ovary so we'll solve that question along with examples this is a unilocular ovary i don't see any multiple ovules or any multiple locules or any septa uni locular uni locular ovary classic example p and b next we will move on to the second variation where you see the ovary and ovules are present in the center of the ovary but there is no axis or there is no structure which is present in the center to keep them in the center they are just nice enough to be aligned in the center this is called as if this is the marginal placentation based on the position of the ovules then this is called as the free central why free because they are not aligned to any axis this is the free central placentation where ovules are present ovules in center looking like a wow so hung up with that after hearing it so much in your comments and everywhere from everybody ovules in the center and it is a unilocular ovary examples in the chat box this is a very very important question unilocular ovary so both the questions are solved example as well as the the break will be after placentation here dianthus and primrose now we will move our head to and please i strongly recommend that you follow this sequence in studying placentation 
it will form a very good sequence in your in in the concept so now when i look at this this is something we saw we celebrated it yeah this is a multilocular ovary but when i say can you see that do you see that the walls of every locule just look at the tomato the walls of the locules or the septa between the locules are meeting at the center and ovules are present only at the center i'm just squeezing it to you know give you a better idea they're present stuck to the center stuck to the center yeah so this is the locule this is the locule it folds inwards at the center locule number 2 locule number 2 folds at the center no problem locule number 3 folds at the center together they meet in the center and ovules have to this is the rule aligned at the center aligned at the center so first of all now the game has changed we were still following unilocular this is a multilocular ovary ovules adhere to central axis to central axis makes sense and classic example is what i showed you tomato and lemon you know when you squeeze lemon if you are making a lemonade and you want to get rid of the seeds the trick is to put pressure to squeeze it at the center so all the seeds will be out in one go lemonade technique makes sense why because that's where they are present in the center so put pressure in the center get rid of all the seeds in one go and enjoy your lemonade now we talk about yes china rose as well china rose as well we cannot uh, miss china rose if you talk about china rose this placentation is very visible in bhindi also do you think so if you cut bhindi the seeds are in the center yaar yeah? okra and we can so beautifully see the uh multilocular condition now also i'm going to make your life more easy now it's quite amusing that amongst all the types of placentation there is only one which has multilocular condition all other placentations are unilocular condition let's have a look now this one where what is happening here the ovules are adhering to the periphery they are not coming in the center they are very very disciplined they are not coming in the center they are only adhering to the peripheral wall of the ovary this is your placenta so this is called as this was exile placentation this is called as the parietal placentation because it is present ovules give me the um, examples very quickly ovules at periphery and it's a unilocular ovary unilocular ovary now i know examples are very easy examples for this are very very easy mustard remember when i was talking about the locules here i told you that there is a controversy should i put mustard into mono or unilocular you call them unilocular also or should it be something else so i'm going to clear out this conundrum right here and this is lovely there we go where do we write as usual there is no space okay 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the space here. Since mustard is in your syllabus now, we are going to put extra heart into this. And you can write the other example also which is given in NCRT, that is your argument. But a lot of questions come from mustard. In mustard, replim or pseudo septum makes ovary makes ovary bilocular. What exactly happens in this case is that a sort of a now when I say pseudo, how do I represent it in biology? Anybody? Hmm? I make a dotted line. Dotted line simply means this is not something true. So the truth is, if examiner will put a simple question, the ovary in mustard is unilocular or bilocular, you would simply say it is unilocular. It temporarily becomes bilocular. It's not even a true structure. He can ask you the name of the pseudo septum. Pseudo means false, septum means wall. That is the truth of the story. Last but not the least, hmm, we go to the fifth placentation, which is the most advanced placentation or the basal placentation. Why is it called basal? Everything, every other placentation was called so because of the position of the ovule. Have you observed that? Marginal, free central, you have parietal, you have uh, exile placentation. It's all based on position of ovule. So here, ovule is present somewhere here. Yeah, it arises uh, at the base of the placenta, base of the ovary. So there is a single ovule. That is very, very peculiar. It is a single ovule at the base of ovary. Basal placentation has a lot of chances to be asked because it is recently included in the syllabus. So it is the most advanced placentation, most advanced placentation and who is the most advanced, which is the most advanced family? Come on, answer in the chat box, gives you the example very easily. It is present in Astraceae family, Astraceae family or even Poaceae family because these are the two advanced families. One is of monocots, the other is of dicots. Astraceae is composite family, dicots. Poaceae is not the most advanced of monocots if I have to be very, very correct. But it is one of the largest and advanced families. Good. Okay, healthy, no cases of constipation or diarrhea of concepts, looking like a wow, stop using this word wow, let's find, let's innovate, do you want to, do you want me to revise, Achha, uh, Rajiv and others, Rajiv I have been observing this huh, since you have entered the class, guys, Biology as a subject, and I can speak only for biology, there's no dearth of examples and concepts. I can take a five-hour class only on gynosium. Done that in the past. Okay. So, stick to the examples of NCRT and to make it easy as far as floral morphology is concerned, the advantage is that you can connect it to families. 
people find families difficult because they read these two things uh, separately floral morphology separately and then they try to mug up families if your floral morphology is strong na family is like this theek hai chalo let's go further and solve a question of 2023 which is the recent past which is recent past we'll do that exile placentation is observed in very easy example based question i told you placentation is a very favorite concept of the examiner so we saw that it is either malvesi family give me malvesi or you give me uh, uh, lemon and tomato hmm? you give me um, this one solanaceae family also you can give me these two are in my syllabus then i'll find out you have china rose you have petunia and lemon does that make sense to us the first option only makes sense to us completely but we'll go further mustard cucumber and prime rose different families all together mustard never has exile placentation you guys told me prime rose is again different yeah it's free central cucumber is cucurbitaceae family china rose beans and lupin tomato dianthus and pea you already know that this is a mis combination any doubts another question okay this let's say repeat ha huh. free central placentation is found where yaar 2016 i am not making the questions up answers in the chat box people cho it is free central is dianthus and give me the other one along with dianthus give me the other one what is the other example dianthus and prime rose so whenever you solve a question which has one example in your mind this is one of the tricks in your mind just carry the others with it for example like how i said china rose yeah and you guys i said china rose in Mo monodelphi and the family i said and you guys were like no you know in ncert this ladies finger also this cotton also now what will happen this is also very very important position of floral paths whenever you seek the position of floral paths you are actually not seeking the position of floral paths ha ha you are actually talking about the number 1 type of thalamus so there's a topic no in your textbook position of floral paths i'm telling you the reality of it it is actually talking about the type of thalamus but the figure which is given in ncert speaks what i'm speaking and i'll show you through the diagram and there is position of ovary with respect to floral paths when i get into the zone i am going to encounter three situations and this is often the part where you guys cry hey spammers how do you do no innovation at all okay one is hypogynous condition hypogynous condition did you notice did you notice the word gyne gynous has come that is why i said that position of ovary makes a difference hmm? hypo you know you've been telling me since 504 pm that hypo means this prefix means below can we carry this knowledge and move further because it's going to make this super super fun and easy whenever this question will come or this concept will come i will have to seek the i will be asked of i repeat i will be asked of two kinds of question that is position of ovary and position of other floral parts andropariens if you will 
I simply meant um, <laughs> other parts like stamen, sepal and petal. Yeah. So these questions we have to take care of. It is creating problem in the life of neat aspirant. What to do ma'am? Okay. B is um, perigynous. Perigynous condition. You guys told me that perigynous condition. Peri means periphery. Periphery. And gynous is ovary. Once again, I will seek the position of position of ovary and I will seek the position of which one? Floral parts. And the third scenario in this game of ovary is epigynous condition. Tell me in the chat box as fast as you can what does the prefix epi has been telling you since this evening? Everybody. Tell me fast. It is telling you outer or upon, isn't it? Superior or upon. Let's write upon. Once again, I am going to seek position of ovary and I am going to seek position of floral parts. Any problem? Any glitches? Any? Right? Now we will go to diagram. I don't care. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Can you see these? Now this image is the clearest image I have got since <laughs> evening. And that suddenly is a sign that you are going to get a question from this. Okay. So now what is going to happen in life is very beautiful. Look at this. What did I say? Position of thalamus is guiding everything. It is actually the type of thalamus. My thalamus is very very plain as it should be. This is like a normal flower. And ovary is placed on the thalamus. But if I look at other floral organs, keep looking at the diagram. This is the first one which is sepal. Yeah. And it is arising from below the level of ovary. If I look at the second whorl, which is the calyx, it is arising from below the ovary. If I look at the third whorl, I am still below the ovary. If I look at the fourth whorl, well that is carrying the superior most position. So look at this diagram. Look at this diagram and now you tell me what is the position of ovary. We are not concerned about floral parts as of now. You will you will see one, you will learn one and solve another. If you try to learn both, hello negative marking, how are you, been long. So position of ovary here is superior. Automatically, coincident, um, eventually or consequentially, the position of the floral parts position of floral parts has to be inferior. Now let's go back here. Yeah? Hypogynous ovary, hypogynous ovary will have, you tell me the position now. What is the position of ovary? Will be a superior ovary. You tell me the position of the floral parts, they will be inferior floral parts. Inferior floral parts. Is that clear? But understand that we were using the prefix. That is one trick. Another trick is if you want to go the other way around. I 
I am telling you the way to make it simple. Yeah. Choice is yours. Tathastu. Hypo means below. Yes, ma'am. So apply the name of the name of the concept to the position of floral parts and do the opposite for position of ovary. Talking about the examples, again I am going to make it easy for you. All your, all your families, whether it is Lili AC, you know what makes me laugh? What makes me laugh is why people make families such a big matter of life and they are scared. It's so easy. Take out composite family from your syllabus, sunflower family from your syllabus. If you look at Lili AC, open it up right now. If you look at Solon AC, you look at Fib AC, you look at uh, Malv AC, what do you see? You will see superior ovary. So now example is mustard. I am going to take one example from Brassic AC. I am going to take another example from Solon AC. And I am going to take one example from Melvisi. Ha ha. There you go. And this gives you an idea that plants usually prefer a superior ovary for the experienced ones. Superior ovary. Now let's go to the diagram. Let's go to the diagram. Whew. There we go. Yeah. Have a careful look. I'm not going to say anything. You are going. You, you guys are going to derive the concept. Here, thalamus. Do you see what has happened to the thalamus? It has become very, very deep. Compare it to this seat of the flower, who promised to provide a seat, a throne to the queen. This has really deepened its walls, ladies and gentlemen. Keep looking at the diagram and becomes a flask shaped flask shaped thalamus everything will happen according to the pattern of thalamus as is always the case ovary is lying on the seat hmm? and look at the other parts look at the other parts they are arising from the mouth from the sides of the flask it's rather an open mouth flask. Hmm? Do you see that? This is the sepal. This is the petal. This is the androsium. And the fourth one is the queen herself. Okay. But what is happening is, now anybody who is observing this, anybody who is observing this diagram would say that, you know what, the floral parts are superior and ovary is inferior hmm? but that is not the case the authors believe that floral parts have come to lie at the same position so what do how do we decide the position of ovary here who will tell me it is half inferior and position of floral parts is half superior or you can do the other way around so such a condition is called as such a condition is called as the perigynous ovary is that clear to everybody and classic example in the first case, so NCRD doesn't speak about this case, but gives it in the diagram. This example is present in plum and peach, as is given in the theory of NCRT. But what happens in rose? Let's look at that. Rose is a real perigynous ovary. Hmm? So this is happening in rose. Have a careful look once again. This is called as the saucer shaped saucer shaped thalamus or the cup shaped thalamus you have seen the saucer yeah it is not very very uh, in depth 
a saucer is not a very deep structure so at the depth level ovary lies hmm? and on the rims of the saucer i have the other floral organs so this is also a half superior half superior and half inferior condition where nobody is superior nobody is inferior because everything all the floral parts come to lie almost at the same level and that is happening because the shape of the thalamus is such this is seen in rows so now we'll go back and that is how ncrt gives the example of plum peach and rose plum peach and rose and for both you will write half superior you know some authors still consider ovary as the superior one there's a lot of uh, variation to this half inferior but at your level you will for both of them you will repeat the half superior half inferior position let's look at the epigynous this is the exact opposite of hypogynous what is happening to the thalamus because we are certain don't remember don't forget that something is happening it is the type of thalamus which is causing all this difference in the position so now in this case always learn from the diagram that is the best way to learn the thalamus this is the wall of the ovary this is the wall of the ovary yes and here is the wall of thalamus yes both have decided to fuse together both have wall of thalamus ncrt is not talking about why or what is happening to thalamus i am telling you this because it is easier to retain it that way wall of thalamus and ovary fuse together fuse together and ovary is completely covered it is completely engulfed by the thalamus so this is a clearly inferior ovary and again it's a flask shaped structure and if ovary is inferior i just learn one and solve another what will happen to the floral parts automatically the consequence is that they will become superior is that clear to everybody so what will you write for position of ovary it will be inferior position of ovary is inferior position of floral parts is superior classic example ncrt says ray florets of sunflower doesn't it ncrt says what ray florets of sunflower but the thing is disc florets have the same so you can just write sunflower nevertheless since we follow ncrt like it's the voice of god we categorically mention ray florets of sunflower but in reality i can tell you since it's a part of your syllabus and we are going to do it the very next moment hmm, composite family very much disc and ray florets will have epigynous and i told you most of the families what did i tell you remember make your life way way easy most of the families let's say you forget any example blackout happens mind stops working in the exam center remember my words except this composite family Hmm. Mostly, you will have this condition, hypogynous condition. It will really, really help you. Chhi ka chhe. So this diagram is not decoded by uh, folks, by people. The idea was to decode the diagram with you guys and not ignore it. NCERT's diagrams say much more than they appear to be.
very easy question i tell my students that match the following is rather uh, a breather it's 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 uh, difficult to go wrong in match the following unless you are absolutely unaware of the concept in that case you should leave the question so this is what we have already seen this now whatever you have studied now it's a culmination of all the floral parts we are done with the description of a flower we are done with the description of a flower congratulations these kind of questions match the following will ask about all the floral parts for example this is about androsium tetrodynamous condition right so tetrodynamous condition is seen in mustard which ko to ye malum hai so what i'm going to do the trick to solve match the following is immediately eliminate the other options and make your life better now go to the second option usually by the second option you get the answer epiphyllous babies epiphyllous is epithelous and you might not realize it today but in the exam center with all the anxieties and what is happening it is very easy to get confused between epiphyllous and epipetalous so practice more and more questions when it comes to these peculiar concepts so epiphyllous is a feature of what it is actually a feature of what is there lily lily is a family so b should go with second and b should go with second and i can easily eliminate and get my answer in under 30 seconds but that will happen if you remember these uh, floral features nicely let's look at other options because we have to gather revise ov ovary is inferior what did you see ovary was inferior here in the epigynous condition where is it present ovary is inferior where is it present in epigynous flower he has been nice enough to give us the exact term gamosepalous condition is present where we we saw this gamosepalous and polysepalous condition and i told you that solanaceae and malvaceae family has everything in gamo condition so the answer is tomato and you can verify it from your answer so these kind of questions you can expect out of floral morphology very clear oh one more question questions are nice it's a game of questions not theory bolo fatafat sometimes i just want to stand here and read your messages and think about the evolution that is happening not at all so uh, let's look at this this is very easy sunflower last it is epigynous very good mustard the first one most of the plants most of the families are in hypogynous condition forget don't forget this don't forget this there's a pattern and plum peach rose is perigynous condition they are all matched yeah what kind of question so it should be 1 2 3 i get the b option which none of you gave me within 30 seconds not 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 cool actually let's go further in life for the description of a flower description of a flower should i take a break hmm the phone is off okay so we will meet it's 1103 It's eleven o three. Let's meet at eleven twenty. Eleven twenty three. How about that? Eleven twenty three. We meet again. Till then, I'll just uh, clean the tomato and the onion and whatnot, and we'll do the semi-technical description of a flower. If you can still hear me, and we'll move on to the.
boys and girls, we are back to the drum. I hope you are back. And now we are going to dig deeper. See, people are back. Smiling is back. Like I said, I would love to know your real name. So did you guys have a second dinner? Be honest. Food is the first thing that goes out of the mind when you are uh, way too passionate about something. Have you realized that? And whenever something makes you forget about everything and everybody, that is where you belong. Trust me on that. Or waiting for the first dinner, that's not a good time. Your body is not uh, metabolically very uh, strong and it doesn't favor to digest food around this time. Hmm? Don't do that. My maid tomorrow is really going to uh, not be happy. Although I try my best to keep my maid happy and I share a very good uh, rapport with her. But things are not looking good for tomorrow, for sure. Because we have onion peels, we have coconut fibers, we have tomato juice, we have spilled tea. So much for botany like never before. I'll have my dinner and breakfast tomorrow, for sure. That is happening. Okay, forgot to get water. I'm not hungry, that's okay. Cool, let's begin with the next uh, lap of the chapter, which is actually application of the entire floral morphology that we have discussed so nicely in detail. Let's do that people. So whatever you studied about sepals, petals, uh, androsium, gynosium, now is the time to actually apply it rather than learning it separately. And that is why understanding of floral morphology is important. So how do you describe a plant? Yeah, this, this says description of a flower. Flower is a part of the plant. If you come across an angiospermic plant, how do you begin to describe it to somebody? Somebody who is uninitiated, doesn't know, doesn't have a clue. So first of all, you talk about the habit of the plant. What do you understand by habit in morphology? It simply means whether the plant is a herb, shrub or a tree. How does it grow? You can speak a little bit about the habitat of the plant. Let me change this and take you a little further plant. Okay. And then we talk about the, after all is said and done, we speak about the special features, we speak about, we might speak about the seasonal variation. We quickly are interested in knowing the vegetative characters of the plant, which was the, which was the main topic in early evening in today's session, yeah, which we started because these structures, the root, stem and leaf will tell you how this plant has adapted. Next we move on to the floral characters, floral morphology and inflorescence. You will always tell somebody, especially if they have got nothing to do with biology. You will always tell them the inflorescence which is present in this plant. And then you will speak at length about, you know what, we find exile placentation in tomato. Like how I cut the vegetables and showed you. Yeah, you could, you could show it to somebody and make them fall in love with botany. Now look at this. Belongs to Solanaceae family. It has persistent sepals. They stay even when the flower has blossomed. And after that, the easier method is to use mathematics and 
arrive at a floral formula and then you assist floral formula you always assist floral formula with a floral diagram with a floral diagram and then you uh, don't leave them there yeah hold them by the neck and inform them about the fruit and seed which is present in that plant remember i was talking about the plant you will be extremely happy to know that you guys for your neat exam don't have to do any of this but this is for clarity of the concept now listen to me very carefully in the next 30 40 minutes or 1 hour we are going to focus on this the floral formula because floral formula is a treasure of the entire plant family is that clear nobody is going to ask you anything about the vegetative characters of the family more than what you've studied if you know that potato is tuber and solanaceae family is in, is in your syllabus you don't have to really mug it up separately when you study solanaceae examiner is going to be kind enough but what is new what is going to give you all the floral characters at once and the most commonly asked question which of the following is the correct floral formula of solanaceae so this is something that needs to be done now usually what people do what people do is that they learn the floral features and then they arrive at the diagram uh, they arrive at the formula now that is an extremely wrong technique what we are going to do today is we are going to understand the floral formula right observe the patterns and diagnostic features in the floral formula and then we are going to decode floral formula and get all the description of a family we are going to do opposite things is that clear we are not going to list down the vegetative characters and floral characters as is given in the textbook we are going to make it easy so floral formula is basically usage of symbols symbolic description symbolic description of a flower and this is diagrammatic description diagrammatic description now you guys are going to be my darlings would you be my darlings and you will write the components of floral formula with me how many of us are ready let me know in the chat section come on guys a sip of water a sip of juice a sip of chai there's nobody stopping us so components of floral formula this is the base of what you're scared of components of floral formula once you get this there is no question of floral family going wrong there are seven families in the syllabus and we are going to do it very nicely so the first thing is you will follow this sequence sequence is everything here yeah. whenever you describe a flower you begin by describing whether there is presence of bract or not okay so bracteate or ebracteate what is a bract answers in the chat box everybody then we speak about this symmetry of the flower always symmetry of the flower now the presence of bract and non bract is not very important to be very honest with you it's not very important the what i've observed is the examiner usually skips it but from here things get serious okay so symmetry of the flower the next sequence is sexuality of the flower very very important sexuality of the flower okay and then you start the real business starts from here the first word that you will describe in a floral formula is your calyx the second word that you will describe is corolla okay and we know that sometimes they play with us and are present in the form of a perianth okay 
and then we will move on to the necessary words that is androsia and we will speak about gynosium the game ends the game ends at gynosium good with me now well, let's get to the symbols please follow this sequence and life will be very very good now bracteate is represented as br or ebr mark my words nobody has ever given a question where brac was present and they eliminated it trust me on this questions really start from here he is concerned whether you have applied the knowledge of all the four worlds that we studied in the mid part of the evening today symmetry actinomorphic symmetry is described like this since all the radial planes are cutting the flower equally and zygomorphic symmetry is described as this there's no symbol for asymmetric flower okay so we got it actino or zygo or zygo comfortable now coming to sexuality the universal rule you will describe a bisexual flower no problem so now this is your bisexual flower let me make it very easy for you all the families listen to me carefully all the families except sdc family composite family sunflower family are bisexual flowers i've been talking about this angiosperms are usually hermaphrodites bisexual okay otherwise just for uh, clarity this is a what will be this we have the pistillate and the staminate flowers then comes calyx now calyx is represented by a k you will represent calyx by k not c this is where he will try to trap you you will represent the number of calyx in the right foot of the symbol and if you want to show gamo condition if you want to show poly condition see at this point of time you should be very aware of what is gamo and what is poly that's why i took time to tell you about floral morphology you will form a bracket around the symbol what will you form you will form a bracket around the symbol there's no care for poly you will just write the number as it is let let's let's write poly as well good now comes corolla we will use c similar pattern number right hand foot gamo petalous or poly petalous no problem now if they are fused together and i have tepals don't represent them by t it is rather represented by p who in other p has come how many p's do we have today we started with can who in the class is going to name all the p's that we have listed down today yeah so perians now p again you will represent the number in the right hand foot and let's say i want to show fusion make a bracket so what got it then comes androsium very critical you know why because he is going to play around here these are analysis of at least last year 15 last 15 year or 20 years of paper you can open up the previous year papers and see that he is going to play around in these two necessary worlds the necessary for a reason that the reproductive worlds of the flower and they really really characterize the particular family so androsium is represented by a there is no complication in life gynosium is represented by g there is no problem in life now androsium shows two kinds of behaviors and that is where the game becomes interesting hmm? so now i am going to take the first case of cohesion yeah if i have cohesion i am going to show it with the bracket let's take uh, let's take diadelphus condition for example so nine stamens are united together i show nine united and one is free okay this could also be this condition polyandry has no problem i don't have a problem but what about adhesion yeah that is interesting so let's talk about adhesion whenever you have to show ad adhesion let's say we have two scenarios and ro androsium is adhering the corolla androsium is adhering the corolla yeah so c and a 
and the bracket will be on their heads. There we go. Easy? Similarly, we saw that Liliaceae family shows epiphyllous or epitepalous condition. Did we? Did we? So now, parenthesis P in the sequence, I told you, don't forget the sequence. You will always go wrong. It is absolutely a given. I promise you, you will go wrong if you miss the steps and sequence. Because you cannot represent it like this in the floral formula. This is wrong. And I'll show you the formula. We'll solve question and then you'll get the idea. Anywho, it is P and A and the bracket shows adhesion. What you have to remember for cohesion, the bracket is at the right hand side, right foot. And for, uh, for cohesion and adhesion, it is at the heads of the two members. Is it clear? Now, there's also something interesting when it comes to gynosium. What did I tell you a while back? I think two hours back, precisely. When we speak about isomery in a flower, who will tell me isomery in the chat box? The rule does not apply to gynosium. Female is always, always less in number. Hmm? So now whatever is the number, and you'll see that, you'll realize it now, it goes in the right hand side foot. And if I'm showing a syncarpus condition, ha ha, then I'm going to make the bracket. And the interesting part is, if it is an inferior ovary, then the line is on the head. And that is where he will trap you. And if it is a superior ovary, then the line is at the foot. Sorry, if it is a superior ovary, the line is at the foot. Let's write it so that we never get confused. Okay, so if the line is at the head of the ovary, is at the head of the ovary, it is an inferior ovary. And this is a superior ovary. One uh, sort of a trick from my side, which is going to always help you because he's going to trap you here. All families of angiosperms, except Astraceae or composite family, are superior in nature, superior gynosium. Okay? And inferior ovary is only present in composite family. So, this is a brief account of how you're going to use floral formula. But the problem is, in floral formula, you cannot really describe the estivation and placentation. So somebody came up with an idea of floral diagram. Now children, floral diagram is one topic. I'm not going to lie about you, but since last five, six, seven years, five years, there are no questions particularly on floral diagram. But you should know the components of floral diagram because NCRT takes the example of who will tell me the which family which family's floral diagram is right there. Can you tell me? This is actually the mustard family, the Brassicaceae family. You should know how to draw a floral diagram. What are the components of floral diagram? So, like I told you early evening, this side, the peduncle side is the posterior. It is the mother axis. My eyes are always here. And the side of bract is the anterior side. So in this diagram, if you have a bracteate flower, the bract will go here. And everything is aligned anterior posteriorly. Please make that sure. This is your mother axis. Everything is arranged according to mother axis because she's carrying the flower. So this dot represents mother axis, mother axis, the first whorl, green colored whorl, even if it's not colored, the outermost whorl which will show you about the estivation, that is one of the drawbacks of floral formula. So now he can ask you a conceptual question, what problem is floral diagram solving for us here? or the disadvantage of floral formula. It was not showing the estivation properly. It was telling me the number of floral parts, the symmetry, the cohesion, the adhesion, the relationship, fine. But here I get to see whether it is twisted estivation, it is valvate estivation, it is imbricate, it is quinquential, it is vexillary, yes? Now, 
in order the second wall is corolla do you see that here also i can see the estivation but the problem is i need to distinguish between them so in a floral diagram you will always raise this part you will always raise this part i repeat for families individual families especially the new families nobody is going to ask you the floral diagrams yes ncrt has brassicaceae since time immemorial since the ncrt was written that's why we are decoding this but you should know which is the outermost wall which is the second wall now this kidney shaped structure do you see that the kidney shaped structure these will always be stamen and if you want to make a relationship if you want to show a fusion let's say i want to show this the floral formula according to this says it is epipetalous condition am i right how will you show it in the floral diagram of course it's not there in brassicaceae family but let's take the help of this and understand that you will just simply draw a line draw a line between the two worlds okay so here it was a half moon shaped bracket but here it's simply a line so let's talk about the innermost world which is the gynoecium what is happening in gynoecium with the help of floral diagram you're able to see the placentation sometimes <laughs> along with along with this is a very important conceptual question along with the locules the number of locules because if i talk about a floral formula you tell me if i'm writing this if i'm writing this is it even telling me about placentation or number of locules no it is telling me about the number of carpels and the position of the ovary if you ask me it's enough for me but somebody wanted to solve the problem so what i'm going to do is i'm also going to write it for you that these are we are going to write it that these are the advantages of diagram over the formula make sense to everybody make sense to everybody yeah for example i can easily see that this is a bicapillary ovary this is a bicapillary superior ovary hmm? good can we apply floral diagram and floral formula now would we be able to do that there are seven families in your syllabus lovely number seven is a very good number let's get down to family number 1 i am going to focus on the floral formula with the help of floral formula we will be able to solve the questions such as which of the following correctly describes sunflower family gramini family lily ac family but if you go the other way round it is never going to help you right how many families are there there are seven families those of you who are thinking that leguminaceae family leguminaceae family and brassicaceae family are new to the family new to the syllabus brassicaceae family you are wrong because leguminaceae family has the sub family fibaceae which was there in your syllabus since you were born and brassicaceae family in the form of diagram at least i always did it in my classes okay so there is addition of only three families and there's nothing to cry about let's take composite family now if i look at a sunflower it is a compound racemose inflorescence with this is the this is the receptacle of a sunflower i taught you in the evening and the florets which are present exactly adhering to the head or the receptacle are called as the disc florets 
are called as disc florets. But then there are florets which are away from the center and they come to be known as very easier. I don't know why people make a big deal out of it. Okay, this is called as head or capitulum. Composite family is the largest family. It is the largest and most advanced family of dicots. We will directly move on to the floral aspect of it. So first we will do ray florets. About these, we are going to study about these. Like is the sequence, we will start with the sequence. We will not break the rule. Practice present. Next was symmetry. Zygomorphic symmetry. This sign is for zygomorphic symmetry. Then you talk about sexuality. Very, very important. Ray florets. Ray florets are unisexual. Ray florets are unisexual. Now we talk about the words. The first was C. That is, the first was K. K stands for calyx. K stands for calyx, everybody. Very, very important feature, pappus or zero. Now understand one thing categorically. If you want to really ace up families, please understand that every family will have something called as diagnostic features, which are peculiar and characteristic to that family. And if that feature you spot in your exam, please choose your option according to that. So this is one of the diagnostic features of composite family. Diagnostic feature of composite family. If you don't see this, you are not uh, marking the correct option. Next, we are going to take up C, A and G. C is in the multiples of 5. A is 0. I said it's a unisexual flower. It's a pistillate flower. How can A be present? He's definitely going to trap you at this point. He's going to give you a choice where he'll say which of the following formula is correct for ray florets and he's going to write 5 here. I can assure you, I know the examiner. And we should not get into the trap. Now ma'am has been saying, top of her voice, <laughs> that composite family is the only family with inferior ovary. There you go. Yeah, it's so easy. Yeah. This is another trap. Inferior ovary shown by a line at the head of the ovary. It's a bicapillary ovary. It's a bicapillary ovary. Now let's show the obvious fusions. Obvious fusions. Okay. Now since we are just beginning and we are babies, we are going to write. Now I'm going to write the floral characters. You will see the magic happening. With the help of formula, what we have done is we have not followed the textbook. In a way, the textbook first describes, is that true? Every textbook describes the floral characters first, all of that paraphernalia, vegetative characters, it's a, it's a sucker stem, it is a creeper, it is codex, it is culm, it is these, it is perennial, it is annual, it is all of that. What we are going to do is, we are going to make our life very, very easy. We are first going to understand the formula and formula also what we are doing is we are being very smart. We are marking the diagnostic and the answer giving features. I'm going to be super smart sitting in the exam and I'm going to look exactly, you know, when the examiner is like, give me the formula of Ray Florets. You're not going to waste your time looking at all of these because these are commonly present in other families also. BRAC can be present, zygomorphic symmetry can be present, bisexuality is anyway present. Here it's unisexual, yes. Actually, he can trap you here also if he's talking about Ray Florets because Ray Florets mostly are unisexual, mostly are unisexual and that too pistillate, that is female flower is present. But these are going to give you the, except this, 
this and this is going to give you the Qs. Okay, so let's write it. Let's decode. Bracteate flower. Really don't care. Zygomorphic symmetry. Zygomorphic symmetry. You know why I'm writing these characters? So that you know that you can derive those two pages just by learning the formula. Zygomorphic symmetry. You'll see me doing it right now in front of you. Pistillate flower. Let's highlight it. Pistillate flower. Happy? Pistillate flower. Another diagnostic feature, we will write it specially. Hairy pappus. A modification I taught you in the evening or it can be absent also. Gamopetalus. Gamopetalus. How many petals are there? Five are there. Is it, is it good with everybody? Now one of the things that it's obvious now, if, it's a, if I'm saying it's a female flower, I'm not going to have the male organ. Yeah? So, st uh, stamens are absent. And trust me, if he has to trap you, this is where he will. So, let's put a star to that also. And rest is quite okay. Only family with inferior ovary. Inferior can't make it easier than this. Trust me. Lot of people are stuck in the world solving the question of whether superior ovary or inferior ovary. Mark my words. Just composite families, inferior ovary, rest, everything, all other six families are superior ovary. Inferior, bicarpillary, syncarpus, syncarpus, ovary. Happy? Healthy? Now, nobody will ask you the fruit. Nobody will ask you the fruit. And rest, uh, whatever other characters individually you have studied about calyx, corolla in the mid-evening, those will apply here. Now, what are the two members of this family which I want you to remember? Sunflower and marigold. Sunflower and marigold. Sunflower is Helianthus and use. <laughs> okay, and marigold is, I think it is Tegeta erectus. Let me see, let me see. Mm -hmm. Ha, Tegetus. Nobody will ask you, honestly, the botanical names also, but I want you to know more than what is possible. Now, there are certain conditions that I want you to be familiar with. Just to keep you safe. Some authors believe that there are neutral flowers present in sunflower. Okay, so what is a neutral flower? And they just look pretty. They will attract the insects for pollination along with Pappus assisting them. Pappus assisting them. Neutral flower is made if a ray floret goes <laughs> A0, Z0 ray floret. Easy, happy, healthy, everybody can understand. If I don't carry female organ and male organ, I become a neutral flower. First is this. So neutral flower is nothing but a ray floret who has given up their sexual organs. Now ladies and gentlemen, sometimes disc florets do not exist. Then how will the plant reproduce? You should think about it. If disc florets are absent, then ray florets will come to have androsium. Okay, fine. But those androsium will be in synanthrous condition. 
if you remember from mid evening when we spoke about the cohesion of stamens and we wrote about synanthrous condition also known as syngenesis condition we wrote the example of sunflower and i told you categorically that please keep this in mind because we are going to apply it here good so we are going to write that special condition for for goodness if bisc floret is ilva it is absent then ray floret has androsium in synanthrous condition what is synanthrous condition people chat box please i know what you guys are doing in the chat box and the thing is it is not very good unfortunate but each to his own anybody who would like to tell what is synanthrous condition samai i don't know Sa samria thank you good very good this is this is uh, enough for uh, capitulum inflorescence but what we are going to do is we are also going to write the floral formula just to be safe we will write the floral formula although it is not in your syllabus very much of disc floret can we do that can we do that i promise you it is very similar to ray florets but you have to understand the disc floret is bisexual ray floret is pistillate so one change i've told you i don't care about the bract symmetry zygomorphic zygomorphic what does this tell you what does this tell you now the flower has become bisexual this flower will reproduce no problem at all this will also happen no problem who is the first word calyx is the first word oh that is written next is corolla next we go to corolla five gamopetalus and rosium gynosium what is the change i should make what is the change i should make now since there is a bisexual condition i have to have intrusion and they are five in number and they are fused monodelphis condition monodelphis guys i'm i'm telling you it could be difficult in the beginning to absorb so much but trust me it is just one or two times and solving some questions that you guys are going to become a pro at it given that you don't mug up you don't mug up the floral characters i've given you many tricks today one family with inferior ovary yeah papus condition is the diagnostic so use that pattern that a family shows you and you will be good so what is happening here is monodelphy monodelphy there's something more that is happening can you guys just look at the screen this happens this family is advanced for a reason yeah we're, we're not uh, playing blind darts no the first reason is it is showing papus modification of calyx it is the disc florets are showing not only cohesion my goodness but also adhesion now i don't know what you call this what do you call this can you can you just describe this ladies and gentlemen can you just describe this and talk to your vasim sir later yeah so this condition is called as epipetalous condition you know we we you guys should do the otherwise you should you should tell 
chemistry team not to disturb biology because biology is serious business you know biology is difficult i don't think we have such difficult and um, such a advanced thing in chemistry do we so monodelphy and epipetalous condition is what you will see i want you to make a note of this for disc plurids other than that congratulations that there is nothing that they have done the creator has done as far as gynoecium is concerned quickly quickly describe this please can you describe this it is bicapillary syncarpus inferior ovary oh that's a fake account <coughs> not interested in the chart box anymore yeah. so totally a give up is it clear to everybody next we will go to floral diagram you can see what you see in the diagram here yeah this is the bract i told you bract will be present in the anterior this will be posterior then you see pappus yeah pappus but he has drawn it in 3 this dotted line is to show you the hairy pappus 3 is the number similarly in this diagram what he has shown is that corolla is 3 in number but it can be 3 or 5 okay 3 or five and lastly there is no androecium this formula this floral diagram is actually of a ray floret are we together on that do you see how floral diagram also makes it so diagnostic and you have the ovary somehow it hasn't shown the bicapillary condition but you do have a bicapillary syncarpus condition that's okay let's solve a question people in families especially new families if you want to be good you want to be a part of the special class tomorrow at shop 11 am and uh, solve the questions meanwhile let's discuss this question in which flower stamens are syngenesis or synanthrus i just spoke about it na baba that is anthers are fused and filaments are free from each other we just saw that sunflower but which part of sunflower is it disc floret or is it ray floret no it will happen only in ray florets of sunflowers that too if ray floret decides to be bisexual otherwise it's a female flower otherwise it's a female flower i don't care if ray floret that's a special condition decides to be bisexual it is show syngenesis condition next is brassicaceae family so one new family and just to give you a breather i'm doing a old family also keep spamming that is okay you guys just don't know the value of quality education efforts and uh, your future it's more about your future i am creating my present past future anyway by doing what i love to so you're not uh harming or benefiting anybody other than you by doing the right things i can't say more than this if you do something that is harmful that is going to harm you not the teacher not your friend not your parents not your siblings so brassicaceae family is cruciferi family or the mustard family or the mustard family very much in the syllabus directly we are going to be smart enough and go to the floral formula we don't really care about the presence of bract but here we will speak about the symmetry symmetry is now actinomorphic as i promised you from composite onwards every flower is going to be bisexual so you don't even have to think and nobody is going to ask you also yeah now ma'am has told you in isomery oh my goodness we discussed this that it's a tetrameris flower apply that knowledge four or multiples of four people so i'm going to apply that 2 plus 2 who comes after k k 
Corolla comes after K, I am 4. Who comes after Corolla? I am A. And who comes after A? I am G. Ma'am also promised us that there will be no ovary after composite who is going to be inferior. So I don't have a confusion. I don't have a confusion remaining. I simply do this and I am bicarpillary. I am again bicarpillary just like sunflower. Now boys and girls, you must have noticed I left this. One of the most important part in polyandry was tetrodynamous condition or 2 plus 4 condition. Such a beautiful question. So that is where he is going to ask the question. This is the diagnostic feature. This is the diagnostic feature. Now, <laughs> if you have to, I have seen people who will, if you ask a list of diagnostic features, yes, 2 plus 2 is also diagnostic, 4 is also diagnostic. <laughs> No, just keep one or two features as diagnostic features, it will help you in the exam. Hmm? One trick from my side to ease it out for you. Hmm? One trick from my side, except gynosium, please have a careful look at the screen. There is no gamo condition in all other words. Yeah? And most of the rules that we follow they don't apply to female. They don't apply to gynosium. Female is special. Right? So, there is um, poly condition. Do you see that? They are in groups of two, but they are not fused. I don't see any fusion here. Yeah? I am not going to write it because it's not an official textbook trick. But you write it. It will help you. It has helped me. It has helped so many students. It will help you. Do you want me to again show you how you can derive the floral characters just by a simple formula? It's the second family. I'm going to do it. For further families, we are not going to do it. You will derive it on your own. So there is no bract, actinomorphic symmetry. So now, once you know the floral formula, you can easily derive actinomorphic symmetry, bisexuality, Nobody will ask you that. Then there are sepals free, free sepals four in group of two. Two decided to be together but not fuse. Four in groups of two. Corolla, Corolla is what? Petals. Let's be more specific. Four petals, free, or what do you call free petalous condition? What do you call free petalous condition? I want to look at the chat box with a wink because you guys are really. It's okay, I don't get angry. Do whatever you want. Free or poly petalous. With me on that? Ah, this is where we go. Berserk. You should just scream it at the top of your voice. That this is the diagnostic. 2 plus 4 is the tetradynamous condition. But here also, when ma'am is saying something, she has really put thought into it. Here also, I don't have a fusion. They are also free. So, polyandrous condition. But gynosium is the only one which shows, how will you describe the gynosium? It is a bicarpillary syncarpus. Come on people, everybody in the chat box. Um, superior ovary. Without a thought, boys and girls. Without a thought. You can tag every ovary after composite as a superior ovary. I think I, I would have said it so many times. It has become a mantra now. Brassicaceae family, good thing is while we were doing floral diagram, we already decoded floral diagram of Brassicaceae family because it's given in NCRT. Happy? Healthy? You know, you know, we've already done that. Mother axis, it is e-bracteate. Mind you, 
it is e-bracted so I don't see any extra world outside the sepal look at the diagram no need to look at me I don't see any world in the interior portion why because it is e-bracted just giving you a sense of floral diagram so that you're not scared e it simply means I don't have bract and as is visible in the floral diagram the first whorl is sepal yeah one two three four I'm a tetramerous flower I go inside and I see petals four in number there is no fusion ha ha one two three and four and I have the mighty tetradynamous condition and look at the bicarpillary condition as well beautiful right okay good this is the mother axis <laughs> well, what is happening is the teacher who's teaching finds the concept so beautiful but things will change if you fall in love too okay then what happens we come to a new family again so we did composite family how many of you honestly huh be very honest how many of you are finding composite family palatable now? Ho jayega. It is okay. And then we did an old family. Gramini family is a grass family. Grass family. Years and years since I started teaching botany, I used to wonder why they don't teach, why they don't include Solanaceae, why they don't include Poaceae. Such a beautiful family. Yeah, I think I manifested it like five to six years ago. But I didn't want other topics. I didn't want secondary growth to be eliminated. That's like my heart. My heart beats for secondary growth. I didn't want, um, I didn't want transport and plants to go. Yeah. But yeah, you get something, you lose something. That's how syllabi is. And I really am telling you in another two, three years, things are further going to change in terms of syllabus so this is the poesy family poesy family now boys and girls this is largest family to be very precise it's not it is one of the largest family largest family of monocots but you know what let's equate it with composite for some time it is not the most advanced as people are saying in the world it is not the most advanced monocot family. It is orchids, which is the orchaceae family. So, although composite is the most advanced one. Now, people who know Liliaceae family in the entire mid-evening and beginning of tonight, I've been telling you, Lily has parents. Repeat, Lily has parents. Lily has parents. That is another monocot family in your syllabus. Rest all are dicot families. You will be extremely happy to know that even this family has a diagnostic feature of possessing or having parents. Yeah? Let's get down to business. Let's talk about the floral formula. Because floral formula decides my entire life. So to say. Let me go back for a while. Let me go back for a while. And yeah. As far as Brassicaceae family is concerned, can you speak about the economic importance? Although not a very commonly asked question, but I don't want to uh, leave anything undone. So apart from mustard, there is turnip, there is raffinus sativus or uh, Radish, there is mustard, turnip, raffinus, sativus, and these ladies, the rosette plants. Who are the rosette plants? Gobi, alu gobi, uh, this one, cauliflower, and cabbage. What are rosette plants since it has come out of my mouth? They don't develop a very good stem, axis. They grow like this. So you call it patta gobi. Okay. And that is why we need to spray gibralins on them. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of requests for plant growth hormones. I'll do it very, very soon. 
as I speak about Gibrelins. Now we go to, and do remember the presence of Replum in Brassicaceae family. He can ask you that question, but we've done it in mid-evening, which is placentation. Let's go to the floral formula. How do we start? We follow the sequence in life. What should I do in sequence? I don't care about the bracteate or anything. I directly go to the symmetry. It says zygomorphic symmetry. Do you understand? This shows zygomorphic symmetry. I never want to worry about sexuality after composite family. Every flower is bisexual in my syllabus. Ma'am told us that just like Liliaceae, these will also have perience. I'm very relieved, finally. But what is happening is, these are 0 or 2 or 3 in number. In Liliaceae family, those of you, you know, I thought I will not do old families today. The promise was of new families. But then I realized, me being me, I'm always going to compare one family with another and teach you. If you remember Liliaceae family, boys and girls, if it has 3 plus 3 condition. So what I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to caution you that there is a pattern if you remember the pattern, your question will not grow wrong, will not go wrong. In both the monocot families, I see three. So when he asks you, what is the correct floral formula and you see P3, it gives you an idea. You know what, either it is Liliaceae or what is the other monocot family in my syllabus? Ah, it is the Poaceae family. What is the other thing that Lily AC shows, which is very peculiar? We've been singing that song since evening. It is epitepalous condition. Yeah, it is epitepalous condition. Not present here. <laughs> just, just tickling your brain. Then comes androsium and then comes gynosium. Now, boys and girls, Lily AC is a trimerous flower. I promised you that. Lily AC is a trimerous flower. What do you observe here? What do you observe here? This is pure trimary. So people who are crying about new families, what you're lacking is, you're not making a connection with what you know. You're not making a connection with the pattern that monocot families face, uh, show. Trimary, trimary. And gynosium will never follow the rule of isomery. Gynosium is special. Ma'am promised us that no family other than, I'm going to repeat it like a broken record, but the moment you start repeating it to yourself, I promise you no question on family will go wrong in your life. Ma'am said no family after composite family is going to have inferior ovary. Plants like to place queen on the throne. However you want to remember it. Gynosium is going to be superior. So why do I get confused between ma'am, is it superior, is it inferior? There you go. The biggest problem of the question is solved. This is the diagnostic feature. Diagnostic feature. Diagnostic feature. Now if the examiner, I really suspect that, but if the examiner is harsh, okay, and uh, it's, it's one of those years, which I really feel won't be. You will get a good paper. The perianth in this case is not as tepalous as you would expect it to be. If you look at a grass, there's hardly any structure here. Grass leaf is a, one of the most reduced structures, both morphologically and anatomically. Hmm? So the perianth is not really in the form of tepals, but something called as lodicules. Okay. Which are simply very, very reduced membranous structures akin to, you know, membranous structures akin to tepal, sort of tepal. Huh? Membranous structures. I should have got uh, a grass leaf. Hmm? Okay, 
boys and girls so now there is nothing that can trap you in this floral formula we will go to one more one more exception i said i said that and this is a question i'm going to ask you i'm not going to get the answer but i said that the flower is bisexual can you give me an example of a member of grass family which will show you unisexuality in the flower let's see who's up moni are you up somebody has to make my day shraddha i will kill you how dare you say okay dear we are studying grammy family kya kar rahe ho yaar raat ke 12 baje which member somebody said it oh beautiful beautiful it is zimis now you know what the good thing the amusing part about families is there is nothing which is new when you study family but i don't know why you guys completely detach from every knowledge that you have once you come to families and this is the root cause of finding this topic difficult can't say this enough baba you know zimes is monoshis 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 why yeah so zimes is a monoshis plant and this is one of the exceptions rest everything looks very good if i talk about the economic importance if i talk about the economic importance if at all the examiner wants to ask you baba what all the cereals this family is the largest family for a reason all your cereals staple food talk about wheat triticum talk about maize z maize talk about rice or rice sativa talk about bajra bajra is a very good grain yaar bajra is a very good grain penicillin species something nobody will ask you all the cereals and one of my favorite examples is doob grass which you use in puja yeah anybody the priest always wears a doob grass when he does puja and does the tarpan why because it belongs to gramini family that much is enough and sugar cane is also a member of gramini family so sugar cane is again one of those staple foods yeah you obtain sugar from so these are all commercial members so might be possible he might ask you a question from economic importance <clears throat> tetrodynamous condition of stamens solve the question very very fast tetrodynamous condition of stamen is found in members of which family people who were messaging ma'am ma'am we are not able to solve questions of families does it make sense now how easy they are what is tetrodynamous condition 2 plus 4 2 plus 4 condition is only seen in brassicaceae family mustard very easy puts a smile to my face if this doesn't put a smile to your face i don't know what will How many of you found that question easier than before? Don't shy away. Don't shy away from uh, saying that. Oh, I love Hindi. Hindi is my love. Yeah, smiling. Yes, that happened. <laughs> Thank you, Malvesi family. If I tell you about my gut feel, I don't think there'll be any question from Malvesi this year. No, my intuition says there will be definitely a question from Solanesi. Anyway, let's do. It is in the syllabus. This is cotton family, which is again a commercial plant. Commercial plant belonging to the genus Gossypium. This genus is responsible. When I say genus, there are so many species. Is responsible for our cotton factories, for our cotton. factories now boys and girls 
please make your life easy in remembering the fact that you have only lily ac again i am a stuck cd here only lily ac and gramini are the monocot families please follow the rules of dicot family here once again i have actinomorphic symmetry not caring about bracteate condition i will use the rule of bisexuality k c a g <laughs> let's talk about the diagnostic features okay this family loves this family loves gamos condition brassicaceae family was all free okay and this family has pentamerous flowers you are going to love this the way i am telling you families you are going to love this especially when we go to solanaceae and i think i said that in the evening me being me that solanaceae and malvaceae are very similar pentamerous pentamerous everything everything is going to be in gamo condition diagnostic feature i'm marking it separately and you will be exhilarated to know that this family shows the maximum number of carpels yaar okay so if your exam carries a question which of the following is the correct formula of malvisi family mark my words out of all the families in your syllabus <laughs> this family has maximum amount of maximum number of and we we are not confused any more about the superiority every ovary is superior yaar just place the queen at the throne place the queen at the throne this is also your trick or diagnostic feature now just out of the syllabus in your family this is the maximum number of carpels this is not an official trick i am just giving you maximum number of carpels i am just trying to make your life super super easy stamens can be infinite in cotton family so the infinite sign is going to use in solanaceae family ma'am has been screaming vocal cords are gone for a six out of the window the lying somewhere epi petalous condition yes we've been doing that this family shows epi petalous condition there you go beautifully always relate the patterns from what you know already you guys have a super idea that solanaceae family has epi petalous condition we solved mcqs on that yeah and solanaceae is out of uh, the old syllabus now there comes a new family which is a dicot family and you guys are worried about it remember my rule solanaceae family to be followed here everything let's put it in gamos condition let's put it in gamos condition actually not this according to me it is not but both are seen okay amma can we can we do this now let's write the diagnostic features the trick that i'm giving you uh it is similar to compare with shraddha darling this is for you especially compare with solanaceae keep comparing and keep solving questions 
Now, diagnostic feature in finite statements. I'm not writing everything. You guys can do it now. And you will also see epi petless condition. No problem at all, right? Any doubts? Now, one of my favorite questions. This family has monodelphus and monothecus anther. Although I teach this in sexual reproduction, but it's worth the mention. What is a monothecus anther? It will have only one cavity. Otherwise, anther is diathecus, which means two cavities per lobe, which are those cavities? Pollen sacs. This family has just one cavity per lobe. Is that very clear to everybody? Tell me the placentation. What kind of placentation you will have in this family? And just to give your answer, without expecting the answer, yes, yes, you have hibiscus, rosa sinuses. The shoe flower or the china rose. Good. So now you know. You know. Now you know what kind of placent uh, huh, what kind of placentation will be there? Exile placentation, isn't it? Okra. Okra is also a member. Bindi and cotton. The formula will speak to you. The formula will always speak to you. Okay? Cool. Let's go further. Floral formula. Floral diagram. Just to sort of appreciate. Do you see the infinite stamens? It reminds me of Mahabharata somehow. And do you see? Oh my God. So beautiful. Looking like a wow. See, when I look at these floral diagrams, my heart says looking like a oh, wow. Do you see the epipetalist condition depicted so wonderfully? Oh my God. Wow. Yeah? Infinite statements. Actually, what they've done is, you know, some authors also Attach stamens to gynosium in this case. And do you see the pentacapillary condition? Do you see the pentacapillary condition as well? Hmm? Now we talk about a family which is known to us. We will talk about Fibaceae family or P family or the P family. Is it a dicot or a monocot family, boys and girls? Is it a dicot or a monocot family? It's certainly <laughs> the cassette is going to play again and say the same thing. There are only two families which are monocots in your syllabus. Ha ha ha. It's a dicot family. Let's start with floral formula. We are very quick. Yeah, Fibaceae family is not a family to be very honest. It's a subfamily of Leguminaceae. Okay, so bisexuality, bisexuality, zygomorphic, zygomorphic, pentamerous flower, pentamerous flower, pentamerous flower, pentamerous flower. I taught you in isomery like nobody's business, like there is no tomorrow. We wrote all this. That is why I spent so much of time in floral morphology. That is how you study morphology. Okay, now the diagnostic feature. Mm. Beautiful. I told you, 
mid evening mid evening mid evening sepals will show valvate or twisted estivation when you guys jumped on me you yeah, know by mistake i wrote uh, um i wrote uh, under imbricate estivation i wrote p by mistake and you guys jumped on me although i like that because you're going by the textbook but sepals could show you valvate or twisted but if i talk about petals that is the diagnostic feature of the beautiful looking like a wow looking like a so elegant there you go that's why my that's why i mean my heart stays in this so this is the diagnostic feature this is speaking about the beautifully vaxillary estivation does it speak to you let it speak to you vaxillum are standard everybody with me kings uh, sorry wings or la wings or la keel or carina with a c yes once again this is vaxillary estivation and diagnostic feature vaxillum or standard keel why am i doing that wings or la and keel or carina does that make sense to us now there is one more diagnostic feature if you have been attending carefully there we go pure love this is love dire delphis condition as weird as it could be as weird as it could be and if i talk about the gynoecium part she doesn't follow any isomeric rules she is just one it's a monocapillary condition if you can't remember that think of p think of p sometimes okay and ma'am promised us no ovary after composite is going to be inferior so superior ovary if i am monocapillary there is no question of syncarpus na baba syn and epo are a question of polycapillary condition you are happy you are happy two diagnostic features doesn't that give you happiness what gives you happiness mm dia delphis condition good good that's all you got you're very good there is no adhesion in this case but there is no adhesion in this case now talking about economic importance of fibacy lot of questions used to come remember today evening i spoke to you about trifolium and nobody could really answer that trifolium is sort of a fodder trifolium is trifolium and alpha alpha are the what do you call it here hindi mein fodder which is given to cackle jaya and shushma gay and bhais yeah so this is the previous year question trifolium and alpha alpha because we don't eat these plants alpha alpha so we give it to the cattle very important question uh another uh, question that i saw in previous years was the dye indigo dye which is extensively used indigo dye is obtained from a plant indigo fera indigo fera please remember that then pulses who can miss pulses hmm? pulses are very important p is important oil groundnut oil is economic importance that is common sense um something 
sun hemp fibers yes sun hemp fibers sun hemp fibers are obtained and i think that's about it in my time when i gave the exam a uh, question had come about uh, mulathi which uh, treats upper respiratory uh, disorders so you you would always see that your mama giving you mulathi or boiling it and doing a lot of things and giving you when you are sneezing and coughing sun hemp fibers indigo ferra dye i think we are done pulses pea groundnut oil this is the economic importance let's go to the ah my favorite solanaceae family i don't know why i have i have an inclination towards this family not for any reason maybe a uh, lot of questions potato family is it dicot or monocot is it dicot or monocot potato family what did ma'am say it is very similar to malvaceae family pentamerous flowers just making your life easy looking like a bomb <laughs> so everything is five or multiples of five if i'm similar to malvaceae family i am going to have so these are some unofficial tricks that i give you in the bubble if i am similar to malvaceae family i am going to show a lot of gamo condition yaar so just put all the words in gamo condition and also i am going to show adhesion which ma'am has been one vocal cord i have given in charity just speaking this that Solanaceae family has epi petalous condition. You have so much of knowledge. Now you cannot go wrong in the floral formula. Actinomorphic symmetry. Thank you very much. Bisexuality is not a concern. K remains K. C remains C. A remains A. G remains G. Man has told us it's a pentamerous flower. Let's put pentamerous flower. Pentamerous flower. Very very carefully. Let's put pentamerous flower, but the queen doesn't follow the rule. Now Fabaceae has one, this one has two. My old students know I taught you a trick. One, two, three. One, two, three. Cha, cha, cha. One, two, three. If you still the other ones, the uninitiated ones. One, two, three stands for the condition of G, as in Fabaceae, Solanaceae, Liliaceae. Once again. G one two three, Fabaceae, Solanaceae, Liliaceae. One two three, Fabaceae, Solanaceae, Liliaceae. Okay, so G two. I don't have a problem in this. This is a certain. This is sure that ovary is going to be superior. Now let's look at the. Let's do the needful. Do the needful. Do the needful. Ah, it is. It is going to show adhesion also. because that is the song we've been singing epi petalous condition and this becomes the diagnostic feature there you go if you are smart and you really care about yourself you will not go to the exam center or claim to know botany if you don't know diagnostic features no problem yes ma'am very good ma'am other than that there are other things which we've been speaking about persistent sepals i showed you so many specimens also there will be persistent sepal what else do you want to know about solanaceae economic importance is huge all sabji has solanaceae solanaceae is the king of the kitchen yeah you make anything with aloo it will serve you won't it and chili also isn't it so um if they ask you economic importance don't be scared potato is solanum 
somehow this pen is acting funny but you know what i'm not going to let it then you have brinjal which is solanum melangena you have tomato see we are making a sabzi here for good tomato tomato used to belong to solanum but then they kicked it out it is lycopersicum lycopersicum ha ha i love this here how can people not love botany i'm yet to understand and you know what i fell in love with this subject when i had the choice to fall in love with anything possible any subject possible good these so we made the sabzi bengan bengan ka uh, this one the bengan sabzi is ready now let's go further we have to add chili also no for the spice so chilies will belong to the genus of capsicum is it capsicum or something else hopefully it is capsicum capsicum species and one very important is tobacco extremely bad for health it was supposed to be used as a fumigant the story of tobacco is that it was used by man when he was making sense out of his life as a fumigant and then he started smoking so tobacco is um you don't need the botanical name but it is nicotiana tobacco nicotina tobacco very bad lung i wish this plant goes extinct and one of my favorites is ashwagandha yeah ashwagandha also belongs to that but that question is not asked since many years ashwagandha is a very good herb uh vinthenia somnifera by vithenia somnifera hmm something like that and how can i forget you also have the mighty so many questions we solved right the flower petunia it's a beautiful flower looking like oh wow when i was a student when i went for my aipmt i remember i marked petunia in liliaceae family theek hai good chalo after solanaceae what do we have how many families are done is anybody counting is anybody counting how many we are done with shraddha you will not answer we are going to be going to the last family liliaceae family when i speak about liliaceae family it should categorically remind you of gramini or the other way round or the other way round but please form associations and please relate concepts and don't be a cuckoo in life so now what was happening in gramini family was the presence of perians same thing will happen here and we have been talking about primary same thing will happen here the uh, symmetry of the flower is zygomorph uh, actinomorphic bisexuality is not a problem k remains k c remains c e remains a g remains g ma'am told us a trick g 1 2 3 3 basically solanaceae so liliaceae there i go there i go ma'am told us that all the ovaries henceforth will be superior superior ovary Now it's a trimerous flower. Do whatever you want to. It's your world. But this is a rather a problem. It's a conundrum because here in monocots there is advancement in the form of p, and that becomes your diagnostic feature. Now, if you remember in grass, it was zero, two, and three. in grasses it was 0 2 and 3 and perianth was rather called as ludicule 
because it's so reduced. Here we have a proper parents in 3 plus 3 condition. Mane, what do you see? 3 tepals together but not fused. 3 tepals together not fused. Also, <laughs> you will see this also in questions. I have seen it. So kindly be of service and remember that if your choice shows fusion, don't be scared. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. Androsium is 3 plus 3 again. There is no gamos which is happening much here. The, the diagnostic feature, one is this. You will hunt for this. You will hunt for this, but more than this, what I've been what I've been saying since evening is this condition. Is this condition? What does it tell you, boys and girls? It is epi tepilis or epiphyllus condition. Happy? Good. If you look for these two features, you are done. You will not go wrong ever and ever. Everything is sorted. Even Gynosium in this case has followed the rule of primary. She was nice enough. Economic importance, I spoke to you. Ornamental lily. And Allium genus which is onion, which is onion and garlic, which is onion and garlic. And one question that has been asked, I saw it, not in last five years, but can be asked, is called chicken. Now, let's relate this to cell division. Who will tell me what colchicin does for cell division? Who would have thought? And it is used as a medicine. It has, it's a multitasker. It's a good person on the planet. Bolu bhai. One of the questions of cell division. Yeah. You think I'm teaching morphology. I'll not ask you question from cell division. Ha. It inhibits mitotic spindles. Good. 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 If that is inhibited, it leads to what? It leads to what? Very common condition in plants. <sighs> Come on, think about it. Think about it. Disrupt mitotic spindle, manlia. I agree. It leads, my darling, to what? What can be unusual? For Thank you. Very good. Very good. It will lead to polyploidy. More the number of chromosomes, yeah? What is normal is haploid or diploid. Polyploidy is not normal. But if mitotic spindle is disrupted because it acts like a poison for cell division, very important question in that chapter. Please do it. Whether you're studying in zoology, botany, whatever you do, don't skip questions which are important. And colchicin also is used in the treatment of gout, rheumatism, Rheumatoid arthritis. It's a very painful arthritis. If you study the chapter of skeletal system, another important chapter. And uh, liver, liver diseases. Congratulations, the families are finally. Now, I'm not expecting that you would be completely, uh, completely uh, free of that tension. But let me know if after today's session, whatever we did about families, you think you can do it. That will be okay. The chapter is not over. <laughs> Let's solve question. Fruit and seed is remaining. 
and my back is still not breaking. Okay, so I am going to do it. Bicapillary ovary, answers in the chat box, boys and girls. Bicapillary ovary with obliquely placed septum. I have placed this question uh, very intentionally because this is a question that everybody went for negative marking the year it came. The year is not mentioned. A bicapillary ovary with obliquely placed septum. Can you tell me? Obliquely placed septum is a feature. This is given in NCRT, not highlighted. Be my darlings and highlight in NCRT. Okay? NCRT is open, kindly highlight it. So, Brassicaceae family will show you obliquely placed uh, No, it should be solen AC, I think. Hmm. Look at the diagram, it should be solen AC. Let me, let me see the diagram if I have. Oh yeah, you can't. Hmm, hmm. Guys, it is solen AC. Yeah. It's not brassic AC. What you got confused with, those of you who answered like smiling, Nawab, Sachin, you got confused with bilocular ovary and replim. Here we are saying that septum in the ovary is placed obliquely and that will be solen AC. Okay? It will be swollen AC. And another feature that I want you to remember is swollen placenta. Swollen placenta. Now what we are going to do is we are going to be absolute darlings. Huh? Look at this. This tomato has done so much for us today. Hasn't it? Huh? Huh. Have a look at this. Tomato is one fruit where you eat every possible part of ovary be it the placenta. Do you see the oblique septa as is asked in the question? Do, 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 do. Oblique septa, there is no straight septa here. Together, making sense to you or not? And do you see, guys, oh my god, this is pure love. Have a look here. Have a look. I don't know if you can see, but do you see the yellow portion? This one? This one, can you see the yellow swollen portion in the tomato? Do you see this guys? Where seeds are aligned, ovules are aligned? Yeah, this is placenta. So tomato is one fruit where you eat placenta also. We don't leave anything. Entire ovary is edible. Pericarp, mesocarp, uh, uh, sorry, epicarp, mesocarp, endocarp, placenta, seeds. Give me anything. Yeah, some people remove seeds. That is individual choice. So now you will not forget. Promise me. Oh, then comes the ray florets of sunflower. Do not have what? Bol do. Now, this is a tricky question. It is not asked anywhere. It has been formed to awaken you guys and remove that fear of Family, family, ma'am, we can't do family, no, family. Let's go there, study from this person, open this book, this, no, you just remember the tricks that I gave you. So, ray florets of sunflower have inferior ovary? Yes, it is the only family with inferior ovary. Show basal placentation? Yes, basal placentation is the most advanced placentation. This is the most advanced family. I'm going to get basal placentation with a single ovule. Okay, have united petals, yes, have endrosium, ooh, ray florets are unisexual, gamosepalous, gamopetalous condition, A was zero, A was zero and this was the sexuality of the, oops, this was the sexuality of the flower which is a pistillate flower. Would you ever be confused? No, promise? Now, I want you guys to write in the comment section if you really, really love the fact 
that we did family so easily. I want you guys to fill the comment section uh, for everybody that family is like never before or botany like never before, whatever you like. Huh? So now you're not going to be scared. Let's solve some more questions. Ah, this is this one is a tricky. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is going to trouble you a lot. I thought you guys will be okay. Hmm. I, I, I had faith that if I'm teaching you families, you'll be able to do such a question. Read the question. Take your time. I'm here. I'm here. Not going anywhere. Select the families in which, in which, uh, with all the love, read it. Have bicarpillary. Hmm. If you're finding anything difficult, it is okay. You're not alone. Everybody is finding it difficult. So bicarpillary, syncarpus, ah. And that is what you do in the exam also. If he is trying to trap you with certain floral feature, you are going to write it in formula. And that is why ma'am has been talking about focus on floral formula, life will be easy. Hmm. So bicarpillary, syncarpus gynosium and superior ovary. If that doesn't bring a smile on your face, what will? Huh? So superior ovary. Now the number is important, ladies and gentlemen. Where all I have bicarpillary condition? You've just studied with me. Yeah? One is solanaceae. I told you the rule. One, two, three. Fibaceae. With me, everybody. Can we repeat that? Huh? G1, G2, G3. Fibaceae. Solanaceae. Liliaceae. And other than that, we did Brassicaceae family which is tetramerous. Yeah, Brassicaceae family is tetramerous and Gynosium is always lesser than the isomery of the flower. Sweet, happy, healthy, feeling healthy for families. If you, if you think that you are confident in families from here on, I want you to write that in the comments section so that others can benefit from it. Good. So, this is a very, very easy easy ah that is the answer even i am solving the question now if you ask me honestly okay shraddha that's a good comment very good let's go further because further is the only way the mm, the distinct monocot character shown by the I think Shraddha, you were right. Goose gaya mere pair mein wo, glass ka piece. It's okay, we'll see. My carpet is anyway pink in color. So, the distinct monocot character. See, this question is speaking in Pankrivan's language. If you've understood, always look at the diagnostic features. The distinct monocot character. Shown by flowers of Poesi family. Oh God, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? We have marked, we have marked the presence of parents time and again, time and again. Bisexuality, oh please, every flower is bisexual. Hypogynous over, are you kidding me? Goddamn, every ovary is hypogynous. Speak to me something else. Yeah, actinomorphic flower, like, excuse me, you know what, I'm going to go out. Trust me, if you follow the way I've given you today and it, the patterns that I've taught you today and the tricks that I've given you for family, nobody is going to uh, defeat you in that. And let me also tell you, the question on families are like the physics of the paper. They are rank giving questions because most of the people go wrong and have negative marking in families. So if you train yourself and perfect yourself in that section, you could be Augmenting your rank by 500 or 1000, doesn't, nobody knows. No clear distinction of petal and sepal. What is that? That is the parent. Now you are talking. Now you are making sense. Now let's be darlings. Who will be my darling? Tell me, if I am saying Gramini family, what is the condition of parent? What should I write on the right hand side? Let's make the question more tricky for us. Come on people. Come on, I'll have a good night's sleep, if at all I sleep. Bolo, patado, 
I think I just cut my foot. Hmm. Thank you, Moni. Yes, and give me the term also. These are not proper parents. What is the term for parents? Zero, two, three, and it is present in the form of. Come on, guys. You can do it. What is that one term for reduced parent? Thank you. No thanks. No back. Shraddha, I have not expected out of you here. So, usko maine bahut train kiya. Lodicules. Lodicules. Thank you very much for keeping my heart uh, whole and not breaking it. You guys are amazing. But I also want you guys to put it in the comment section that now you're not scared of families. Be my darlings. and put that in the comment section now comes the fruit it's very easy it's it's going to take no time but are you guys really scared of the time being taken ha huh? chalo ready to do fruit can we do fruit i'll quickly do fruit and seed good part is that we've already done embryo and seed part in this one sexual reproduction so we are not really scared even if you are scared i'm here ready no need of any breaks right what is the time here it's only 111 it's okay we can manage right till ma'am's vocal cords are there she's anyway working through one i think <laughs> that's okay so fruit fruit is nothing but a how i call it informally is pregnant ovary what is a pregnant ovary it is going to carry the child who is the child embryo is the child embryo is contained embryo is the child within the seed okay so fruit is a ripened or fertilized so this is a consequence this is the afterward of fertilization which we did in the last week ripened or fertilized fertilized ovary containing containing now you will not say ovule you will break my heart into million pieces because if i'm saying fruit i do not contain ovule fruit formation will only happen the moment i contain seed that is actually a stimulus people if you ask me till seed formation will not happen till ovule will not turn into seed ovary will not care about turning into a fruit so when you define a fruit that is what the definition i see everywhere it's a ripened fertilized ovary containing ovule it is containing seed next thing is the wall of the ovary the wall of ovary very simply and beautifully is going to form the wall of fruit okay ma'am as you say the name of this wall is see i'll tell you one thing i'm going to tell you one thing that fruit is a topic which is in earlier years before neat came into existence when i was teaching in offline two classes for fruit and two classes means two and a half or two hour of classes it is very less you have to be ready with the terminology like he can easily ask this question peri cap a while ago 3 4 hours ago i told you whenever the term the suffix cap will come in your life you would know that it is pertaining to fruit and whenever the prefix botany is damn easy i tell you whenever the prefix peri will come it will be periphery so this wall of the fruit is covering the fruit now this pericarp can be dry or succulent okay so pericarp pericarp has various forms i can be a dry fruit wall i can be a dry fruit wall talk to me about rice talk to me about wheat talk to me about corn you don't see a fruit wall it's all dry okay or to, or or let's take legumes pulses but i do become succulent or fleshy in some cases okay so let's discuss that succulent pericarp succulent pericarp 
Now, babies, what is going to happen? I'm going to make your life pretty simple. When and when, when and when it becomes succulent or fleshy, it is divided into three layers. Any problem? Because now I'm juicy and fleshy and succulent. Oh yeah, for example, no, there's no distinction. What do I have? What do I have? What do I have? Okay, I'm here. So now, in succulent pericarp, the outermost will be epicarp. Epi is outer. I've been screaming that since 5 p.m. Epi is outer. Meso is middle. Compare it to epipodium, mesopodium, and hypopodium. But here we don't have hypo. Okay, so we have uh, epi, meso, and endocarp. Whenever you call a fruit fleshy fruit, as in mango, guava, strawberry, strawberry, yeah, cucumber, tomato. Either one of them will turn out to be fleshy. There is no promise. That depends on the type of the fruit. For example, your NCRT really loves the example of mango and coconut. Mango and coconut. But the good part is in coconut, none of them are fleshy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is to clear off this confusion which is usually around the fruit and the edible parts and la la la. We are going to do a simple classification, not the complex one. I know it's not given in NCRT, but I want you guys to be safe. I've seen many questions and you will also see them. So let's do the classification of fruit. Is everybody ready with ma'am? It's very simple. It's very, very, uh, I'm going to make it very simple. Sota sahi hai. So classification of fruits, this one is going to, and in my experience, I've tried to form, formulate many classifications in the past. You know, when the syllabus reduces, it's a headache for the teacher, yeah. This classification is going to take care of any kind of MCQ that you might encounter. First is a uh, true fruit. True fruit is also called as U carp. Ni carp, U carp. In botany, in biology, not botany, the term U is for true and pseudo is for something that is false. So true fruit is simple. There is nothing simpler than this concept in the entire world. It develops from ovary. As is the promise. Give me examples. Fast. Fast means fast. Give me example. Mango, tomato. Let's freak out people. Let's freak out some people. Non-botany people. Brinjal. Brinjal. Yeah, who else is a true fruit? Come on, people. Let's freak out, people. Everybody knows mango is brinjal, cucumber. Hmm? But cucumber, I want to put in Parthenogarpi actually. Okay, banana, banana. Okay, now time to freak out, folks. Wheat, rice. Legumes, all of this. Okay, now we are moving into the second category, which is which is the false fruit. What is the prefix for false? Everybody, what is the prefix? Boldo, pseudo. Thank you, pseudo cup. From today onwards, you will not be scared of any botanical terms. Promise me. It is so easy. So, botany is easier than 
physics, chemistry, and zoology. Yes, and this develops from other floral parts. Other floral parts. Now, other floral parts are so many, right? There is sepal also. There is stamen also. So the rule is, thank God we have rule. Usually thalamus. Usually thalamus. What is thalamus? What is thalamus? No clue. Ma'am doesn't know. Quickly. Classic examples. Time to give examples, ladies and gentlemen. Cashew nuts. I'm going to start with my favorite. I would love for some cashew nuts right now. Cashew nuts and what else is there? Come on, help me out. Apple. Apple. Anything else? Anything else? Help me out. Fast. What else? Strawberry. Strawberry. Yeah. Z bitter is written apple. Green, red, orange, whatever apple, it's okay. Now, please don't, Laharika, darling, you know what is happening with you? You are actually doing what I'm fearful of. You are mixing two classifications. So this is classification number one, which is based on the origin or the development of the fruit. Can't say this enough. From development. Darling, please don't confuse between simple aggregate and multiple fruits. Please don't do that. Simple aggregate and composite fruit. Tumba confusion it will create. Okay. So if this is from the, it is based on the development. Am I? including ovary or I am not including ovary. And the third one is parthenocarpic fruits. Parthenocarpic fruits. It is similar to parthenogenesis. What is the keyword of parthenogenesis since you guys are so good in zoology and nobody likes botany. It's okay. We will extract concept. Without fertilization. Without fertilization. Fruit develops. So only the female parent, female is not waiting for the male. Okay, and developing into the fruit. So these will be, this will lead to seedless fruit. Yeah, um, I'll share an experience with you. <coughs> the other day I was taking a special class. And not one, but two, three students asked me, ma'am, what is the difference between epomixes and parthenocarpi? I'll be very honest, that made me a little sad. Who will tell me? Yeah, I need water. I have to go and get it. That's the thing. Let's see who keeps my heart alive. Yeah, so now this usually happens in the plant under the effect of certain hormones. There are two hormones which are involved. Question for you. Question for you. Which are the two hormones? Now, it was naturally seen in cucumber, in watermelon, and then the greedy human being is inducing it artificially. So now when you go to the supermarket, you see seedless watermelon. Looking like a wow. Looking like a wow of no use, very costly. You see seedless banana, you see seedless guava, you see English cucumber, now that's a trap. So let's write the examples. Let's write the examples. Watermelon, banana, as if somebody is worried about seeds of banana. Give me a break already. Cucumber, and uh, they have induced it in tomato. Honestly, labs in India are not doing so much. It is all happening outside. 
it is all happening outside we are just importing it but please don't fall in the trap because now we are putting hormones who will tell me which two hormones which two hormones yeah grapes also karuna karuna you have a beautiful name beta hmm grapes also seedless grapes i know the supermarket is full of it auxins and gibralins we are injecting different this is a question very important mcq of plant growth hormones very important mcq which are the two hormones involved in inducing parthenocarpy artificially if you ask me if i give a certain concentration of auxin tomato could become seedless for example but gibralin will not act on it so right now countries are researching on this so that people who don't know botany the je crowd they can get into the trap pay double the amount of money and buy the oxen treated or uh, cytokine in gitanjali will not work really oxen and gibralin they play around with oxen and gibralin is that clear now comes the classification 2 okay and i'm going to get water so that the second vocal cord remains guide you and tell you that kindly don't go into doing the classification of fruits like uh, what are the various kinds of achenes what are the what is caryopsis what is pom what is berry all of what is hesperidium cincus sorosus it's pretty much out now you will be wasting your time let me give you a second classification which is going to take care of all your mcqs are we ready very small topic teeny tiny sweet topic groundnut which one what are you asking exactly second classification is problem solving okay fruit classification let's be very quick because morning is going to happen anyway first is simple fruit okay a simple fruit is simple let's talk about the next one which is a aggregate fruit and the third one boys and girls is a composite fruit ha ha very beautiful simple fruit question time nobody should be able to take it from you develops from a sin carpus ovi sorted life has never been so simpler what is the syncarpus ovary answers in the chat box please a simple fruit is of many 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 types okay a simple fruit can be i'm just going to tell you the two basic types a dry fruit and a succulent fruit now this is based on what we just saw what is happening to the pericarp Here pericarp is dry, and here the pericarp is fleshy. Pericarp is fleshy. Dry pericarp is seen in legumes. Money, 
legumes meaning pulses cereals yes and succulent peri carp there are there is no count of examples and classification but what is there in your syllabus is a droop fruit now we are talking business droop fruit and to just give you an idea even berry berry is a kind of fruit if you ask me banana is a berry for example yeah banana is a berry fruit but what we are going to do is we are going to give me let me give you more example for example grape is a berry banana is a berry there are types of berries also but you understand the idea that peri carp is fleshy so let's describe droop fruit let's describe droop droop fruit and keep ourselves very very safe this is the only fruit i don't know why ncert only talks about droop fruit these are called as stony fruits so stony that if you really hit somebody it could cause injury stony fruit what is the stony part well i know that if a succulent pericarp is present it will be divided into epi meso and endocarp endocarp is stony remember this okay endocarp is very very stony this is a previous year question asked recently i don't remember the year it develops from uh, monocapillary monocapillary superior or inferior ovary bolo superior or inferior ovary what do you think what do you think you get confused right droop fruit develops from what kind of ovary what is the position of ovary in droop fruit this was the question in 2020 or 2022 what do you think you don't have to google you don't have to take a peek into your textbook remember my words ovary always chooses to be superior unless mentioned otherwise kindly take care of this guy here it's very special so from today onwards this should not be a matter of concern droop fruit is developing from superior monocapillary ovary there is a single carpel now what is happening is the classic example of mango let's take mango in mango epicarp is not edible it is the yellow portion that you peel off mesocarp is fleshy mesocarp is fleshy and endocarp is fused with seed coat so the white goodly that you get the white piece that you get which is kind of sour that is you can't really make out endocarp and seed coat but they are fused together it is pretty hard now you talk about coconut my favorite it is in the last tuesday's class we are certain we made sure we promised that in coconut the edible part is not the fruit wall altogether a uh, question to you what is the edible part in coconut ashtay tell me that and i am happy come on people Miso carp is edible in coconut. <laughs> Oxytocin is in my class. I was missing you. Endosperm. Both the meal. Okay, let's 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 do this. You see that? You see that? 
eyes on the screen so when you have a coconut na you peel this part i literally had to take it out from the dustbin this is the membranous epicarp that is discarded but the problem is more often than not we are not able to distinguish between epicarp and mesocarp because just with this do you see the fibrous structures do you see this fiber this is used commercially it's a very strong fiber yeah try to break it not happening try to break it not happening that is your mesocarp and it yields coir fiber previous year question previous year question fir mat kehna kisi ne bataya hi nahi humko yeah and epicarp is stony yeah it is very very stony so this is epicarp yeah hmm do you see still the fibers are coming out this is mesocarp okay and this one it's actually making a stony noise you hear that you hear that yeah that is throw it on some space it is the stony endocarp endocarp as i can clearly see this is the seed coat yeah you get that now this is the edible portion this seed coat is also very brown in color that is the testa for the for the wise ones you see that yeah so this here is endosperm now who will be my darling who will be my darling and tell me what kind of endosperm it is i'm not leaving you just at endosperm i'm not that merciful i'm not merciful z that's a good one yeah thank you you all are darlings now you all are darlings especially samaira samria see i don't know how to pronounce your name pretty bad at that you've been a darling today evening i i'm going to remember you and i'm going to wait for you in every class it is cellular endosperm and the water which surely my cook has thrown away that is which endosperm otherwise i would have got that also it is free nuclear endosperm you get the idea just remember that in coconut you're not eating anything if you're interested in knowing the edible parts of other fruits because this is one of my favorite topics in botany uh, in this chapter especially i will meet you in the special class hmm? for example what do we eat in banana what do we eat in uh, like i'll teach you hesperidium what do we eat in uh, orange who will tell me what do you, what do we eat in orange you're definitely throwing the glandular epicarp the glandular epicarp which secretes that oil you're definitely getting a lot of fibers when you peel the orange when you peel the orange you get a lot of fibers that is mesocarp you discard that also and then you are left with a white colored thin membrane some people discard that also there's no juice coming out of it but then i see the juice coming out of scaly things inside that membranous membranous part what is that think about it huh? tomorrow morning in special class let me know what you're eating in orange just to tickle your brain a little bit huh okay some people are doing everything to be killed don't do that be my darling don't trouble me now we we, we will uh, talk about i don't know how you guys are able to trouble me even at this hour we are not going to talk about seed somehow we are not reaching there because i have some important things to tell you guys aggregate fruit i just i'm giving you the bare minimum develop strong 
develops from apocarpus ovary i don't know what is apocarpus ovary who would be my darling and tell me what is apocarpus ovary come on please keep the chat box clean i don't want to close it again and again apocarpus ovary come on what is apocarpus ovary ma'am has no clue whatsoever okay now what happens since i have three ovaries every ovary listen to me carefully every ovary and mind you we are talking about true fruits here this classification that i'm giving you is a true fruit every ovary is going to develop into a fruit so we get fruitlets and the botanical term i'm giving you the bare minimum just to keep you safe the botanical term is eterio there is a long complex classification of eterio of achenes eterio of this and eterio of that it is far 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 away from your syllabus but i want you to remember certain examples example is going to solve your life when you are studying animal kingdom or plant kingdom or morphology or animal tissue so custard apple custard apple all the berries i'm going to start with my favorite blackberry raspberry strawberry ha 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 who in my class who in my class will be my baby and tell me to include pineapple in this because that always happens to me in every class pineapple will never be a part of aggregate fruit pineapple is a composite fruit are we are we together so eterio is the word let's revise eterio is the word for aggregate fruits because i get a bunch of fruitlets classic example is <laughs> these fruits are always present in a bunch a group and your life is becoming simple and simple is that clear okay good now composite fruit will develop from inflorescence entire inflorescence develops into fruit now this looks so simple yeah so what that is the problem when you just read the theory read the lines as words and you really don't decode them entire inflorescence develops into fruit is not as simple the peduncle will be involved the thalamus will be involved when i say inflorescence it means the entire bunch of flowers have decided to become one single fruit are we together so i'm going to give you an example there are several examples i am going to choose fig how many of you have seen fig fig especially people in the mountains fig belongs to the genus ficus and it is species carica there is an inflorescence since you don't have types of inflorescence in your syllabus so i'm just telling you this one which is which is simple there is an inflorescence called as hypanthodium inflorescence hypanthodium inflorescence where peduncle becomes a structure like this absolutely closed with only one opening at the top called as ostiole which will only open for the insect to come in now who will be my absolute darling like darling's darling and tell me 
who pollinates this is class 12th we've done it n number of times in ecology also in avengers batch i've done this if you're thinking ma'am we didn't study we osseol who pollinates fig that is a very very spe special relationship of codependency coevolution obligation obligatory mutualism if you ask me in quite researched okay while you think this is the cap here male flowers are present Here, ball flowers are present, and at the base, female flowers will be present. Now, boys and girls, when the insect has done its job and pollinated the fig, sexual reproduction happened. All of that scene happened. Finally, this entire peduncle, along with the mighty osteol, male flowers, gall flowers, female flowers, is going to become the fig fruit. Now, that, my dear children, is an example of a composite fruit. Mane composite simply means it is comprising of everything that is a part of an inflorescence. be it the peduncle be it the thalamus flowers will have the seed thalamus all the parts hmm? whatever is there it will consume everything and become a fig fruit this type of inflorescence you don't have to do the name but just closing this circle is called as syncus syncus fruit now this i explained you just so that you are okay now pineapple is also an example but that is sorosus and it develops from spikelet spike or spikelet catkin so all of this is not in your syllabus things have changed times have changed that is okay let's talk about seed seed has been waiting since 50 should we do it last topic of the class no problem right <laughs> i should go for a mon breath for at least 4 days this is the maximum i've spoken in last 10 years of my life ha ah, but even if it means that your four or five mcqs of morphology are sorted and you're getting those 16 20 marks it is more than worthy yeah so make sure even if you have to rewatch certain parts of the session you solve the questions with me tomorrow morning at 11 am sharp in the special class the link of which is given in the description box the link of the special class is given in the description box of the session Okay now let's talk about seed very very easy easiest thing on the planet i know i've been saying that for several topics so it is the again in formal language it is pregnant ovule seed is pregnant ovule so it is ripened or fertilized ovule happy now when i say fertilized it is going to contain the baby contains the future plant which is my main concern here because this embryo has all the necessary things that i need isn't it so now what does a seed consist of a seed if i'm saying it is developing from the ovule let's derive the concept here let's derive the concept so ovule had how many what was the covering of the ovule i have no clue yaar can you tell me what do you call covering of ovule keep my heart whole and alive i'm still waiting just scribbling to save time come on come on guys you can do that bite technique ovule 
please give me some answers now. Thank you. Thank you. How many integuments are there? There is outer integument. There is outer integument. There is inner integument. Happy? Healthy? No problem at all. So our life is very simple. Outer integument is going to give rise to outer seed coat called as the tester which is leathery. Always and always when somebody is teaching you seed X, Y, Z, Pankhuri ma'am, whoever. Remember or imagine a chana, a cooked chana, not a, uh, not the uncooked one, a cooked chana, okay. So if I think about a chana, it has a scar here, okay, it has a elevation here and it has a very leathery outer seed coat called as testa. If I peel that, the inner seed coat is called tegmin. The nature of tegmin, boys and girls, is membranous. It is membranous in nature. Hardly seen. Hardly seen. Is that clear? So what you see here in Chana, difficult to appreciate. But if you look closely, this is the micropyle of Chana. Remember, in structure of ovule, we did micropyle, the only pore through which nutrients and gases will be exchanged. That is why chana is swollen the next morning. Once you soak it in water. Because all of that osmosis is happening. And here the scar is the hilum. What was hilum? Hilum was any way a point of attachment of funicle with the body of the ovule. Am I wrong? Am I right? Is it making sense to you? Now, that funicle was attached to the ovary wall. There is no ovary. So it remains as a sort of a wound sort of a memory, sort of a memory, like how you say, oh, this is my birthmark. So this is the birthmark of the seed, but it is representing hilum. Very good. No problem. Now a seed consists of, what does a seed consist of? Like I was writing, a seed comprises of, when I say this is a seed, it has seed coat, number one, plus it is going to have embryo. And that is where I get serious about things. Okay, let's get serious. And I also know that seeds are of two types. Why does this happen every time? Yeah, so I know that seeds are of two types. Now, dicot seed, for example, dicot seed means that now embryo is going to have two cotyledons. So, let's study the structure of dicot seed categorically. Hmm? If you look at a dicot seed, you will see something like this. That is if I open that cooked chana, that was the external structure. If I open the two cotyledons, this is what I get. Are we clear? Very clear. Looking like a wow. So beautiful. Now I'm going to make it super, super chewy for you. You're going to understand seed like never ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, these are the two cotyledons. Eyes on the screen, not on me. There is a point of attachment of these cotyledons. This is called as the point of attachment. Okay. And in between these two, right, this axis which is passing is called as the embryonal axis. Embryonal axis. Or let's glamorize it for a bit. What we deserve, some glamour. We've kept it so simple. It's called tigillum. It's called tigillum. Can you remember with me? Repeat after me. Tigillum, everybody. Structurally, tigillum is nothing but an, but, a, but an imaginary axis, sort of an axis, to make things clear between the plumule. And the mighty radical. It 
it is not radical not the chemistry wala radical it is radical okay now boys and girls what are the other parts let's make it very simple simplifying further look at this appreciate this portion eyes on the screen the portion of the embryonal axis this is how your textbook speaks the portion of the tigulum this portion of the tigulum it's not a structure this area of tigulum between the radical this entire portion of tigulum sorry between the plumule and the point of attachment of cotyledons is going to be known as epicotyl vijay uh you know when they assembled me because i am a robot uh they assembled everything uh but they forgot to assemble uh, sleep so i never feel sleepy you know yeah that's the thing i'm glad you are feeling sleepy once again for the other people yeah <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen eyes on the screen portion <laughs> oh my goodness <sighs> this is life life happens did it i didn't do it i didn't do anything now let's appreciate this portion the portion of the tigulum boys and girls this portion of the tigulum it's not a structure between the point of attachment of cotyledons and radical is called as hypocotyl now i am going to clear other misnomers also that janda carries which is what is hypocotyl and what is epicotyl one thing is for sure from today that epicotyl is not a structure please don't call it embryonic root or uh, embryonic shoot it is a plumule which is the embryonic embryonic shoot it is going to give rise to the mature shoot system and radical is the embryonic root going to give rise to the adult or the major root along with the root cap is this very clear to us there is no problem at all now ladies and gentlemen as this embryo acha remind me one thing in the embryogeny that we studied last tuesday who was giving nutrition or taking care of the embryo while embryogenesis was happening you know what i remember there was was 6 to 8 cells since we're talking about dicot seed as i can remember there was a 6 to 10 cell suspensor which was pushing the embryo towards a special tissue called as endosperm which is the nutritive tissue now since this embryo has the onus has the responsibility of developing not one but two embryos in most dicot seeds <laughs> in most dicot seeds endosperm gets consumed endosperm is absent and boys and girls such be my darling it's time to become a darling do you want to become a darling i don't care i'm my own darling most of the times so what do you call such seeds are very easy yeah chaplu concept it is in most dicot seeds endosperm is absent so dicot seeds are known as 
very good non endospermic can you glamorize a little bit for me what do you, what is the other name of non endospermic seed you're my student so you'll have to you'll have to thank you who's that afra beautiful name beautiful means beautiful non endospermic or non albuminous seed happy healthy no problem at all in life ma'am we are very happy that's a that, that's a that's that's you got it but there is an exception to this case what is the exception who will be the most darling today i i trap you guys like anything um exception to this rule come on people on the floor on the floor come on thank you very much radha can you be a little mum let others speak who haven't studied from me i want to see who is doing what caster caster now this question oh my god examiner's favorite examiner's favorite right caster has endosperm there is a question based on endosperm answers in the chat box everybody since last 4 5 years whenever i buy a watch for myself it breaks down there's something so somebody who told me the time just now i have lost the sense of time are bol do what will be the answer let's solve it because you guys are not ready to solve it seeds of most of the members of solanaceae ah this solanaceae a monocot family i feel it's a monocot family i don't know are endospermous what do you think seeds of most of the members of solanaceae are endospermous dicots are endospermous no dicots are not endospermous so here a itself is false hmm why are you answering uh, dharani why are you answering two dicots are non endospermic na baba put one also two also three also four also ma'am will pick up it's okay admit card has my name but let ma'am pick up the answer what do you think shraddha what will be the answer seeds of most of the members of solanaceae solanaceae is a dicot family how can it be endospermous we just assert in that we just saw that darini do you have any doubt would you like to clear it with me but this is true let's let's look at the let's complete the endosperm is found in mature seeds also ha huh? that is true talk about monocots my coconut you just did coconut with me what about rice what about maize these are all endospermic mature seeds So A is false, Dharani. And this is true. Let's go to dicot seed is done. Yeah, let's do monocot seed. Let's do monocot seed. Last topic of the day, but supremely important. So now, if I look at the dicot seed, this is a previous year question wherein he gave the diagram and asked you to label it, and gave you four choices. I've taken the question as it is. You've done this in sexual reproduction also. This is a revision. So now, what is different here is: Do you see this layer? Do you see this layer? Who will tell me what is this layer? 
the outermost layer of the endosperm is called as the aluron layer okay now monocot seeds are mostly endospermic because they have to develop one cotyledon the endosperm still remained in the course of evolution he's like yaar main bach gaya hu i'm just remaining i'll walk with you guys but what it does is it carries most of the space uh, it occupies most of the volume and pushes the embryo to one side pushes the embryo to one side and i have a shield shaped shield shaped cotyledon now in dicot we did not name the cotyledons we did not name the cotyledons but here to make a distinction we name the cotyledon who will tell me the name of the cotyledon come on you guys this is revision yaar be my that is not a question of being a darling this is a revision it is called scutellum okay do you see the shield you understand the shield this is like the shield used in wars if you watch game of thrones if you watch mahabharat ramayana whenever they used to fight in the wars they used to use these metal shields yeah so that is the scutellum single cotyledon aluron layer is covering the endosperm yeah it is proteinaceous it contains protein grains proteinaceous layer but you know what i'm interested in i'm interested in knowing the ploidy of aluron layer that's a aims previous year question can you would you please you what is the ploidy of aluron layer ladies and gentlemen only one person has answered also let me give you the extra information regarding proteinaceous layer why is it present why endosperm could not be just endosperm na baba so monocots are very advanced monocots thought that when we will germinate we would need we would need something to solubilize the complex food okay so the proteins here in this layer break down become simpler and provide further nutrition when the seed decides to germinate if it's too much throw it out of the window yes it is 3n all in all endosperm is still helping till the germination if that makes makes it simple for you let's go further now what usually people miss is a layer ladies and gentlemen do you see this layer what am i talking about this is a darling question the layer which separates endosperm from embryo bolo bolo the layer that separates separates endosperm from embryo because come on we have like two generations here this is a 3n structure this is a 2n structure we want some lines you guys are not answering you guys are not answering okay so this is the epithelial layer very very important question mind you this epithelial layer is actually composed of very very nutrient rich cells oh dense cytoplasm what is the purpose again to help the poor baby embryo before it goes out into the world the seed germinates and embryo becomes the young plant that's the story that's the story so epithelial tissue is a zoology concept mangi which we this is the epithelial layer now let's talk about the embryo so as is the case this is the embryonal axis 
बेटा एम्ब्रियोनल एक्सिस एक्सटेंस बिटवीन हुम एंड हुम हुम एंड हुम द प्लूम्यूल एंड द सो दिस इज योर प्लूम्यूल ओके एंड दिस विल बी द एम्ब्रियोनल एक्सिस दिस इज योर रेडिकल दिस इज योर रेडिकल इज इंट इट एंड बट वन थिंग एक्स्ट्रा दैट इज हैपनिंग इज वी विल स्पीक अबाउट दैट later but understand that in radicals case you will also have the extra root cap root is more protected why because it has to face the atrocities of the soil poor thing in monocots if creator was not done making the seeds so well designed there is an extra sheets yeah i'll check it hmm uh we we virana viranagyan uh bachcho just give me some time i'll check it before i wait for the sun to rise as is going to be the case now and in tomorrow's special class could you be my darling visit the class to remind me and uh, solve this okay that why uh, we are stuck at solanaceae to be to be honest my gray matter is speaking of option 4 chalega can you wait till morning it's 11 o'clock the class is at 11 o'clock so uh, the plumule is covered by of course this entire region will be epicotyl and the entire region will be hypocotyl we have discussed that but plumule is covered by a sheet who will tell me the sheet called colio rhiza oops colio tile right now my brain is bombarded with questions such as which hormone the discovery of which hormone used colloidal in its bio essay i'm sorry it just came to my head couldn't uh, can't stop thoughts then root or the radical is rather covered by colio rhiza colio colio rhiza don't forget that there will be a hypocotyl and a epicotyl here you will have the hypocotyl okay and the upper region will be epicotyl but they are not structures they are portions of the tigula axis z very good oxen was discovered cool i think that's about it we finally uh, are done with this chapter fruit and seed is done dicot monocot seed is revised now i want you guys to be my darlings again and ask your doubts at 11 am tomorrow when you come to the class whether it's from families or vegetative morphology root stem leaf okay let's see if i have a question ask Let's finish the class with a simple question. Z, kis baat ka? What is? What are you trying? To? You write the message, then you delete it. At two a.m., things happen. No, the real thanks would be when you score hundred out of hundred in botany. There are some people I know who are scoring hundred percent in chemistry, hundred percent in zoology. because some students give me an update of their aits scores and suddenly from 180 out of 180 in botany they are scoring 140 i think i didn't go out of my house for two days after that so you guys keep breaking my heart but that's my life okay which one of the following statements is correct in such a in such a scenario always mark the intent of the examiner last question of the class let me see who all are watching us 
the seed in grasses is non endospermic is that true that is wrong na you guys solve it ma'am might go wrong at this hour isn't it mango is a parthenocarpic fruit is that true so sad it is never the truth mango is a endospermic uh, sorry it is a drupe fruit a proteinaceous aileron layer is present in maize grain this is true a sterile pistil is staminode no a sterile stamen is staminode you got your answer thank you very much guys god bless you keep smiling even if you have to force to smile a smile is a very good exercise for your face your facial muscles need very good exercise yeah and uh, take care of your health um eat well think well think well rest everything will be taken care of if you think well okay and from today onwards promise me that you will not study botany you will not look at your kitchen the same way that you have always looked at it and you will trouble everyone in your family by picking the ginger and telling them everything about it by picking capsicum and telling them by cutting tomato and teaching everything the placentation and what not cool thank you very much take care and i'll see you at 11 am tomorrow don't forget to join the class yeah